was just thinking yeah. he has a girl over. What are you stuck in your well, bed? Well, Jason hangs out in his room. Yeah. Stay in your room till I'm done. Yeah, it'll take me a minute. <laughs> All right, MSO, just one and a half miles west of Willowbrook Mall on the eastbound. And you're appearing there, right, Carrie? And it's Saturday. Uh-oh. Something just happened. What? <laughs> Musically, I don't oh. know. I'll be there this Saturday from noon to two. All right, great. Jason's joining me. All right, MSO Furniture. The new music alternative, 92.3 K-Rock. The uh, Howard. Howard. Stern Show. Oh, yeah, kid. And a guilty plea from Howard Stern's on-air buddy, Crazy Cabby. Cabby, a.k.a. Lee Morozak, has admitted to a judge he evaded paying taxes, adding he felt stupid for bragging about it on air. Cabby faces up to a year in prison. Sentencing is set for January. Hey, well. Yes, I'd like to cancel my service, please. Why is that? Uh, well, the computer that I had to service in, uh, we're no longer using those computers, and I had to turn it back in. No, f*** you, you can't cancel. What? I said, f*** you, you can't cancel your service. Well, I've called up like four other times. And Dude, I look, to- I don't give two f- You're not canceling. Matter of fact, I'm going to double your charge. What do you think about that, bitch? Well, I, <laughs> is this the right number? Yeah, you called AOL, right? I believe I did. And you want to cancel your service. Well, guess what? Well, I told them I'll just cancel the credit card. It doesn't matter. We know where the f*** you live, and we'll find your credit cards, and we'll charge them all. What do you think about that, biatch? (laughs) Yeah, right. You guys are crazy. Yeah. Why do you think we've made billions of dollars, dude? Dude. This is an AOL. Uh, Yeah, it's AOL. You called the number, right? Yes, I did. All right, dickus. Who do you think you called then? Well, who is this? This is Cabby from Howard Stern. Cabby? Yeah. You ever listen to Howard Stern show? <laughs> no, I don't listen to that crap. Well, guess what? You called the Howard Stern line, brother, not AOL. Oh, my God. And I just suckered you. Cabby up to some hijinks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now. but his other hijinks have gotten him into big trouble. Cabby. Well, now I know why... He, he identifies himself as Cabby from the Howard Stern show. Right. So that's his thing. Is that what he does? That's what he just did on that tape. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Cabby from the Howard Stern show. <laughs> Cabby? Oh. What the hell's that? Hey, this is an AOL. Who is this? It's Cabby. Who's that? <laughs> from the Howard Stern show. Oh, I don't listen to that crap. <laughs> anyway, yeah, because it says tax cheating, ch- tax cheating DJ admits he felt stupid. Oh. When? Is when he the started onions? cheating or when he got caught? Hey, he's a pisser, isn't he? Yeah, he's a uh, cabby is a uh... He was so funny. I heard a statement he made outside of the courtroom. He says, I can't talk about this until it's all settled. Dickies. Like he's going to have something to say once it's all it's done. It's not settled. <laughs> the disc jockey known as Crazy Cabby told the federal judge Tuesday that he felt stupid for evading his income tax and boasting about it on Howard Stern's national radio show. (laughs) I feel stupid. I just remember the day, because I'm looking at him, and I go, Cabby, should you really be admitting that you don't pay taxes? Yeah, how stupid are you to say that on the air? Then he goes, I pay taxes. First of all, they take tons of money out of my paycheck. It's not legal. Around here. And I pay taxes every time I buy clothes. And (laughs) I go, well, we all do that. But there's additional tax to be paid. That's why you file an income tax, especially if you're a paycheck guy. Right. What are they going to do? Audit me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lee Morozak, 35. <laughs> can't believe he dishonored the Morozak name. I can't believe he's 35 still. Up <laughs> 35, 35 for four years. <laughs> Lee Morozak, 35, pleaded guilty to tax evasion and faces as much as a year in prison when he's sentenced in January. He said he did not pay taxes for three years beginning in 2001. When he won a hundred thousand dollars battling fellow stern regular stuttering John Melendez in a five round amateur boxing match that drew a sellout crowd of more than four thousand people to Atlantic City, New Jersey at a hundred dollars a ticket. The fight featured Don King, Donald Trump, Evander Holyfield, uh, and a midget dressed like King, porn stars, and co joined twins who sang the national anthem. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was some night. Beetle King was there. It was a morning. Cabby then publicized his tax evasion during appearances on Stern's syndicated program, telling the audience during a show in May 2002, 2002 
No, no, I don't pay taxes. A criminal investigator for the IRS heard the remark and launched a probe. (laughs) And it just occurred to me the other day that the windfall from that fight would have been in the years that he was having investigated. Wow. They say he's going to owe thousands. At his court appearance, Cabby sported a black leather jacket, sunglasses, and a full-color tattoo on his hands and both sides of his neck. He agreed to pay more than $80,000 in back taxes. Wow. I was stupid. I didn't file my taxes. I made a mistake and talked about it on the radio. Should he say he made a mistake not paying his taxes? No, he he's right. He made a mistake talking about it. He would have been uh, delinquent a lot longer. <laughs> he could have gotten away with it. But eighty thousand? Where's he going to get that kind of money? I don't know. I was stupid. Clause fest, December third. <laughs> Yes, change his name from Cabby to Stupid. <laughs> this is Stupid Cabby. <laughs> stupid Cabby. <laughs> this is insanely dumb Cabby. Dickus. <sighs> I think we got to go with Stupid Cabby now. <laughs> this is Stupid Cabby, k <laughs> Right? 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 <laughs> this is Stupid Cabby, new Pearl Jam, December 3rd. What do you think about that, bitch? <laughs> I think you're crazy. Bitch. Right? Right? He is crazy. He's been in trouble before because he worked at a radio station in Minnesota before he came here. And yeah. he got fired because there was some football player. Brett Favre, I think it was. I don't think it was him. Yeah. Was it? I thought yeah, it was. Yeah, it was definitely Brett Favre. Yeah. Yeah, what is this, what is this story? I'll it tell sounds, you. It sounds interesting. If it was Brett Favre, it's Brett Favre. But right. um, he claimed to have knocked on Brett Favre's door. Right. I, I think I have this. this right. Yeah. He, you know, like he's, he used to go out with like a tape recorder and do radio interviews. Uh-huh. So he knocked on Brett Favre's hotel room door and caught him with another woman. That's what Not his played. wife. Yeah. So they played it on the radio and stuff. And then it turned out he he staged the whole thing. He was, oh. Brett Favre wasn't with some other woman. And oh, then Brett Favre man. sued him. Right. <laughs> really? Oh. I think that's what it all was. Yeah. I think I remember reading, because it was Disney. It was Disney that owned the station. I thought I read the figure at around $2 million they had to pay, pay Brett Favre. Tabby, right? Get out. Right? <laughs> no, didn't, isn't that what happened? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Why this, you, I simulated the news. And what is did this you, stupid? No. Is, <laughs> is this stupid, Cabby? <laughs> well... First of all, I've never, ever in my life said this is that bit that I did. He was calling the Howard Stern line. So I figured, oh. well, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know that, you know. Okay. You know what I mean? I hear you. I People always associate me with you, and I love that I get to be a part of your show. Right. But I do my own thing. One newspaper wrote that Cabby was one of the whack pack, and he got all upset about yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't want to be the whack yeah. pack. I'm we're Dude. changing your name to Stupid Cabby. <laughs> what about just, me is wacky to you? I'm just Cabby. No, no. <laughs> no, no, not anymore. You almost pulled that off. We almost were going with Cabby and dropped the crazy, but now it's Stupid Cabby. You know, uh, Jason was reminding me. You, know, <laughs> you pleaded to being stupid. I know that. That was your statement in court. Well, <laughs> I'm stupid. Was, yeah, his defense was he's stupid. I stand on the 14th they Amendment, actually, which they, gives me the right to be stupid. <laughs> I plead stupidity. He didn't say he was stupid. He said he felt stupid. Oh. I, I actually, and I said I felt stupid that I, you know, didn't pay my taxes. I mean, I, I, that was stupid that I did that. Your Honor, I, f- I'm, I feel stupid. <laughs> hey, Howard, you know what? You should talk to, Jason was reminding me. We sh- you should do a quick rundown of what Cabby actually did do with $100,000 that he, that he won. Didn't you, didn't you buy hey, like Gary, a, Hey, Gary. How about we don't? Well, no, no. I mean, they know Gary, you. Gary, Gary, uh, I guess Why can't he? No, I mean, how, no, how about stuff you just, said on the how air, about, dude. How, how about we just don't? How about you can't do it right now? I bought a car. No, he dog. can do it. He bought stuff. Wait a minute. But I, you know what? You might pin him down to, to stuff after that he every, hasn't. After, after everything's over, I'll comment on everything. Right. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, they're still trying to figure out how much and everything. According to one yeah, paper, right. Cabby clowning around with the judge. Really? I would like to know how he dresses for court. I saw it. I saw it. Bad. (laughs) He had on you know, he had on uh jeans, but nice jeans, uh, a nice pair of like black shoes, and he was wearing was it like a like a leather sports coat? Is that what you had on Cabby? Yeah, but yeah, little little Sean John, baby. And the and the shirt untucked. Right, right. But but you know, I'm I'm me and I dress the way I dress. What's up, Judge Dickies? You didn't get into a suit or anything. No, but own, he did wear his suit. he did wear his cabbie intellectual glasses. <laughs> yeah, kiss. I looked good, didn't I? 
Yeah. What's up, Judge Biatch? You know what? Hey, Cabby told me one thing yesterday. Cabby, don't worry, because he told me not to, there's things you can't talk Biatch. about. Biatch. But um, I guess one of the things involved when you plead guilty is they had to document all his tattoos. Oh, really? In case he could, uh, having something in case he has to go to jail, they need to know what all his tattoos are. That's well, the in letter case, three. In case you flee or, you know... <laughs> Commit more crimes. Flee, flee, Morozak. <laughs> I'm fleeing. I'm fleeing. This stupid cabbie fleeing. <laughs> Lee Morozak, aka Cabby. I gotta say this: the um, U.S. Marshals at the federal courthouse—they love you. They all, <laughs> they all came down. They all listened to the show. Big ups. They were uh, very nice. They treated me with a lot of respect. Yesterday, Morozak struggled to understand the judge's explanation of the federal sentencing guideline system. Struggled? He is stupid. Morozak faces less than a year in prison and a $25,000 fine, but the guidelines may soon be declared unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court, the judge said. Oh, really? Well, what does that mean? They explained all this lawyer speak, and I speak street. I don't speak lawyer, I, grew and I, up, I told him that. I grew up in the street, not in law school, Morozak told the judge. <laughs> and, and he was cool with that. Yeah, but you have a lawyer, right? You're not defending yourself. No, I got a good lawyer. So you got to pay the fine and the back taxes. Well, uh, the the uh, sentencing judge makes that the final termination. decision. Yeah, ah. I like uh, I like Cabby's last name, Rosak, because it looks like Mister McSixaplex. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like a uh, M R. Yeah, M R. There's like, no vowel. Yeah, it's like, like M A R. It's yeah, M R. Right. Morozak. Mirozak. And Mr. Like Prozac. Picked his Mixel Pillick. Mixel Pillick. Or Pillick. Pill I had it last week. <laughs> Not a great radio name. Mixel Pillick. Look, I'm from the street, Judge Dickies. <laughs> Not like you and your bougie bench. In one of the uh, uh, accounts I read that. Oh, here. Uh, I didn't file my taxes. I made a mistake. I talked about it on the radio, made a flippant comment, and it bit me in the ass. Excuse my French. That's what he told the judge. That's his testimony? <laughs> Excuse my French, la dickies. Ass <laughs> also put in there that I was remorseful after the fact. <laughs> remorseful when you got caught? No, I was I was remorseful. You know, I I said, hey, look, you know, I made a mistake, and uh, I'm I'm here to pay the piper. You know, but you got caught. That's asked. what gives you remorse. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite comment is yesterday. Morozak struggled to understand the judge's yes, explanation. Yes. What? <laughs> you know that most got, most criminals don't understand the judge's explanation. That's why they have a lawyer to explain it to. Right. Wait, so this eighty thousand uh, dollars? <laughs> didn't I pay that already? <laughs> yeah, a mistake is you wrote the tax check and you forgot to mail it. It's a mistake. I don't get it. Well, you know what's funny? The, well, I guess it was the DA in the case or something, or whoever it was that's standing on the other side. His comment was, you know what? If you read something and it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Yeah. Well, what's crazy about this is, is that there are so many people in this country who don't pay their taxes, and they'll never get caught because there are so few investigators. One of the areas that the government had to cut out of the budget was actual IRS investigators. So, yeah. there's, you know, yes, you can get caught, but the odds are somewhat slimmer. But Cabby gets on the air and starts bragging about he it. He puts a red light on himself. I wasn't bragging. Oh, please. You were. I don't pay taxes. Taxes are ridiculous. It's <laughs> for chumps. Especially guy, yeah. You, know, you got to figure. Dude, dude, don't do that to me. What am I doing? I wasn't bragging. All right. Uh, He's still in court. He's still going divorced. through the process. All right, you're right. You weren't bragging. That's true. I shouldn't like say he that. said yesterday. He he won't have a comment until all of this is set. Right. Because <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> exactly. All right, Cab. Good hey, luck. Don't forget though. to listen to the uh, second highest rated show on the station. Is that right? Yeah, Cabby two two to six on the overnights. You know what, Cabby? You should have pleaded insanity. Are you second yeah. highest rated? In the uh, key demos. Uh -huh. Oh, see, always a qualifier. Hey. <laughs> All right, thank you, Cabster. I love you, Howard. Love you too, bro. All right, man. Be cool if Cabby goes to jail. We'll get some reports. Oh, yeah, we could go <laughs> visit him, send him cigarettes, the yeah. whole deal. We'll have our uh, jail correspondent. Right. Let's go to Susan. Susan, you're on the air. Um, Howard. Yes, Susan, please yes. speak up and speak quickly. Okay. You, do you remember the uh, testosterone patch study that you were talking about a couple weeks ago yes the one I was going to go on that about five years ago but I, I decided not to because some of the patches didn't have the testosterone in them so I found a doctor that would prescribe right. oh, let's move on <laughs> um, Biatch. That by woman the way, was... 
we never determined anything about the party. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's a resolution yet. Oh, okay. I, I mean, didn't, we didn't. We hardly got into the discussion before Tom came in and started yapping, <laughs> screaming and yeah. carrying on. Yeah, we were on to a whole other topic. Yeah. Let's go to Ford. Hey, man, I wanted to uh, ask for an update on transcendental meditation. Are you still doing it regularly? Yeah. I've been doing it since I'm 18, so. Um, let's, let's see. It, it seems like it seems like you uh, exhibit a lot of behaviors that that aren't exactly great PR for the TM program. As in, uh, you, do you still cry in your sleep? Uh, I've I've only done that like three times, according to my girlfriend. I wouldn't know if I cry in my sleep. Oh, she said it was kind of a. Uh, it was. A, it was. It's not a thing that occurs every night. But you have done that. Speaking and by the way, uh, I don't know what you know about TM, but that would not actually go against uh, what the TM philosophy is. That the fact that crying can be viewed as a stress release. I don't know what anything you do has to do with the PR for the TM yeah. Foundation. I mean, I don't even know what you're talking about. Why would Why would me crying in my sleep say that TM is no good? Well, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you consider that to be a psychological? Indicator no. of a big problem? No. No, and and who's to say I don't have psychological problems? I mean, uh, TM is a relaxation technique. Helped me a lot. Helped me regulate my sleep. I, I had a terrible problem with insomnia. It uh, relaxes me. I feel it makes me creative. Yeah, um, it depends on where you start, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's just a good technique. It's like brushing your teeth. Brushing my teeth doesn't keep me from crying in my sleep, but it certainly keeps yeah, my it's breath not fresh. It's not working. So, the, you know... The fact of the matter is, I'm not sure what you're referring to that I say or do that would be contrary to the TM PR machine. Uh, well, you talking about Beth telling you that you cried in your sleep. Really I told kinda... you it could be viewed as a stress release. It could be a good thing. could be viewed as any number of things, but it has nothing to do with TM. What's the, what's the point? What's the beef, sir? <laughs> Jeez, now suddenly I'm Jack Mayhoffer. How come every time I say, what's the beef, sir, Fred, you don't have that sound effect going? What's going on? Nothing. What's the beef, sir? Have you yeah. had any OCD flashbacks? No, I haven't. I've actually been OCD-free. Anything else? Can uh, I help you? Anything other qu any other questions? Well, you took up drinking. Yeah. What's that got to do with anything? Well, again... It's, what do you mean, people who do TM don't drink? That's not true. Lots of people who do transcendental meditation have a couple of drinks. He's not a drunk. I'm not an alcoholic. All right. Drink is. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you're supposing that you people doing? who do TM live up in a mountain somewhere and practice a vegan lifestyle. I mean, you can go that route, but that's the TM was invented for people who have a busy lifestyle who need to, you know, relax. Are you bonging? No. no. Why, why are you asking all these questions? Are you considering it or, you know, what is what is the problem here? Uh, actually, I did the training about 25 years ago, but I, I didn't keep up with it. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't keep up with it, but uh, I do. Yes. Hey, Howard, I wanted to ask you something. When you do cry, what's the recurring dream? What is it that brings you that deep? What's in your head? I, mean, I don't know. He doesn't even know he's doing it. I, it just Beth tells me. I'm, and it happened one time, she told me. You wake up to tears with... No. no. I didn't wake up. She woke up. I said, what are you busy looking at me crying for? Go to sleep. <laughs> Turn over and go to sleep. Let me do my thing. One time Dana told me I was eating in my sleep. I really? I didn't realize it. Huh. I'm having a meal. <laughs> Let's go to George. But this guy has his own agenda here with the team. I really don't. Oh, George is gone. Let's go back to this guy. No, I don't have an agenda. I just kind of uh, remember thinking that that stood out as a as a psychological uh, issue that I thought. And also the organizational uh, training and reading you've been doing about getting organized and stuff, I kind of thought that was a thing that TM should have... Uh, oh, so it's a magic pill and everything's supposed to be taken care of. Well, that's TM, kind of the selling point for the TM program. It just helps. No, TM is a, is a technique. If anything, you could make the claim that wanting to get organized would be a, a benefit a result. A, 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 yes, a benefit of doing TM. That Rather than being satisfied with a messy life, he now wants to get organized. He was aware. 
I'm not sure what you're driving at. I'm trying to work through this with you, but it's getting boring. You going on vacation next week? Mm. What's next week? I don't know. It seems like you have a vacation coming up. No, no vacation next week. Not next week. Is it for uh, competitive radio commercial reasons that you never announce when you're going on vacation? No, because my feeling is that some people we can trick into thinking best of is a, an actual a real new show. show. But you can't do that anymore. Uh, best of shows always sound really like speed it up. Is there some software you put them through where everything's quicker and it's no. a little bit compressed and your voice is a little bit higher? I would guess that's a result of the poor equipment here. Uh, literally. Uh, I, I do think that, and I don't know why, most of the tapes we have of the show are off speed. And I don't know why that is. Because I don't know if we, I don't know when we transfer it to real to real what happens. I know we've had tremendous problems. What is it, Gary? We have. We've had a lot of problems. It, 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 this is 2004. We have some of the best technology available, but not here. We started uh, recording the show on CD probably, I don't know, four, four or five years ago. Before that, it was a uh, cassette, dat. But when it was on cassette, this... <clears throat> sorry. Oy vey. I know. I'm sorry. This, this, there was something wrong with the speed of the cassette. And then we went through a process where when you dubbed it... To real to real, <coughs> you had to put it at a different speed, record it at a different uh, speed. <laughs> you can't uh, anything you say. I know. I know. No, but the speed was off on the cassette uh, player. Right, that's it. good. That's what and I wanted to do. We've been that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. We have, we have a best of tapes that we have to play, and you have to. There's a special. Uh, 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 there's something wrong with uh, that. Excuse uh, me. Uh, 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 no. <coughs> But you, we might have a, a best of tape to be played at like 16 when. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> what happened was we changed the dat and then. Hey, I was watching um, your old TV show yesterday. Man TV. Yeah, I was just tuning by the channels on like Comedy Central, and yeah. there, there was Artie dressed up as like a businessman doing some kind of bit. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was really weird to see Artie. I saw him in a really funny uh, Mad TV sketch where he was a, a, he was a mob guy mm. who was trying to uh, get a boxer to throw the match. Oh, yeah. And the boxer is so stupid, he doesn't understand what the mob guy is saying. It was really funny. I played a mob guy. You know who the boxer is in that is Joe Rogan. I thought that was him. Yeah, no, no kidding. He did a guest spot on Mad TV. That's like 1996 or something. But he was doing news radio, and he played the boxer. Oh, that's funny. That's where I met him, yeah. Yeah, best of show is immediately recognizable. Even if it's even if uh, there's a guest on that. It isn't obvious that they're an old guest. You know what kills me when we leave here and we go to Sirius? Somebody's going to get to inherit our studio. I know. This is our nice studio that Jimmy we had to fight for. Jimmy and Schmimmy show is going to have this really beautiful studio. They'll walk right into it. We fought for it. You know what they ought to do? What? They ought to let all the jocks work in this right. studio. That's Make what this I, the main studio? I think that's what they're going to do. I wonder if Tom's given that any thought. But we're building our new studio. you got to see what's going on. Yeah. Well, ri the original space we were going to use over there, they're not going to give us because the ceiling was too low. So now, oh. like when you first walk into the building, our studio is going to be there. and it's Right gonna up be, front? Yeah, right up front. It's going to be the super high ceiling. Originally, we were going to be positioned next to the gay channel, which I liked. Right. Oh, that's yeah, funny. I liked it back there. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, well, the ceilings aren't high enough if we want to do the TV show. Yeah. So. Oh. And, and nobody, it doesn't mean that somebody's always there at these channels. You know what I mean? There's a lot of times yeah. when people just aren't at the channels where it's pre recorded or something. I want to talk to, like, the gay channel, the sports channel. Well, oh, that's, that's what great. I said. Are we going to be able to talk to all of the people that are here? Yeah. Like, I'm going to run from channel to channel. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. I'll the, probably hardly even talk to you, Robin. No, I'll you'll be, be uh, out there with your walkie talkie. Sausage. Are you going to be commercial free on uh, satellite? I don't know how that works. I think I think we are. I think there might be, like, some commercials, but you're talking about maybe, and I don't want to, you know, don't hold me to this, but I can't imagine more than, like, two or three minutes. Yeah, An hour? Yeah, thinking yeah. of maybe some kind of sponsorship, some different, uh, something different than 
what we've known. So that that brings up an interesting question. Now, will all our all our planning sort of take place on the air now? You know how we plan during the commercials, like what we're. Well, gonna we do? could play a tune or something. Like yeah, we could play recorded bits. We there's could play one of our song parodies. Right. We could play something like that. Are you going to be able to uh, bring with you all your old comedy bits and bumpers and stuff? Um, some stuff, yes. Some stuff, no. Does the station here have the right to play your stuff when you're gone? No. Good. No, of course not. Because remember, that's what they did to uh, let, what NBC did to Letterman when he left. They just threw everyone. Well, of let's put it this way. Me. I'm a little smarter than Letterman. No offense to <laughs> I guess so. no, no offense to Dave the genius. That's actually a great thing to have in your deal, man, because they just saturated television with Letterman at the right. time. And, he, and then sold them to everybody. E, the E Network yeah. aired a lot of them. Yeah. Because Dave makes deals out of desperation. No offense. He's so desperate to be on the network. Dave, I, he should have done syndication years ago. Would have liberated him. You got to take risks. You got to take risks. I mean, so, it'd be very safe to stay here on commercial radio and watch my audience get eaten away by FCC guys, you know, chopping up the show and everything, or, or make a move, get some balls. I'm thinking of going on Letterman show. They they keep calling. Larry King keeps calling. I got to do a TV show because I can't talk about everything I want to talk about, you know, here about the move. So I got to go on TV and talk to my audience there. So I got to figure that out. But uh, Letterman has graciously offered me some time. And he's willing to back off a bit or two? <laughs> yeah, Larry King, too. Hey, you, have you heard from Jay? Um, Jay, no. Didn't call that. Didn't no, mean. if I called him in two seconds, he'd book yeah, me. Because he used course. to call all the time to book me, but he knows I can't stand his guts. The only way I'd use Jay is if uh, he agreed not to be there. I mean, you know. And you know, he's not going to do that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Would I, he, he would always, it always, would I ever do Jay Leno again? Yeah, I, I guess I would if I needed to. You know what I mean? If I had some need. But wouldn't it be weird? Like, you want to go on there and talk about something specific, yeah. but you'd have to spend half of it just explaining to him, you know, what a tool you think he is and what he did. He is a tool. No, but that would take away from what you're going there to do. I mean, first of all, let me explain something. Jay Leno's a tool for about five reasons. You want the five reasons? Because I've gone through this before. Does anybody care? I'm always interested. Okay. That would be a great letter for top ten. Top ten reasons Jay Leno's a tool. <laughs> I think uh, Dave has his own reasons. <laughs> you put your list together. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, they wouldn't be funny. It would just be for real. Like, like, Jay's a tool, number one, because he plays it safe. It's the same boring crap. It's everything he used to make fun of when he was a younger comedian. That's number one reason he's yeah, a tool. Yeah, he moves comfortably into the center. Number two, I don't care that stuttering John is the announcer on The Tonight Show. Good for John. I mean, who cares? What I care about is Jay Leno's such a prick that he goes around, like, like sneaking around in the middle of the night behind my back trying to take one of my guys, and then, like, gives me a call and goes, you don't care, do you? you know, and you, you didn't pay him that much money, and I can pay him a lot more money. It doesn't matter, does it? And I went, well, if it doesn't matter, Jay, why are you sneaking around behind my back? If it's no big deal, you could call. Oh, come on. This happens all the time. People switch. I go, no, it doesn't. How about the Rosie O'Donnell show when you try to hire a few of their people? But when Rosie O'Donnell tried to hire a few of your people and you freaked out and started yelling and screaming at everyone like a little bitch. Oh, that's, that's different. That's me. That's me you're getting stolen from. Number three, he's a, a, a jerk because he rips off 90% of the material from the show and doesn't cop to it on all his little bits and lames it up. Number four, he has way too many cars. <laughs> I mean, really, that's just that's just sick. Oh, I like to have a different car every day and drive it. You know what, dude? Give some money to charity instead. Donate those cars to the homeless. It's just it's How sickening. How many cars can you drive? How many cars can a man drive? That's oh, my passion. It's my hobby. Shut up. Those, are, those, are, those cars are his wives. Yeah, you know what? Time to maybe get rid of the harem. It's embarrassing. And you know what's what wrong with Jay? And this is still number four. That he doesn't know he looks like a tool driving around in all those dumb cars. That's th th no self-awareness. You know? At least I know when I'm being a tool. Plenty of times I'm being a tool. I put out a movie about how great my marriage is and I'm divorced. That's a tool. <laughs> it's it a is. tool move. But that's a self-aware tool. Who knows? 
you know? But see, you'd have to do all that on Jay's show before you even got to talk about why what hey, you were promoting. Hey, hey, I've got a Stanley Steamer. <laughs> oh, wow. What? Wow, you're lucky. You know what? If I open up the tabloids and see one more picture of Jay on his motorcycle, giving the big thumbs up sign, yeah. I'm going to cry. Yeah, because he's a biker. Yeah, it makes you not want to ride a bike. Or how about when Jay joins, like, real hardcore bikers <laughs> on their bike run once a year? That's my favorite photo op. Jay being one of the guys. All right. Yeah, okay, Jay. One of the bikers snaps sure. and just yeah. beats him up. That would be a photo op. Fifth reason Jay's a tool is that, like, somebody writes him a, a, a negative letter about the show, he calls them. Get some balls. But he didn't call him on the air. He calls him off the air to tell him why he's a good guy. I didn't mean to offend you. I want to apologize personally for making fun of the president. Tell me why I shouldn't make fun. That's it. He's a tool. I what? think when he hired Stuttering John, he was hoping that you'd stay friends with him and call him on the phone a couple yeah. times a week. Yeah. John had introduced Nicolas Cage last night. How and did that go? Uh, he, what they did is they played the music so loud that you couldn't hear the... <laughs> That John can't say Nicholas. Okay, let me hear that. It was kind of like, ah, uh, Nicholas Cage. It's the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Featuring Kevin Eubanks and the Tonight Show band. And I'm John Melendez. Tonight, Jay welcomes Nicholas Cage. From Pete of Chucky, Jennifer Gillis. Nicholas Cage. Is John in another room? They put him at home. How do you have an announcer that you can't hear? Really is low. Wow. That's some buildup. Jay Leno. Ooh. So they got a guy to do the announcement that they have to play the music louder. <laughs> Uh, 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 and then, the bride of Chucky! Bride of Chucky! <laughs> Jennifer Tilly! Hello! And now, John Reno! Nice. Wow. You know, you know what's funny? Fred was eight feet away from the microphone. It was the same exact quality. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We need you to back off the mic. You don't sound right. You're going to go to Cleveland? <laughs> what, 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 you stand what, in the back of the room? What do you want me to stand? <laughs> wow. And I'm happy for John, but can, can between I, you I, and me, I don't care that he left. I mean, the best thing that ever happened to this show is he left. I have, I have a problem with Nicholas. <laughs> can I just call him <laughs> Nick? Working with Richard and Sal has been absolutely delightful. And not only that, super motivated. It's really nice. You know. So... I mean, that's not my issue. My issue is he's just so creepy, Jay. Oh, that's not being in the opinion people. Maybe it'll make, it, make me seem hipper. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of young people are watching the show. Eh? It could be, yeah. <laughs> do, you think, do you think John and Jay still go out for ice cream? Or do you think it was just at the beginning? How about I'm on the... I'll tell you what, another could, reason... Could I'm, I get sprinkles on my <laughs> cone? I'll tell you another reason. Oh, I guarantee you that's all stopped. Remember, I don't think they've like, John, remember the Jay end. was like courting yeah, John and John taking about, him out for ice yeah. cream in the movies? Yeah, John's been in all yeah. the different cars. I, I guarantee it. That has stopped. Well, judging from that, I have to imagine it did. I yeah. mean, they don't even want to hear him. And then uh, the other reason Jay's a tool is that I get on the phone with a man-to-man privately. And I go, you know what? You're a jerk. And he goes, why that? I go, because you just don't know how to do business. I'm a guy who, uh, you, you know, you've got a business relationship with. You come on my show, I go on your show. You don't give me the decency of a phone call? And then... And then I, I said to him, you're just a worm and a maggot, and you steal stuff from everyone. And then he, and then you know what he says to me? He says, so we're still friends, right? <laughs> that's why he's a jerk. I mean, that's the top reason he's a jerk. We're still friends. A, we were never friends. And B, of course I'm not your friend. I'm telling you, you're a worm and a maggot, and I have no respect for you. What part of that don't you get? Oh, Stan, is that true, is it? That I'm a worm and a maggot? No, you're a worm and a maggot. 
It's true. Now, now, wait, now, wait a second. All You're worm and a maggot. All this you just did. Do you really think Jay would put you back on knowing you were talking yes. about oh, this? Yeah. He's already called me three, four times. Of course, because he's definitely a, put Because out, Jay's a worm. It's crazy. He'll do anything. He, he, he would do anything to get he me as a guest. He loves ratings. You would yeah. put a guy on that said that about you because you would handle it. But I, why would Jay put you on when you're just going to browbeat him? Because Jay would hope that he'd come on and just do whatever his business was ratings. and not really get into no, that. The reason Jay wants me on so badly is because I do the Letterman show. That's all. If, I, if Letterman told me I couldn't do a show, Jay would never have me on. <clears throat> I don't think, I think Letterman, not Letterman, I think Leno loves ratings and he knows you are a ratings winner. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. And he would do it regardless. Yeah. Yeah. But he'd be playing the show business with friends. My old friends. We're friends. I was like, I'm, I just called you names. I haven't called my worst enemy. <laughs> You gonna tell me I <laughs> might your friend? Because I heard, I saw in an article he wrote that you know somebody asked him, Howard's getting on your case all the time, calling your names. Because eh, we're like wrestlers. Yeah, and, uh, gee, I wasn't <laughs> aware that even in my private life, when I talk to you privately on the phone and call you a worm and a maggot and a ripoff artist. Yeah, you know. Jimmy the Fly, Snooker, and Rowdy Roddy, I think, had dinner together. They were quite nice to each other. Yeah, I don't think they really get on each other's case. <laughs> we were like wrestlers. <laughs> I got to play this uh, one more time. The um... hey, somebody on the phone? Yeah, I just wanted to say. Oh, that guy's still there. <laughs> Been around forever. I don't even remember this guy. He's the guy who's called it with the TM stuff. Yeah. Oh. questions. Yeah, I'm done with you. No. 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 <laughs> you have no right. You hey, you know what is sorely missing from the show since Stuttering John left, and this is not a joke. <laughs> it's uh, all the ragging on Gary for being whipped. Yeah, we got to get that going, man. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks, bro. Sure thing, Matt. All right, Matt. By the way, I have a blind item. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, what do you got? What? Uh, let me see. I don't want to give away too much because it's going to be blind. This is your own item? Yes. All right. What major heavy-duty rap star whose pimp hand is supposed to be strong caught his wife with his security guard? Wow. Tupac Shakur. <laughs> hmm. Wow, interesting. And I can't say who it is. Can Just I be a, a few... blind item? You all discuss it among. How do you know it? That it's. Offered. How do you know the reality? Someone told you that, or? Uh, yeah. yeah. Is Jack it a Mayhoffer. good source? A very good source. Yeah. Jack Mayhoffer. <laughs> Jack is it MC Jack Mayhoffer? Jack Mayhoffer. <laughs> oh. uh, Dave, you're on the air. How you doing? I just want to know if you could play some high pitch stuff. All right, I tell you what. First, I, did you hear the cops' phony phone call? No. All right, you got to tell me what you think of this one. You ready? All right. All right, and then I'll play you some high-pitched stuff. All right. Did you hear the tape of us yesterday with the guy getting tasered from the TV show Cops? No. Listen to this. This is from the TV show Cops, which I happen, I happen to love the show, but I never see it anymore. I don't even know when it's on. But this is some dude getting tasered by the police right on TV, and he pees his pants. Just listen to this. How's that? And it's good. All right, so then um, Sal and Richard called this electrician using that sound. Listen to this. This is a good one. It's going to make you laugh. Hello? Yeah, hi, ma'am. How are you? Yeah. My life partner, he's he's trying to change out a switch. It, it's a pretty simple thing, but we can't get the power to shut off, and he... Shut the goddamn phone. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> ma'am, the... Shut the phone! <laughs> Is there a way to turn the power off? To go, go to the main, where the main panel is? Yeah, we got uh, the fuse panel? Yeah. Uh, okay. Just undo all the fuses. Well, you he should said, have a main one up there. Hold on here. I got the red wire. No, the, get the fuse. The red wire and the black wire. The fuse. Go get that out of your house right now. Excuse me? Go get that fella out of your house right now. He's my life partner. He lives here. I know, but give him that guy. Call somebody to fix that thing. We get hurt. Excuse me? Call someone before somebody gets hurt. Well, he doesn't think he needs that. He's one of those tough guys. Well, he ain't too damn tough. He's hollering. I'm okay. Hold on. I got to go. Go for it. 
Don't tell a guy get off her before he gets hurt. He gonna, he gonna get hurt and then he gonna sue you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I ain't got time for all this pile of crap. Just hang hang up the damn phone, call them, and get him some help. He needs some help both ways. Isn't that great? Both ways. Yeah, that's great. Come on, you got to love that one. Yep. What do you say? Hey, I'll pay you some high-pitched stuff right after the commercial. How's that? All right, thanks a lot. All right, cool. Hello. Hey, Vinny, what's up? Hey, um, did you hear from the Letterman people yet? You know, there's a date set aside for you. Did yeah, yeah, know? don't set aside any dates for me. Why not? Because when I'm ready to do it, I'll do it, if I'm going to do it. You should do it. Vinny called, you know what, Don has been talking. I have to find something for my balls to do, and oh, if you were here, you would benefit from that so much. All right, thank you. Don has been talking to Rob Burnett about me possibly doing the Letterman show. Right. Because I do need a place to talk to my audience. And, you know, Don said, we're not sure that this time around it's right to do Dave because I want to get on and talk to my audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I want Dave to be quiet. Yeah, you actually don't need Dave. Yeah, but we We'd know, like Dave I mean, to get know, up from his desk and leave. Nights, I mean, we just need the time slot. We'd but like Dave to leave. <laughs> could we do a special in Dave's slot? Now, yeah. You need Dave to be there, too. <laughs> I don't need anybody. Yes, you do. That would be a great interview. I so, sure it would, but he wants to do something else. So, so, I, And it's not even that I'm, not, I'm, I'm considering it. So Good. Don's been talking to Rob Burnett. Vinny calls up. He goes, Okay, this thing's all done. He calls me up. He goes, uh, we got a date for you. Uh, let's do it. We're being proactive. Yeah, but don't. Just relax. You know, we're winning on Monday nights. I know you're winning on Monday nights. You explained that to me. Yeah. Are you really winning on Monday nights? I, I, honest to God, truth, we're winning on Monday nights. You know, I mean, the primetime lineup is so strong now, especially on Monday, Monday and Thursday, that we're easily beating the Tonight Show uh, two nights a week on average. So who's who's number one, Jay or Dave? What do you mean? Overall. I mean, when <laughs> you pull nights, out the whole one. week number. Never mind Monday nights. Whose show has more viewers? Don't start with me. Oh, here we go. But, well, how's that starting? I'm asking a question. Who has more viewers? We are neck and neck with the Sunday show. It changes every week. Some weeks we have more. Some weeks they have more. Okay. It, it fluctuates. But on Monday nights, we're number one. Every Monday night, you're number one. Yes. Yeah, that's right. why that's a great night for you to be on because we're number one without you when you go on forget it doubles the number I mean, maybe i'll go do leno on a monday night i'll yeah, change that go. all right you just convinced me i'm doing leno <laughs> I hate you. all right good night i mean good morning by the way we never got around to his tape with mark harris when mark is going to replace he's asking oh. to replace you yeah well mark's coming in he's gonna he wants to replace us when we go to Sirius. so we're going to give him 10, 15 minutes to actually demo his show live on the air. Excellent. But we never played that tape of the call to Vinny. Yeah. All right. I got to take a break. When I come back, I will. I'll play for that, that dude some uh, high pitch Eric stuff. But I also have a million tapes we got to play. We got, we got so much to get to. We'll be back right after these words. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> beauty pageant. Tune in to see five sexy amputees compete for $10,000 in prizes. Contestants are judged on looks, personality, and level of amputation. You've never seen anything like it, the amputee beauty pageant. Tonight on E! Everybody wanted to know when it was going to air while we were doing it. Well, tonight is the night on E! Nice. Alright, I know what i got to do. i got to get to the high pitch Eric tapes, which we had a request for. I gotta get to your phone calls. Hi, Daddy. Right. Want me to do um, phone calls for a second here, and then get the high pitch, Eric? Who's high pitch? Yeah. All right, because it's a complete retrospective. <laughs> the the work of high pitch, Eric. Yes. Hey, Ray. 
Hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey, now. Hey, you guys have been off for about 45 minutes up here. Do you know what's going on? Where are you? Cleveland. And we were off the air for 45 minutes? You're still off the air. Really? They must be having a signal problem or a satellite. Problem. I don't know what's going on out here. We've been calling around. Everybody's looking, going nuts. No Howard. It's hmm. like the future. What? Are, yeah, I know. What do they uh, What do they have on instead? Hold on. Nothing. It's static. Uh, so yeah, they probably have a signal problem. problem. Yeah. I'm calling now, Howard. Yeah, I'm sure it's a station problem. Okay. All right. Hang in there. Thank you. Right, bye. Hey, Tony, you're on the air. Howard. Yes. <laughs> that, that crank call to the electrician. <laughs> the taser call. <laughs> no, it is so funny. I'm stuck in traffic on the, in Delaware, and it's, it's five lanes, and I'm stuck in the middle. And I looked over to the right, and then over to the left, and there are people just with the tears coming down their face. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you know and what? It's, I, it's classic. I think it's one of my favorites now. <laughs> it's my all-time, not my all-time favorite, but one of my favorites for sure. It is, it, it is classic. Hello? Yeah, hi, ma'am. How are you? Yeah. My life partner, he's he's trying to change out a switch. It, it's a pretty simple thing, but we can't get the power to shut off. And he shut the goddamn phone. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Ma'am, shut yeah. the phone. <laughs> is there a way to turn the power off? To go go to the main. You where the main panel is? Yeah, we got uh, the fuse panel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just undo all the fuses. What? You he should said... have a main one up there. Hold on here. I got the red wire. No, the, get the fuse. The red wire and the black wire. The fuse. Go get that fella out of your house right now. Uh, excuse me? Go get that fella out of your house right now. He's my life partner. He lives here. I, I know, but people like that get told you somebody sitting in face, we get hurt. Excuse me? Call someone before somebody gets hurt. Well, he doesn't think he needs that. He's one of those tough guys. Well, he ain't too damn tough. He's hollering. I'm okay. Hold on. I got so, to tell him. Go pull the down until I got to get off before he gets hurt. He's going he to get hurt, and then he's going to sue you. <laughs> Listen, I ain't got time for all this pile of crap. Just hang hang up the damn phone, call the ambulance, and get him some help. He needs some help both ways. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with that taser clip. Here's Ronnie, the limo driver, tasering Isaac. Isaac, I ain't with you now. Get this camera out of my face. You're an okay? I was shooting you. You know what? Go f yourself. You know what? You're a f oh, Lord, you Get the f out of here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Some dude called up and he wants um wants to hear some high pitch Eric stuff. You want me to do the whole history of the high pitch Eric phone calls? Would people like to hear that? Sure. You're answering for all the people. You feel yes, confident? I feel uh, yeah. I I looked into my heart and I think the people want to know. All right, let's get started. All right, so how did it all start? Yes. High Pitch Eric went from being a B-list whack packer right. to a very important A-list whack packer when he started making his phony phone calls. And in order to give you the history, I would say it started when we were playing this clip. <laughs> Look back at oh, the camera, whore. Oh. Look back at the camera. Oh. Your mom wants to see you. Yeah. Say hello to her. Hi, Mom. Say, say hello, hello to Papa. Hi, Papa. Ask them if they're proud of you. Uh, are you proud of me, Mom and Dad? Proud of their little schnauzer? <laughs> oh. 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 And when we started playing this clip as well. Cameron, and tell us where you are. I'm a messy little spit-covered, dirty pig. So that bit 
went to this. This is when High Pitch Eric started getting funny. Uh, 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 oh, yeah! You like that, you f pig whore? Yes! You want some spit in your face, you dirty piece of sh Yes! Please spit in my face! <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Look in the camera, whore. Say hi to your daddy. Hi, daddy. Look at me. <laughs> Say hi to your mommy. Hi, mommy. Are you proud of me? I'm a fat pig whore just like you. You smell like a f elephant. Open your mouth, pig. Okay. Why do uh, you, pig? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look at the camera. I, I love spit in my mouth. Look at yeah. the camera and tell us what you are. I'm a messy little spit covered dirty Pig. Ah. <laughs> See, now that was funny. Yes. But then things got even funnier when High Pitch decided to call Eric the Midget. <laughs> I forgot about this. As Kelly Clarkson. Because Eric the Midget was on our show, and he said he didn't like being called Eric the Midget anymore. He didn't want to be called Eric the Midget yeah. anymore. And um, High Pitch called him up as Kelly Clarkson because he loves American Idol. <laughs> Eric the Midget. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Kelly Clarkson. Is this Eric the Midget? This is not Kelly Clarkson. This is more than likely high pitch, isn't it? No. Who's high pitch? This is <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. I think you're very cute. High pitch. Give it up. I know it's you. A moment like this. Some people wait a lifetime. <laughs> Hello? Hey, how are you? It's KC. Okay. Hey, you want in on the football pool? Nice. <laughs> hey, Eric, what's up with the Oakland A's this weekend? They won yesterday. How many touchdowns did the A's make? The wrong sport. Football, baseball. baseball, my balls. What's the difference? They're all going in your. No, they're not. Come on, it's KC here. Nice. How many of those midget fingers can you fit in my? Oh. None, because I wouldn't try. Come on, I got a lollipop for you. I don't give a. I got taffies for you too. Speak up, you Ewok. Hey, listen, you've been a good sport. Let me put Gary on the phone. Can, can you hold on? Yes. Hello, hello, this is Gary Delabate. No, it's not. I can tell it's Eric, or High Pitch Eric. It's Gary, how are you? It's High Pitch. I can <laughs> tell the damn thing. Hi, 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 it's Gary Delabate. Can I help you? I'm here eating chocolate. Let's talk. <laughs> high Pitch, I can tell it's you. My voice sounds a little different because I have a mask on. <laughs> I have a wellness mask on. <laughs> So that ma mask makes you sound exactly like high pitch. This is the real deal, okay? Whatever. Okay, good. Let me ask you this. What are you wearing? I'm not answering that question. Hey, this is Gary now. I highly doubt Gary Delavante would be asking me that question. Drop your pants. <laughs> Let's get down to business. No, I'm not high pitch. I'm not a moron. Okay. You try to pass yourself off as Gary. Come on. I could tell people's voices. Okay. That's why you I also me. know. Do you know who it is? It's high pitch. No. It's Artie Lang. Fire! <laughs> Are you ready for some dirty deeds? <laughs> hey, look, it's Artie. Come on. No, it's not. Let's drink some Jack and Waters. High pitch. Knock it off. Can you get that through your head? Goodbye. High pitch. Knock it off. I'm going to get you. So that was real funny, and high pitch suddenly became very important. Very popular, yes. Very popular. Highly sought after. His popularity hasn't really led to anything good because he's still sitting fat and naked in his apartment right now with no, <laughs> with no heat. Right. Our sad cloud. Wallowing in his own excrement. But uh, then, you know, after that, 
we started to play, you know, who's high pitch? Yeah. Who's high pitch? Who's high pitch? This is Kelly Clarkson. Because <laughs> we love that. And it Come became on, a I big got thing. Lollipop for you. And then that led to this crank phone call. Hello? Good morning. This is Jack Meoffer from WFAG Radio, home of the Chubby Pickle. Who do we have on the line? My name is Miss Jackson. Why, good morning, Mrs. Jackson. You have been randomly selected to play Celebrity Trivia mm -hmm. with Miss Kelly Clarkson. Do you know Kelly Clarkson? Uh, from, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Hello, this is Kelly Clarkson. Hello, Kelly. <laughs> now, Kelly Clarkson is going to ask you one question. Yes. Who's high pitch? <laughs> Who is high pitches? That what she said. This is Kelly Clarkson. Mm -hmm. Big big money on the line, Miss Jackson. Well, I just lost it because I ha I don't have a clue. Who's high pitch? Who is high pitch? <laughs> I still don't know, and that does not sound like Kelly Clarkson. This is Kelly Clarkson. No, it's not. Who's high pitch? I don't know who high pitch is, and I could care less. <laughs> so that led to that. And then, Ella, uh, then, and then, high pitch was really riding high, all full of himself. High pitch. And the funniest whack packer on the show. And then we got Elephant Boy to call high pitch and bring him down a notch. Yes. And it really upset high pitch because Elephant Boy now was stealing all of high pitch's <laughs> lines. Hey. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Is, yeah. So long time no speak. Yeah, that's it. That was it. Are you coming on to show this weekend? Monday, yeah. Yeah. Why? You go on tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be I'll be here tomorrow. Oh, that's I good. Am, I am the MC. Listen, listen to me. Uh, I did some tape. Okay. Oh yeah. Hey, I'll talk to you. Listen I'll speak to you later. Yeah. Go. Listen to this, happiest. Oh yeah. <laughs> Spit in my face. F you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, let me put the cell. Uh, one second, he left, he left the room. Hey, it's another thing. I'm Cody Clarkson. Who's Elephant Boy? No. I'm, who's High Pitch? I'm Kelly Clarkson. No, you're, no, you're not. Hey, oh, I'm Cody Clarkson. Hey, who's go, Elephant okay? Boy? I gotta go. How he relaxed He said he relaxed my tape. No, he won't. You want it bad? No. He said, hey. I, had, I saw him just now. Uh, yeah, elephant boy. Yeah, what? Let me talk to Richard. Just left the room, Dave. Just you and me, man. Hey, oh, elephant this, boy. This, this, this is a fake place I never have such good luck in my life. Elephant boy. Yeah. I'll speak to you later. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> just a <laughs> Hello. I'm Kelly Clarkson. Oh, f you, friend. I'll talk to you later. I'm good. Yeah, thank God. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh. oh, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. This is Kelly Clarkson. I'm the real Kelly Clarkson. Oh, I'm, I'm Kelly Clarkson. You just have this Eric. A no. poor I'm the real Kelly Clarkson, bitch. I'm going to, I'm going to make fun of phone because you Fred, are I'm than you are. I'm not wasting my time with you. Uh, Eric, you're not met. You hung up. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, the history of wow. High Pitch Eric. And he's been doing good. But it's going Hello. on. Yeah. All right, let me get to some other stuff. We, um, a lot of voicemail comes in. Artie, you took a hit on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah? You know, Artie's always the first one when someone calls up and says that they're missing a limb or they have cancer. And right. he goes, wah, wah, you have cancer, you're missing a limb. So some guy fed it right back to you. <laughs> a quadriplegic and was on a respirator and died a painful death. <laughs> I snorted an eight ball of coke in a pig suit and then crapped myself in a hotel bed. <laughs> My best starring role is in dirty work and it was a bomb. <laughs> David Spade tried to replace Chris Farley with me in Lost and Found and I sucked. <laughs> I'm dragging down Norm McDonald's career with my own. <laughs> the 
bulletin board makes fun of me every day. Wow, <laughs> Dana only loves me for my money, and when she broke up with me, I was going to kill myself. Wow, I don't want to live. I don't want to have an intervention on the air. Wow, wow, wow. Now, uh, this doesn't make me uh, a fag or a homo, okay? <laughs> mm. You know, that sounds like my agent's voicemail. Nice. <laughs> So there you go, Artie. You got a little nice. taste of your own medicine. That was all over me. That was a little insensitive, I thought. If anybody's uh, starting to get worried about abortion and stuff like that, you got to hear this. I'm reading the, um, you know, I was going through my email, and someone sent this to me. They forwarded it to me. I think Fred did. Um, this is from USA Today. For a year, Julie Lacey stopped into a CVS pharmacy near her home in Fort Worth to get refills of her birth control pills. Then one day last March, the pharmacist refused to fill Lacey's prescription because she did not believe in birth control. I was shocked, said Lacey, 33, who was not able to get her prescription until the next day and missed taking one of her birth control pills. Quote, their job was not to regulate what people take or do. It's just to fill the prescription that was ordered by my physician. But it turns out that a bunch of pharmacists across the country disagree and on moral grounds will not sell women their birth control pills because wow. they're against birth control. So, it's the country's becoming this religious, whacked out country. No one's rights matter anymore. <sighs> it's like it's like the the election sort of gives everyone now the opportunity to say whatever yeah, how we do believe. I feel in. about something. Let me uh, stop other people from doing it. That's right. Country's going nuts. And the new Supreme Court that George Bush is going to appoint, I guarantee you, a woman's right to choose will be taken away. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of babies from poor people, people who can't afford and to have take women them. mutilating themselves right. to try not to have babies. Very wealthy people like George W. Bush that will be able to get abortions for their kids. Yeah, they'll fly somewhere. When they get knocked up. Don't worry about it. They'll be fine. You got the headache. That's all nuts. You ever sit and wonder who Dick Clark voted for in the last election? No. No. <laughs> it would be great if we could ask Dick Clark that question. That never occurred to me. If I had him on the phone, I'd say, who did you vote for? And then, he, you know, he'd probably say, he'd probably Jack go. Jack Mayhoffer. Jack Mayhoffer. Yeah. Jack Mayhoffer. Now, you know what I, I would guess he'd say? He'd say, Howard, that's none of your business. And then I would say, Dick, this is how it's going to go. I'll go, but Dick, not that it's none of my business, but why be ashamed of who you voted for? Well, you know, I have an image. and Well, well Dick... Why not talk about who you vote? I mean, at this point, you're an older guy. You, you've made all the money you got, you need in the world. Who do you care if you piss yeah. them off? I mean, so, so piss off some people yeah. and tell us who you voted they for. They can't get to you. All right, let's see how close to the truth that is. All right. Mr. Clark. Hello. Who'd you vote for in the last election? I thought you were going to ask that. <laughs> who'd you vote for? I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> Why is that, Dick? I mean, you've made all the money that you could possibly make. I mean, Howard, I, it probably would surprise you, but it doesn't matter because... I'm an atypical human being. I, I, unlike you, I don't make my livelihood stirring up uh, people's emotions politically. But why, wh but why not take a stand and say, here's how I feel? I, I'm going to guess. Do you Howard, think this was an important election? Privately over dinner, Howard, I would tell you in a hot minute. I you would? Think. All right, let's have dinner, and then I'll announce it to my audience. Somebody bring <laughs> some food. <laughs> bring hot some minute. food. <laughs> no, seriously, why would you not tell people? What, what, what's your fear in this? That, that what, some people won't like you? I don't give a who did this point in my life, but I don't stir up problems. Well, well, no matter, stir up problems. No matter you're who saying you, who you voted for. Robin, no matter who you mention, 50% of the people are going to say, what are you? But you're not running for president. Hmm? But you're not running for president. No, but I'm, I'm just running along, doing my thing. You don't want to piss anyone off. That's true. Iraq war, good idea or not? Uh, probably not a great idea. Oh, oh. We'll go out on a limb there. Huh? Interesting. Interesting. So you voted for Kerry. Thanks. Next question. <laughs> See, I would have guessed you were a Bush guy. You can guess whatever you want to guess, Howard. Abortion, yes or no? Uh, yes. You're like me. You love abortion. Stem cell research, yes. Oh, absolutely, yes. Oh. Gay sex? I don't care. Gay marriage? I don't care. Oh. So you're for it? It doesn't make any difference to me. Cleveland Steamer, yes or no? Can we get to the plug, Howard? Uh, <laughs> what are you wearing? 
I'm sitting here in my robe today. Hold on a second. Ooh, anything under that? No. <laughs> What's underneath it, Dick? Oh, God, here we go again. I've cut or uncut? Once cut. a year I call for a plug for the American Music Awards. We've got to discuss the length of my penis and how many times I had sex and blah, 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 blah. Oh, cut or uncut? Okay, we're, we're at, oh, I'm cut. Uncut? No, cut. 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 <laughs> what if he had said uncut? <laughs> Measure it for me right now. Oh, my God. I can, Howard. Shave. I don't have a ruler. Wait, say that again. I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dick. Yeah. Now, you know what you're supposed to talk to him about today. What? He probably hasn't got the vaguest idea, no, no, Robin. No, 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 no. We, we were discussing this yesterday. Oh, did you hear my... Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. You shouldn't do those backstage interviews anymore. It's time to step down. I don't do the interviews backstage. You stopped? I haven't done them for years. Really? I thought you were doing them last... No, no. No, that's... that's Strom uh, Thurmond gone, does them now. Gone about four or five years ago. No. Yeah. You're, telling a, you're telling a big fib here. You're telling a big whopper. No, no, no. That's true. Tell me a whopper. <laughs> help, help. Tell me a whopper. Hey, you well, then to... how will we see let, you at the American let me, Music Let me work my own gig here. We've got 18 live acts back. Wait a second. Now, wait a second. How will we see you on the American Music Yeah, You're going to work yourself into it. You know you, you will. You only see me when all hell is breaking loose and things are falling apart. You don't do any backstage cutaways, nothing? No, no. What are you, how, what are you getting out of this American Music Awards? Do you own all the performances afterwards? No. What do you do with all that? I don't own the performance, Howard. The uh, performers own them. I got to get into your. But whole... it's big money, right? I got to sit at the feet of Dick Clark. This guy knows how to make some money. Yeah, and uh, nobody gets upset with him. He doesn't have to no. fight to get got, his shows hey, on. All right, but guys, I'm going to pretend hey, I'm Dick Clark. Hey, Dick, ask me a controversial oh, hold, question. Hold on, Howard. I know this is your show, but we got to get the plug in. What are you in a rush for? Where you have to go? No, I haven't got any place to go. I'm just. Yeah, so sit still and wait. Wait for the plug. Uh, let me have some fun with you a little bit. Let me interview okay, you. Let me go have fun. Let me tickle your ass with a feather a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, trying to make you human and warm to the audience. All right. I'm, I'm human and warm. Everything with you plug. is a plug. You, hey, you know you're, like, you're like a guy who takes me home from a bar, power bottoms me, and then, and then dumps me on the side of the road. There's oh, no uh, after plan. You know how many times that's happened to me? Power bottom. Dick? Yeah, I don't know, Howard. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eleven times. Uh, you, what do you keep a book? So, all right, let me get to this. A sheet. little cuddling would be nice. The American Music Awards is on tonight. I'll watch it. That's not tonight. When is, oh, it? when is it? Sunday night. Sunday oh, night. I'm not. I'm. I'm not free Sunday night. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> and neither is my audience. Put it on your recorder. Who you got? Who did you line up? You know the the fun thing is we got. Janet Jackson introducing Usher and Alicia Keys doing My Boo, which is right at the top of the charts. And in contrast to... My Booge? No, no, no. no. And, and, what do you say? My Boo. I can't my believe it came boo. out of his mouth. Dick, you don't, Howard, Dick you don't listen to these songs. Dick, you don't listen to these songs. Who are you boo. kidding? No, in, in contrast to that, though, we got a 40-year-old piece of hidden videotape that's been lost for 40 years with the Beatles on. The original four... Let original me hear Beatles you sing My you Boo. Hold your hand. Let me hear you sing My Boo. <laughs> I don't know my boob. Exactly. Me neither. I thought you said Janet Jackson is doing my boob. Hey, Janet Jackson, huh? You could t you're in tight with that whole Jackson family. Oh, yeah. For years. Yeah. Look at you. I'd bang Janet Jackson. Well, sure you would. Her ass scares me. But you'd do it anyway. Dick, would you bang Janet Jackson? How did this conversation <laughs> take this tip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. You know, you know Michael Janet Jackson. Jackson made one of her very first appearances on the American Music Awards when she was about three feet tall in a Mae West outfit. Have you ever seen Michael Jackson with a young boy? No, sir. Never? No. You've never seen him palling around with some kids when, you know, like when he oh, was... I've, I've seen the publicity photos that we've all seen. Oh. Do you ever just want to, like, grab those kids and say, Michael, get away from them? And run. You and just run with them? Run. Somehow or other, I'm losing my plug. We got, no, you're <laughs> not. Distracted again. Hey, can you speak to Eric the Midget? He wants to talk to you. I'd be happy to. All right. Kid's really messed up. Treat him like a human being. All right. Not like your employees. <laughs> no, hold on. Eric, go ahead. You're on with Dick Clark. I'm going to make your dream come true. Hi, Eric. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I was wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions about the awards show and American Dreams. Yeah, this kid, he sits at home. You know, he's in a wheelchair. He, TV is his life. And he's like two feet tall. So, Dick, don't All make right. fun of him. All right, what, what is your question, Eric? I'm taller than that. Tell Dick what you're wearing. 
He wants to know. I, I was. I noticed that Kelly Clarkson is going to be presenting at the award show. Is wondering what award she's going to be presenting. Eric, I don't, in all honesty, have the vaguest idea. This thing settles in around Saturday. It finally takes form, so somewhere along the line we'll know, but right now I don't have any idea. You mean you're not fixated on Kelly Clarkson and, and know everything you she's going to no, do? We, you, don't, got, you mean, Dick, you don't have posters in your room of <laughs> Kelly Clarkson and you don't sit there and worship no, what, her? Hey, guys, what I'm saying is we got 30 presenters and we juggle the schedule. I don't have any idea. Eric, wow, I got 30 what? presenters and I juggle the schedule. Wow. Hey, <laughs> Eric. Yes. In other words, Mr. Clark is saying, <clears throat> get a life. Kelly's no big deal. Kelly's not a big deal to She's him. She's giving out the award for best midget stalker. Notice he knew what Janet Jackson was doing. Right. Kelly Clarkson's B-list. Also, uh... <laughs> I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> what did you else did you notice about the American Music Awards? Well, um, also about the show American Dreams. I was, yeah. I'm what? a big fan of that show, and as wondering if there would be any chance that I could, you know, be on an episode of it. What, as a Vietnam vet? I'm wondering... Uh, Eric, you're, you're auditioning for a part now? <laughs> and, yes, and, Mr. Clark, I'm wondering if... Could he play? I, I can play Batman's arch enemy. <laughs> no, an anti-war protester. I would like to play an anti-war protester. Oh, my goodness. I'm Eric, kidding. anything is possible. Yeah, in other words, let me reinterpret for you, Eric. Mr. Clark is saying there's not a, a chance in hell. Once he hangs up this phone, he's going to forget you. He's going to go to his fabulous life minute, in his guys, mansion minute, guys and forget this, about you. You got a better Howard, chance Howard, of playing center minute. for the Clippers. How many of Dick Clark's productions have you seen midgets in? <laughs> okay. Howard, two minutes ago, you said be nice to this man, be kind and gentle. He's a human well, you're being nice. horrible to him. <laughs> you're not giving this guy any hope. Yeah, give him a part. I said there is always a possibility. We read between the lines. You can't even get to you. There's Where no are you going to find Eric, don't Dick. listen to these cool Hey, Dick, people. when's the last time you put a production starring a midget? <laughs> we didn't have any starring roles. Exactly. But we've had uh, little people in a lot of our shows. No, you haven't. Oh, yes. Name a show you had a little person. Big Burn. Big Burn. Big Burn. Big, big Burn. I don't remember that. I said I beg your pardon. Oh, beg your pardon. What show is that? <laughs> I don't remember that show. <laughs> Eric, there's not a chance. Mr. Mr. Clark isn't into hiring uh, you. Well, I'll break know. it to you. He's trying to be diplomatic, but there's no room for midgets in his world. Yeah, you don't really fit into an uh, anti-war protest anyway. Yeah. How do you know? You didn't... I mean... I'm just interpreting here. How do you here. know that there wasn't actually little people at anti-war protest. Because I've seen pictures and I never saw a little person. Hey, hey LBJ. <laughs> hey, hey, LBJ. How many kids are you going to kill that day? <laughs> hey. Is that it? There were well, little people. I but also wanted to know. I'm against I, invasion of the uh, Mekong Delta. <laughs> there are signs that make it into frame. Hey, I watched American Bandstand my entire life. I didn't see too many midgets on that show. <laughs> right, Dick? No, not many. <laughs> see? I know where he's at. I didn't see any midgets doing the twist. Now, you want to talk about midget stuff? You come to me, Eric. I'll cast you yeah. some stuff. This well, you might be able I'm to I'm all do. about little people. I also wanted to know if I could go to the AMAs. Uh, and oh, don't, don't, what? don't. Let me answer this for Mr. Clark. He doesn't want to hear from you. It's not the American Midget Awards. He doesn't have any more tickets. That's true, Robin. <laughs> Yeah, besides... You can imagine I got a call from a guy yesterday to do business with. He wanted four tickets, and I said, I don't have the vaguest idea where you're going to get them, but can't get them for me. Dick, you're not going to sit there with Eric the Midget. Besides, it's it's uncomfortable. He, he only reaches well, he your could. balls. Wait a minute. He could take him and sit him on his lap. Now, now Howard, let me, let me ask you an embarrassing uh, professional question. Is Eric really a, uh, an honest-to-goodness human being or somebody who created? No, no, no he's, he's an honest... Real. He's, he's real. as real as he gets. Well, then lay off him, for God's sake. Uh, I'm just kidding. He knows I'm teasing. Eric, you know I'm teasing, right? Yeah. All right. I hope so, Eric. We talk to Eric all the time. All right, Eric, then you know Mr. Clark is mean and won't give you a part, but I'm going to give you $500 cash, courtesy of the WWE Survivor Series on pay-per-view, airing this Sunday at 8 p.m. Call your local pay-per-view provider to order. How's that? Thank you. All right. Now, hold on, and I'm going to let Mr. <laughs> Clark oh, do his boy. plug. Do his A plug. moment of good hope from, from Howard Stern. <laughs> 
It's a shame when you can buy that kid off, though, really. <laughs> it's the only way we were going to get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to be an anti-war bro. I'd rather be on American <laughs> Dreams, Dick. Well, can I'm I go f- to the AMAs? Can I co-present with Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> I'm a foot tall and I have Kelly Clarkson sheets. <laughs> Howard. <laughs> President Bush wanted a ticket, you'd cough one up. Dick, let's talk about American Music Awards. Now, you say let's you're going to have... for a half a second. All right, tribute cough to the Beatles... Up. With a b- b- uh, piece of tape that we haven't seen for 40 years. What tape yeah, is that? We're going to open the show with Gwen Stefani, by the way. Uh, it's the first time she's worked outside of No Doubt in 25 years. Oh. She should get breast implants. You think? Yeah. You think so, really? Yeah. I think she'd be super smoking Could you smoking say hot. that to her, Dick? Dick, would you walk out on the American Music Awards and tell her to get some boob <laughs> implants? I don't think I'd do that, no. <laughs> That's a great way to introduce her. <laughs> Jimmy would. Tell here's the, Kimmel it, though. Here's the I don't flat. think you'll even have an introduction. Just open the show with a bang, boom, and we're off and running. She's not with her group, uh, no doubt, anymore. Right. No. Did you know that? Are they broken up, or is she just doing a solo I don't project? know whether she just stepped aside, Robin, or but this is her first solo appearance ever. In- well, here's how it works. <clears throat> you see how the solo stuff See how the solo goes? If not, you go back to your band. <laughs> and besides, didn't she always work solo in a way? Yeah, who? basically. Who is no doubt? Exactly. Who else you got, Dick? Who else? I thought he passed out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just waiting for you guys to take a breath. Uh, breath? Well, I, you know, I don't dare mention country acts because you'll cut me to ribbons. No, go ahead. Know. I don't care. We got Toby Keith, who was really hot, Kenny Chesney, Gretchen Wilson. Uh, do you know who Gretchen Wilson is? No. She is the hottest female artist to come along in country music in the last hundred years. She is. Uh, you, is you she know, as hot really as hot better than Shania Twain? You should tune in and see her. Is she better than Shania Twain? Oh, she's she's down and dirty. She is. A, she's a hot mama. Oh, she's hot. Hot yeah. mama. Yeah. Right. Then we got Sounds like somebody's Keith got a Maroon. boner. Alicia <laughs> Keys, Maroon Five, Snoop Dogg, and Farrell. Rod Stewart appears again, singing an oldie but goodie. That's nice. Oh, no. I see a nice mix of whites and blacks. I like that. But Rod Stewart singing one of those oh. ballads. Those, I'll fast those. forward. He is a he's a showstopper, right? Oh, stop it. Oh, yeah, he does stop the show. Yeah, he stops the Dick cold. <laughs> Dick, don't let him do the. Let him do like Maggie May. Oh, no, no. He does that in concert, but he doesn't oh, do that. Oh, dude, anymore. don't let him sing one of those old standards. Oh. Yeah, he's going to sing a, a good old standard. Kanye West will be there. Trust Twister me. Will be. Now, wait a minute. Here is something. Kanye West. No. Uh, yeah, Kanye yeah. West. Now, let me, let me, let me straighten out. <laughs> we have Twister with Kanye West and an unannounced superstar that you'll be talking about Monday saying, man, did you see when that guy appeared? Now, hmm. contractually, I can't tell you who it is. But oh, it's, uh, you can, can we tell guess? Us. Is it is it Nicholas Cage? Uh, it's bigger than that. <laughs> it's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> wow. Who uh, could that gonna, be? Jessica Simpson will be there. It's you know, it's it, it's a little bit of everything. Lenny Kravitz, you name it, we got it. Hey, Kelly Clarkson's on the phone to say hi. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> hi. Hi, Dick Clark. How are you? Who is it's this? Kelly Clarkson. This isn't Kelly Clarkson. I recognize your voice. This is High Pitch. Who's High Pitch? This is Kelly Quickly Clarkson. Quickly call, call Eric and tell her. Tell him. All right, so the show is Sunday night. Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC. The American Music Awards. Hosted by Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy you Kimmel. Are, you guys who pay the price to get these plugs, but I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Always good to talk to you. Always good to talk to you, Dick. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Robin. All right. Bye-bye. That's America's oldest teenager. You, Dick. <laughs> we, won't, we won't mention that uh, Bill's Patriots are on at the same time. Yeah. Where will you be? <laughs> <laughs> I won't who's, be watching Kanye West. Who's Patriots? <laughs> this is Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> this is Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Alicia Keys and Usher will be singing My Boo. My Boo. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, America's oldest teenager has great pubes. <laughs> I dig that guy for some reason. He's a good guy. Got to respect Dick Clark. Do you think he mind that I pleasured myself to his voice? Well, that was a little disrespectful, <laughs> I think. You know, at a certain point, you know, he might take it as a compliment. Guy likes plugs. I don't like to tell people how I vote. I don't want to polarize any part of the... Howard, have dinner with me. I'll tell you in a hot minute. <laughs> Howard, have dinner with me. Hot minute, I tell you. <laughs> She's a hot mama, this country star. He's a pisser. <laughs> Guy's got probably got $3 billion. Yeah. He's an old timer. Still yeah. raking it in. Still got that drive. Get out there every day and fight the good fight. <laughs> How Dick Clark here. Man, he's got to be what, 76? Yeah. Easy. Dude, that age, man, I just wouldn't even care. You sure? I know it. You, you don't know until you get there. 
I wouldn't be on some dumbass's radio show in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I certainly don't know why he got up to do this. My boo. He doesn't need to do that. That guy knows how to work at Project. Network's got to like what they see. Network's got to like doing business with a man who's willing to get up in the morning, get on this show, and take our crap. <laughs> but it's a highly rated show. I mean, yes. my goodness, he could relax. Yeah. But he doesn't. I think he likes the sex talk. Want to hear some email? Or sure. do I have to take a break? Fred? <laughs> we should break. Tonight I need the amputee beauty pageant. Tune in to see five sexy amputees compete for $10,000 and other prizes. Contestants are judged on looks, personality, and level of amputation. Nice. <laughs> it was some contest. The amputee beauty pageant tonight on E. Nice. Uh, I guess I got to take a break. Yeah, I got some EL fudge cookies outside. I want. <laughs> yeah, you're holding Artie up. Where'd you get those? Uh, I went over to Dwayne. I sent the intern to Dwayne Reed. And what do you eat? EL fudge cookie. You know, the, the, like the Keebler elves. Yeah. They have the little white vanilla cookies with fudge in between them. Oh, my God. They're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't. I don't know that you should be sending for food from the Dwayne Reese. <laughs> no, they have a whole food section. Oh, yeah. They got a whole thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't see them as my restaurant. Well, you're you're very fancy. It's right next to the diapers, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you get a whole Will you eat the whole bag this morning? I'll eat. I'm going to eat, like, about half the bag. Yeah. <laughs> and then what will you do with the other half? Will you bring it around with you or you leave it here? Well, if I leave it here, people eat them. That's why I had to get a new one today. There were uh, Anne Marie had some one yesterday. Yeah, so the vanilla with uh, chocolate. Oh, they're good, man. <laughs> and a little, a little, uh, a little thing on the back. It says, "Do you believe in elves?" It says in a little cookie. And you say yes. And I go yes. <laughs> I'm yeah, ashamed. What too. is that considered as a meal? Is that breakfast? The mid morning. No, snack? it's a nosh. Brunch. <laughs> um, I'm busy. I I feel like a perv looking at these Lindsay Lohan pictures in the National Enquirer. Dude, she's she's like she's sexy because how big her cans are. She's got big real cans. But I mean, don't you ever stop to think of her age, Artie? Well, she's eighteen, right? That's right. okay with you? Yeah. No, Artie's only like thirty-five. <laughs> you would date an eighteen-year-old? I, I don't know. That, that's a uh, yeah. You would. <laughs> then, this, then if he start getting hot, well, it's because Lindsay Lohan was shooting a video on the beach in her panties and. She looks pretty good, and she does like a strip down, and they got ex exclusive pictures in the Inquirer, and then, but on the next page they got Sybil Shepherd uh -huh. in oh. hair in hair rollers, stretch pants, and she's got a big fat gun. Yikes! Man, she used to be the hottest when I was a kid. I used to pleasure myself to her. It's just unbelievable yeah, how much you know, she's let herself go. Time to get off. Men used to do all kinds of things for her. You know, she was so beautiful. It was on recently. Well, Taxi Driver, she's hot as Helen, but Heartbreak Kid. Oh, that was the best. Man. And that movie's funny. <laughs> Heartbreak Kid and also... No, not Heartbreak Kid. You're thinking of... Um, the one with Charles Grodin. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. But what about Last Picture Show? That. Oh, she's... Oh, yeah. All, awesome. All, and Taxi Driver, too. Those three movies. You yeah. Know, so hot. I don't know that she let herself go. It's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> nah, she could have... She would have held on to it if she could have. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but it's just I bad. I think it ran away from her. It's bad to look at. Yeah. Let me see this. Uh, Howard was wondering if where I could take a look at the pictures of Tara Reed with the effed up nipple. Could you let me know? Aren't they all over the internet? Yeah, all over the internet, but people send me that stuff. Uh, there is an address. Hey, any of you guys out there got the web address for Tara Reed's effed up nipple? She went out and did a bunch of publicity the other day at Puff Daddy's party, and she was on the red carpet, and her dress fell off. Howard. Yeah. Uh, try nipslips.com. Oh. Nipslips.com, ladies and gentlemen. That's the place if you haven't been able to find it. Uh, Howard, I love the new feature on the bulletin board, howardstern.com. It's great, except it brings the bulletin board to a near standstill when we try to view it all at once. Yeah, I know. There's a bit of a jam up at first, but it does work. Uh, oh, is that when we put the pictures on right away? Yeah, and all the hot chicks in the Robo Spanker. It's almost instantaneous. Couple of people uh, really complaining about Ralph calling in yesterday. What the f is with Ralph calling in every two minutes, criticizing people? <laughs> what what is the view not on anymore? <laughs> tell that do nothing fag he has no right to tell Jimmy Kimmel or anyone else how to make the show better. Tell him to go wash some of your underwear and get the f off the phone. 
Some woman wrote me claiming that Artie Lang uh, had sex with her in 1990 in Rhode Island, <laughs> and she had his baby. I was hoping uh, that was the story. Rhode Island? Yeah. So Artie's got a kid? She claims that... It, tell me if any of this sounds... Go ahead. Like, okay. I just want to say that in 1990 in Rhode Island, I went to a party with uh, your one and only Artie Lang. After a few drinks, I asked him if he wanted some blow. So we went to the other room, away from everyone, and as soon as I went to reach for my pocket... Artie tried kissing me. Well, one thing led to another, and we had sex. It was amazing. See, I don't believe that. You know what? Yeah. You know what's funny? I, 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 don't, I remember having sex with a chicken roast. Yeah, listen to this. But that was no, the, but I, I had a condom. Though. But that was the last I've seen him, and I know I have a 14-year-old daughter no. that wants to know her father. Oh, come on, Artie. Let's meet your daughter. I'm not asking for money or prizes. I just want the truth from Artie. Please ask him if he's aware of his child. Oh. That's great. <laughs> Wait, your child is on the phone. Hello? Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> this is your baby, Kelly Clark. <laughs> I've had sex. Hi, I know that because Daddy. I've had sex in four states, and Rhode Island is one of them. Was it 14 years ago, 1990? It might have been around then. Wow. And you would have been doing coke at that time. Uh -huh. Absolutely. That was the... Uh, Howard, I discovered something about myself this morning. I think I'm a sadist because I laughed so hard at the taser gun clip. <laughs> I think I scared the girl in the next cubicle. Please, Howard. Please, Fred. you got to make that one of your permanent sound bites. Please play it again. Here's a guy who says, I actually saw that episode of Cops where the guy gets tasered. It was great. The guy had no shirt on, of course. And he was a white trash mohawk wearing dude. Oh, dear. Um, and he kind of had that long piece in the middle and not completely shaven on the sides. I cringed when they tasered him. <laughs> so a lot of people really into that taser thing. And, of course, uh, I hope everybody heard the new phony phone call with the taser sound effect. We played it a lot today. Everybody hates Ralph. There's a million I hate Ralph things. <laughs> uh, here's a guy. Oh, there was a story in the paper yesterday about an 8-year-old who was receiving sex from this 29-year-old hot MILF mom. I guess everyone's read about it. Howard, please don't That's mention hot. my name if you talk about this email. My mom molested me from three years of age to 10 and then 14 to 16. Whoa, that's when, a mom. I wonder why she took a break. Yeah, what was going on there? I even did a case study when I was 30 with uh, John Hopkins because of it. At 38, I've never been to therapy. I've had many great relationships with women, lots of bad ones too. Um, anyway, at Johns Hopkins, I learned a lot about sexual behavior, how it affects kids, and you'd be amazed at how often incest happens, especially when it comes to mom and son stuff. It goes really? largely unreported. Anyway, there's much more, but the eight-year-old kid is not going to be effed up from the sex. What might, what, what might wind up screwing his head up is all the attention now, so bang away, little man. <laughs> and that's my point. It's very different for boys than girls, and while I don't believe that any 29-year-old woman should be having sex with an eight-year-old, the kid will not be permanently screwed up. Well, but like we said, it's the fuss that his family makes over it now that That's might right. make the difference. Yeah, so it's very different for a guy. It's uh, a boy on, uh, you know, a man on boy. That F's you up. Yeah, man on boy is a whole other story. <laughs> Let's not yeah. forget about saying that. Because yeah. a guy might be out there saying, see, Howard says it's okay. No, no, it's not okay. <laughs> and it's not okay in any circumstance. Susan, you're on the air. Howard, why do you keep hanging up on me? Who are you? Oh this, is, oh, this is the boring woman. Crazy Susan. Because you're boring. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, how can I become less boring? Get a new personality or have a head transplant. <laughs> wow, that's pretty radical. Yeah. Yeah, that radical. would be radical. Every time we put you on, you just kind of bore everyone. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. You know what you should say to me when you call up? What? This is Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> this is Kelly Clarkson. All right, goodbye. This is Kelly Clarkson. Pretty good. All right, we'll be back right after these words. Here's anchor woman Jessica Savage demonstrating patience and understanding with her television crew. Okay. I mean, we go through this. Yeah, we go through this every week, and I, this is the last week I'm going to go through this. I mean, if somebody's assigned on this show as a stage manager, then somebody can be here. Every week is the same story. I don't mind it once or twice, but it's enough. I mean, they say, i got to have a countdown. It's 42 seconds. Can I have a rehearsal? I don't know what else to do here. I mean, I'll, I'll rehearse, and can somebody tell me how close it came to 42 seconds? It was in the ballpark. 
three, two, one. Good evening. The U.N. Security Council is meeting tonight on the Iranian situation, a session boycotted by Iran. No resolution is expected tonight. The council will meet again tomorrow. I'm Jessica Savage in New York. More news later on this NBC station. What? That's not acceptable. I'm not going to take it. I'm going to be looking over here. No, I'm not. What am I going to do? It's going to tell me when I, when I notice something else comes up. I'll notice I'm off the air, whether I finished or not. I'm sorry. Let's get a stage manager in here. I don't care where you find one. Get one out of another studio. I'm not going to wait until it, it, this is prime time. Hey, now. Hey, Dan, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, Howard, I want to tell you, man, you guys are killing me with these bits. The, uh, the bit you had today with the uh, taser? Yes. Phone call? Yeah, I love that one. I almost crashed my tractor trailer, man. I was laughing so hard, I had to pull over. We like, we like when you almost crash your tractor <laughs> yeah, trailer. Yeah, I don't like to crash, you know? But as long as almost. All right. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. I could actually see the videotape of that guy getting tasered. Seems like it's right up my alley. Yeah, I, I want to see it, too, because I can't imagine where that scream, you know, how that scream is coming out of him. It's wonderful. Yeah. The guy peed his pants. <laughs> That must be a universal sound. I don't think you could play that for anyone and have them not laugh. Oh, man. That's great for phony phone calls. Oh, we learned that. It's incredible. That, that sound oh. get, just goes right to the basic laugh. Jeff, did you hear the phony phone call? Uh, no. Isaac, I ain't Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Wait, oh, man, moment. that's funny. <laughs> right yeah. One last time on the phone wow. call. And that's I think it'll really hit everybody funny. the same way. That is just uncontrollable laughter there. I don't know if I have the taser... <laughs> Phony oh, no. phone call. I might have lost it. I bet you you could find five people who have no sense of humor, and they would laugh. Oh, man. That's a real good one. Might be my my favorite. Oh, thanks, man. That might even make Dick Clark laugh. I don't think so. <laughs> no sense of humor there. We should have tried him. Hello? Yeah, hi, ma'am. How are you? Yeah. My life partner, he's... <laughs> He's trying to change out a switch. It, it's a pretty simple thing, but we can't get the power to shut off. And he shut the goddamn phone. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> ma'am. Shut yeah. the phone. <laughs> is there a way to turn the power off? To go go to the main where the main panel is. Yeah, we got uh, the fuse panel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just undo all the fuses. Well, you he should said, have a main one up there. Hold on here. I got the red wire. No, the, get the fuse. The red wire and the black wire. The fuse. Go get that fella out of your house right now. Excuse me? Go get that fella out of your house right now. He's my life partner. He lives here. I know, but get him out there. Call you somebody to fix that face. We get hurt. Excuse me? Call someone before somebody gets hurt. Well, he doesn't think he needs that. He's one of those tough guys. Well, he ain't too damn tough. He's hollering. I'm okay. Hold on. I got so, to tell him. Go pull a down and tell that guy, get off before he gets hurt. He going he to get hurt, and then he going to sue you. Get off the Listen, I ain't got time for all this pile of crap. Just hang hang up the damn phone, call the and get him some help. He needs some help both ways. <laughs> both ways. Mental and physical. Nice. <laughs> Jeff Cesario is a comedian, very funny guy, this Thursday through Sunday at Hillerides. Hillerides. Oh, Hilar <laughs> Hillerides? Hillerides. In Cleveland? I don't think that's, hey, that's, guys. Uh, that's, that's an Italian restaurant, isn't it? <laughs> Hillerides. Hillerides? <laughs> Hilarities. Hilarities in Cleveland? Just yeah, with, it's great room. That can't be the way you spell hilarities. <laughs> Who spelled that? How do you spell hilarities? H-I-L-A-R-I-T-I-E-S. Uh, -I, -I, oh, I guess it is. Hilarities. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the idiot. Yeah, hilarities. Try the veal scallopini at Hilarities. I thought Hilarities was one of those Greek gods. <laughs> there you go. God of humor. The god of like humor. Esophocles. Esophocles. <laughs> the god of choking. Hilarities. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Jeff will be at Hilarities Fourth Street Theater in Cleveland, Ohio. Which I believe may not even be. Uh, 
Just getting your signal today. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. Good day to come in. We're not we're not on in Cleveland Great today. day for the plug. Yeah. If you're in Cincinnati, drive to Cleveland and tell someone he'll be at Hillary's. Please. Yeah, if anybody knows anyone in Cleveland. <laughs> Give him a call. I'm sorry, your plug is a total waste of time today. <laughs> <laughs> for you. I feel like I just got tasered. Talk about a black cloud over your head. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, a little dark. Poor Jeff. Talk about black clouds. He came on What's our show on? like about a year ago uh, and started talking about that he goes to a friendly kind of basketball game at Larry Gary yeah. Shandling's house yeah. every week, every Sunday. And it's kind of cool because celebrities go there like David Duchovny or right. whatever. And it's it's a nice little networking and thing. And it, it was quite an upbeat conversation for the most part. Yeah, I mean, you didn't badmouth the no. guy. You didn't trash him. After that, Jeff never got invited back to Gary yeah. Shandling's house. Did you actually hear from him? No. Uh, I saw him at, I worked two clubs in L.A., the Laugh Factory, great club, and the Comedy Magic Club, great club. Yeah. So this Not summer. Not as nice as hilarities, though. Well, no. <laughs> it's, it can't be pronounced two different ways. Right. Uh, so, Hilarities. <laughs> hilarities. I'm working out, uh, I, I did a Comedy Central half hour special, so I'm working out my material at, at the Comedy Magic Club. And Gary, like, uh, gets the, to host the Emmys. He gets that gig. So he starts to come into the club to work out. And so he's there. So I figure, well, you know, I'll make the best of this. So I see him in the back halls, and he just stares at me like that ninth grade stare, like, man, you freaking looked at my girl. You know, he, like, right. gave me some weirdo stare, so I just stayed away from him. Wow. He never went so up and said anything. Speak? No. You didn't no, go over to just... him and say, like, hey, dude, like, why well, can't we work yeah, this out? I just thought, you know, the ball's in his court. I wrote him an email saying, here's what I thought about the show, and I got a tape of the show. If you want to hear it, you can hear it. I didn't badmouth anybody. And yeah. Never heard from the dude. So then <clears throat> I'm, I, I, get, I get scheduled on onto the Late Late Show. This is how weirdly petty this is. The late, It's the Late Late Show. With Craig Kilborn. Yeah, but he's not even there. It's right. guest hosts. Who's right? the guest host? Well, well I'm scheduled with, uh, with uh, Tom Green. For like a month, I've been. They think it's going to be Tom Green. They think it's going to be Tom Green. I get an email the day before, like from this uh, talent coordinator who's leaving town like the next day. Right. So he emails me. He says, Tom Green had to fall out, but we got <laughs> David Duchovny. Right. And David just booked as his lead guest, Gary Shanley. Oh, and then you, no. it's going to be the greatest show ever. Oh, no. Bye, boom. And he's gone, right? So I'm thinking, oh, no. What the hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> the S has hit the fan. So I figure, well, you know, they got, they got doors on dressing rooms, I'll be fine. I shut the door, I'm a pro, I'll go in, I'll do my right. job. I'm in meetings all the next day, right up literally till like an hour and a half before I leave, I'm in meetings. I get a call two hours before I'm headed over to the show, literally two hours. Wow. The producer of the show says, uh, listen, uh, uh, can you move to Thursday night? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my. You know what, Gary? I hate you. Well, Gary Shanley's really got to get it together. And the poor dude, he's so sweet, the producer. And he goes, listen, we get a bigger lead-in on Thursday nights, right. and Ahmad Rashad's the guest host. He oh. goes, so he's not doing any comedy, so we need comedy on that show. Yeah, and there's another be... reason, he says. And what, what did he say? <laughs> well, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't really yeah. say, but I figured it out. So. Yeah, wow. I I'm going to try and make you huge. I'm going to put you on with Ahmad Rashad. <laughs> And so, Ahmad's first guest is <laughs> Gary Shandler. Now, do you think kidding. Gary is upset with you, Howard? Oh, I wouldn't care less. No, I'm just wondering. Is he uh, just because Jeff point. broke no, the... No, I say he's mad at Jeff. He's not mad at yeah. me because, A, it's he wouldn't waste his time being mad at me. And it's what you do. And it's what I do. He's Jeff mad at Jeff. The one. Jeff's the one who betrayed him. Yeah. And the ball, the ball <laughs> is that. literally in Gary's court because it's a basketball game that right. Jeff can't go to. <laughs> It's the one time you could say that and really mean it. Yeah, right. It's, it's literally in his court. It's yeah, so I don't even petty. have a court. So petty. What that did is... you say now? Boy, you must have been horrible. We no, play no. That that's back. A, yeah, we were fine. We're we were just, to... You were oh. asking if you could play Come in to the game. game. And I said you'd fit right in. And then uh, it snowballed from there. And we just had a little fun with it. It was great fun. Yeah, whatever. Gary, it's comedy for Pete's sake. Hey, you doesn't know what I, have a much of a sense of humor about himself. Apparently not. But you know what I learned about Jeff too? What? Which was an interesting story, and I'm kind of jealous of this. Oh, yeah. You're and you might jealous? not think of Jeff as a stud. No. But early on in his career. Well, but she might. Yeah. Why <laughs> no. take that away if it's possible? She likes Steve O. <laughs> early on in his career. <laughs> he. Anything's possible. You didn't bang. Terry Hatcher. No, 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 no. But you we went just, on a date with we Terry We just Hatcher. went on a date. This now, is, how does that 
what happened? We we met at a party. This was like after like I did I think one Letterman and one Tonight Show. So and like her biggest thing up to that point was she'd done like a Showtime movie, and all I remember was she was tied to a bed in oh, lingerie. That one, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, that was like the poster. That's oh, what this she was a knockout. She, she was so she was so hot, and we just met at a party and we decided to go on a date, and somehow. And were you were you able to work into the conversation that you had just done Letterman and Leno? She knew because she knew she knew. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she was impressed with your credits. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. I, I think she probably had too much to drink or something, and she decided to go on a date with me. And so we went on a date, and then we wound up at my crappy and like, little what did studio she wear? Apartment. What did she wear on the date? She wore, she was exquisite. She had really tight jeans on and a really sharp, uh, what do they call it, a top? A blouse, sort of a halter top uh, yeah, blousey nice. thing. Nice. Was smoking, man. Was this the hottest she, chick you'd ever gone out yeah, with? Yeah, and she yeah. was just the sweetest thing, and we wound up making out for a little bit. Kissing. Kissing. Nice. Yeah, we, yeah. And then you never heard from her again. Well, you know, I'm sure the next morning she woke up and said, well, you know, the dude's driving a 78 Toyota Celica. I don't care what's been on a tonight show. Yeah, I'm Terry Hatcher. I can get any guy I want. He told me he created the Mary Tyler Moore <laughs> stuff. <laughs> How is that possible? And like three months later, she was she was married to this massive hunk, what you would think of as a superstar. <laughs> right. Who drove like a hot Jeep Sahara. Meanwhile, so if, she married, it if me. she married you, you would have worshipped her. You would still be married. Uh, you know, no, I don't think so. No? I don't, you I think you would have dumped her? You would have dumped her? No, no, I just think, you know, I, I don't think I was meant to be with an actress. That's why I'm with my wife. She's <laughs> yeah. out of the business. She's not in show business. No, I just know that guys who aren't hunks will worship their women. That's yeah. true. Actually, that me and my true. girlfriend me and my them. girlfriend get along because we're both out of show business. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would have worshipped. Do you think she remembers the date at all? No, I doubt it. Right. She might, She was super sweet, though. She's a sweetheart. She's really Do you nice. still, like, occasionally, like, I know when I pleasure myself, I can go through the catalog of women that I've made out with and stuff. Do you yeah. ever pleasure yourself to Terry? Well, you know, once in a while I have a starter kit that involves several uh, yeah. several dames. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which so you, you, get, you know, you got to get zero to 60 pretty quick, and that'll get you up there, and then you go from there. Terry right? Hatcher, that's a, g- a young Terry Hatcher. That's a Hatcher. good one, right? Did oh, you get yeah. to feel her up or just make out with her? Uh, pretty much just made out. Yeah, that's the right move. Yeah. And then, like, did you call her for weeks afterwards and, like, hey, wh- what's going on? No, you know, I because I, I just didn't want to be, like, a psycho guy, so right. I just kind of laid so out. So you called once, and that was it. Yeah, that was pretty and much it. And you didn't hear back, that was it? Yeah, and then literally, like, ten minutes later, I think I think the hunk guy came in. Right. Into the picture. Sweet guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Detective Gephardt from the LAPD. We'd like you to stop calling Terry Hatcher. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I just called once. Was oh, that's yeah, that was need. too many. We made out. <laughs> Mr. Cesario, it's not let's get ugly. What's your definition of making Ms. Ms. Hatcher claims you tried to rape her. <laughs> All right, uh, want to do some news or what? Yeah. Uh, Jeff Cesario is here this Thursday through Sunday at... Hilarities, 4th hey. Street Theater in Cleveland, Ohio, and Ooh. for tickets, 216-241-7425. Check out Jeff at sportalicious.com as well. So, I, <clears throat> this is kind of funny. Um, Jackie the Joke Man was just on Home Shopping Network yeah. selling selling joke, joke something. Selling jokes, probably. Joke, joke machine. A joke for machine? For kids, and it's funny, but I think we've run out of time to play it. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I was looking forward to hearing. Uh, you know, I, I'm. what time was he on? What time Lisa, what time on? was he on? It was on at 7 o'clock, the Sunrise Show. Oh, early in the wow. morning, okay. Yeah, sorry we missed it, but we do have it on tape. Yeah. Oh, really good. Okay, great. Was it funny? No, it wasn't funny at all. I just thought it was kind of interesting that they announced him as um, Jackie from the Howard Stern Show, and he hasn't been on your show for how many years now? Four and a half at least. Yeah, Four he's a, a long year. way from. That's what they mean. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, but it's funny because Gary listened to it and said they mentioned me more than him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big thing was Jackie from the Howard Stern Show. Jackie who taught Howard everything he knows. What? Wow. What was that last line? <laughs> I'm sure that was the joke, Robin. <laughs> yeah, that was the joke. That was the only joke from the show. That's one of the jokes on his machine. <laughs> yeah. That's not a joke to Jackie. Wait, now i got to hear a little bit. To a special guest that is joining us here on Sunrise this wow. morning. And as a matter of fact, all I can do is tell you <laughs> is this guy knows jokes, okay? Jackie the Joke Man is going to be joining us here live. Matter of fact, you know him from the Howard Stern Show. That's right. And from what he tells me, he taught Howard everything he knows. Okay? So we're going <laughs> to get ready. 
Who's that guy? He's auditioning for a morning zoo. That guy. Yeah, I like that, that guy. guy. Hello. That guy's hilarious. That guy's been shot out of a cannon. <laughs> 58 <laughs> degrees and breezy. Hey, listen to this. I just ran into Jackie the Joke by Botlick. <laughs> hey, coming up on the afternoon drive time, my buddy Dealey Conrad. He's just like, what? What? Yeah, I didn't know there were people who really talked like that. Oh, that guy's fantastic, man. <laughs> yeah, I talk like that. I'll try to have an operation. He's a joke machine, that guy. I'm a joke. <laughs> I know I got to listen to some of it. Yeah. It sucked me He's in. great. <laughs> right now, though, we know that there are a lot of you out there watching today. Matter of fact, we happen to hear that Howard Stern might be watching our show this morning. Hey, Howard, good show. Um, yeah, good show. <laughs> This guy's amazing. Howard, at this point, it's five to one. You beating Jackie in mentions. Yeah, so far Howard Stern has been the guest. Yeah, were you on? Uh, evidently. <laughs> Later today, Holocaust memorial plates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these are beautiful uh, recreations of the Holocaust on your dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs> it's bone china. <laughs> Made out of Jew bones. <laughs> Them Jew bones, Jew bones, of Jew bones. <laughs> okay, let's get serious now. These plates fit perfectly in any oven. Which <laughs> I'm insane. Unlike the Jews, these plates go into your oven without all the screaming. No whining, like wah, wah, go in the oven. <laughs> wah, you're putting me in the oven, wah. Experience Auschwitz like you were there. They love the dishwasher. <laughs> Ever wonder what it was like to be at Auschwitz? <laughs> New Auschwitz plates from the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> Treat these plates just like a Jew in World War II. First give them a shower and then put them in the oven. <laughs> Steam them up. <laughs> Perfect for a filter fish. Give them a gas. <laughs> We've got they a great show lined it. up for you because we have a special guest coming up as well. You know, it's Anne Frank. <laughs> 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 That's right. When you think about the Howard Stern show, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of unique jokes. And, and certainly there are a lot of fans everywhere millions and millions of americans nationwide one of his guests uh, jackie the joke man everybody knows him has created a set of remarkable they call joke toys for our kids for <laughs> mom and dad wow. dan Ferraza is joining us today from excalibur jackie has been with the howard stern show for over 15 years as a mate as an ensemble player and also as the head writer and he also does many gigs around the country in many uh, comedy clubs. And he lent his expertise to these products. We have. All right, at this point, wow. I'm, beating, I'm beating him in terms of mentions. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, he's hardly there. <laughs> wow, that's some buildup. Nice. What is the joke machine? <laughs> He's, there's what? not just one, there's several. Is you don't know? I mean, Jeff, really, how much information do you need? There are several <laughs> joke toys, if you will. I'm curious as to how it works. I just don't get it. I think Jackie's there to explain it. They're going to bring him out. You know, for probably close to the same dough, you could get Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. 50 bucks? Two shows a night? You know, a joke toy is not a good thing. See, if you had been smart enough to invent a joke toy, maybe Terry Hatcher would have called you back. You're the inventor of the joke toy? Hello, <laughs> Jeff. Did you, are you the inventor of the joke toy? I understand you developed a machine that works on several levels. Is that what he just said? It works on several levels? Several levels, yes. Yeah. There's different yeah. levels of jokes. Kids and adults. Kids and adults. They're amazing joke toys. That's Four a... great products here that he endorses are made by Excalibur. They're for the whole family. They are good, clean oh, jokes. Wait a minute, hold it. You know what? I'm getting kind of uncomfortable here. Well, I am too. I don't this like this. This is not a live Jackie. Okay? No, it's not. Let's get this out of here because right now. It's a cardboard Jackie they had there. Oh, yeah. that's a joke. <laughs> like at sight jokes too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make all the fun you want. I'm getting free publicity. They made a cardboard cutout of Jackie? Yeah. Wow, they went to a lot of effort for this thing. No, I'm sure Jackie made it. <laughs> you know, Sirius Radio doesn't even make a cardboard cutout of me. <laughs> okay, here's how we've got to cut. You know, Jimmy should write that to you tonight. Hey, what's wrong with Sirius? They don't make a cardboard cutout of you? And Jimmy Kimmel's making me mental. He sends me an email or two a day. About what? About, like, telling me everything Sirius Radio should be doing. Like, I just signed the deal. You know, it, it's a five-year project. Right. You know, it's a big project. But, but Jimmy's like... 
How come Sirius isn't doing a special offer to get everyone Sirius radios? And, like, they should be pushing for Christmas because it's a great Christmas gift. And why aren't they doing that? So I go... Who is this guy? <laughs> I mean, what is, you know, like, 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 what, like, you it's know, he's sweet. not exactly doing great, though. Why is mean, he worried about your career? I don't see ABC doing any kind of special <laughs> offer for him or putting him in any promos. Thank you, Mike yeah. Ovitz. But I mean, like, we have stuff planned, but like, it's a little premature. But yeah, that is. Okay. Jimmy's like a, worried. Jimmy's worried. Kind of like a tail gunner <laughs> telling the pilot how to fly the plane. <laughs> Jimmy goes. Ever since you made the announcement about going to satellite, uh, the LA radio station is screwing up the show. They're cutting out major portions oh, of it, and man. they're and they're putting in too many commercials, like even more than usual. And I'm like, Wait, this only gets me crazy. But then again, why do I care? But I care, and I write back, I don't care. And then I, but I care. But I'm just wondering why Jimmy is feel he feels it's his job to inform you, keep you aware of. I know. Well, maybe he feels like he's been through enough on his show and he's seen enough mistakes where he's trying to, you know, I yeah. don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, he's trying to He's you know. straightened out all those mistakes and now he wants to teach me. Well, he's I'm a going by. He's looking out for you. Right. Thinking he's got you've got a 5-year commitment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't Jimmy like sort of year to year? Year to year. How about every 3 weeks <laughs> oh. they decide whether they're going to renew him? <laughs> he gotcha. should be worried about himself. Yeah, I think I'm handling my career just fine. <laughs> Maybe he's just laying pipe for his, for the, you know, come on, come on board with you over. Maybe. Series. Well, we've talked. Yeah, maybe you need to run his whole serious thing. Yeah. Um, well, joining us on Sunrise, right, Jackie? <laughs> Jackie, the joke Welcome. Man. I will try to be more animated than the. Uh... <laughs> All right, now the fun. Oh, that's Jackie. That's Jackie, but the fun will begin tomorrow. We'll listen to it. That must be businessman Jackie. Yeah, that is. He's got the regular voice on. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's when he loses that. It's just like, you know, I'm. You know, I'm trying to say that this is a clean product. <laughs> this is the Bill Gates Jackie. I think I have to hear more. I do. I'm. You know, I'd be hooked as soon as. Yeah, but I gotta. It. I gotta get out of here today, oh. and then we won't have time for news. Oh. So it's a question of: Do you want to do this now? Well, what's hotter news than a joke machine? There that, you go. That I gotta find levels. out how it works. <laughs> Seven killed in Fallujah, and Jackie has a joke machine. <laughs> Jackie has four joke machines. Wait, Jackie's on the phone. Hi, Jackie. Hey, Alan, it's Jackie the Joke Man. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Captain Jenks, yes. <laughs> hey, good morning, Howard. Good morning. You know, I got an email, like, this is some time back from somebody that says that Jackie still introduces himself. They went and saw him at a live club, that he still introduces himself as Jackie the Joke Man from the Howard Stern Show. No, I wouldn't have believed that. But after listening to what you just played, you know, I bet you he does that still. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, he hasn't been with the show for what now, four or five years? No, but it is his credit. Yeah, yeah he, he was might, on the show. He might be using it like, uh, you know, guys use the Tonight, you know, you've seen yeah. him on the Tonight Show. I mean, or, you know what? You know, like, you still see uh, David Brenner running around going, he hosted the Tonight Show. Right. Yeah. It was 100 he, years ago. He never, he never like, um, you know, was fired. He quit on his right. own will. Uh, it's true. So, I mean, it's like, whatever. Any, who are you, well, Jimmy Kimmel, you, trying to get me worked up? What do you want him to say? Jackie, who quit the Howard Stern show? Yeah, that would be the proper credit. And now Jackie, who quit the greatest job he ever had. That's a great ramp up at a nightclub. Just a guy who wasn't happy being successful. Do you think that he's still making good money, Howard? No. I yeah. introduced myself at clubs as Artie Lang, winner of the job lottery. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he's still got all his shanties and stuff. Here's the winner of the job lottery, <laughs> the luckiest construction worker on earth. Yeah. <laughs> if he plays his cards right, he's never going to have to invent a joke machine. Yeah. Artie Lang. Right. He might actually get to retire. <laughs> that lucky longshoreman. Oh, and, hey, by the way, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> By the by the way, I'm doing trivia tonight at Tex Mex Connection in North Wales. <laughs> yeah, Captain Jack's from the Howard Stern, Stern Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I'll and I'll be giving away at, uh, Jackie's joke stuff. Great. Oh. Not really. Thank you, Jenks. Jenks playing up that trivia night over yeah, at Tex Mex. Yeah. Jeff Cesario over at uh, Hilarities Fourth Street Theater in Cleveland, Ohio, where some people call it. Hillary Tees. Hillary Tees. That might be a strip joint. Hillary Tees. Hillary Tees. The ticket's called 216-241-7425. Check out Jeff at sportalicious.com. By the way, Hilarities might want to look into that because, like, I'm reasonably intelligent. I graduated summa cum laude, and I'm looking at that going, Hillary Tees. Didn't look right, huh? No. i got to figure a lot of people are making that mistake. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do a little news. All right. <laughs> 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 <laughs
Wow, that's new. I like it. Oh, yeah. Fred's got a million of them. Oh, penis, 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 penis. I want my penis. Tonight. I believe that's Dan the Song Parody Man, wasn't it? Who made that? It's not labeled as such, but I think I'm going to credit him. think it is? If it's someone else, then let me know. All right. Dan sends in a lot yeah. of stuff. It's probably... Yeah. I thought it was interesting, you know, looking at the pictures of uh, Cameron Diaz today, taken out a photographer. Boy, yeah. Wow. You know, they said, boy, she really turned into Charlie's Angels, you know. She saw, you know, she and her boyfriend, Justin Timberlake, were coming out of a club. And how manly must he feel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With her taking out the photographer who was giving him a problem. Yeah. Well, I love it, too. Like, some, you know, Cameron Diaz obviously lost her cool, so she grabbed the guy's camera away uh -huh. from him. So now you know the guy's going to be like, my neck hurts. I'm going to sue for $10 million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, these guys wait for that kind yeah. of stuff. Well, when I was reading it, I, you know, I thought back to some of the stories you tell. They were probably giving them a really hard time right. hoping to get something like, you know, some interesting pictures. And they did. They definitely got a story in some pictures. Wow, wow, wow. Cameron Diaz beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that Justin Timberlake stood by. Yeah, I just while watched. While she handled well, the honestly. Business. And took the guy's camera. Say you're in a bar fight and you have two choices of people to help you. Cameron Diaz or Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I'm going with Cameron. I'm like, By the way, Richard Christie. Business. Yeah. Richard Christie made the Robin Hood Ah, intro. see there? Nicely right. done. Nicely okay. done. By the way, I wanted to compliment <laughs> Richard on his acting in the, um, the phone taser piece. phone yes. piece. Yes. He's p playing the bottom, I think. In that power that bottom. Couple. Clearly. And barely changing his real voice to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jack, Jack, Semi. For a Semi lot of, for a lot of folks that watch the Howard Stern show, you know you're telling me in the green room here too that literally <laughs> if it weren't for you, there would be no Howard Stern. Oh please. Uh, please. <laughs> now, you know I didn't say that. I never said that. I never uttered those words in my life. My God. Hey, let's talk about this too. How did you <laughs> I never say that. Who is that guy? It's Jackie Businessman. <laughs> Man, that's like a bad corporate date. I'm sure Jackie's trying to get out of it at this point. <laughs> he likes that stuff. Yeah, I'm sure that he was having a great time. Looking forward to it. There's a new miracle pill on the horizon. Tell it me it makes you... my penis bigger. No. It helps you lose weight, oh, quit smoking, that. and fights heart disease all at the same time. Yay! Wow. wow. I wish yes. I had invented that. It's called happiness. It is a new kind of drug. They say that many of the people in a test study, a third of them, as a matter of fact, lost 10% of their body weight and kept it off for two years. That's longer than any diet drug on the market, according to this new research. It also uh, helps people to stop smoking. They discovered this when they were, you know, using it to treat heart disease, that it had these uh, side effects. And they said that then they turned their attention to, you know, making it into a diet drug. They said the FDA will uh, probably give it approval very soon and it would be sold under, what is the name? I think it's called Accomplia or something like that. Celebrex with a Coke Center. <laughs> That's what it is. Nice. I have a very good friend uh, who might need help in those areas. How do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first in a new class of drugs that fights <clears throat> cravings, particularly for food and nicotine. Yes, John. Howard, how do you jerk us with just a little bit of that Jackie thing? you got to play the whole thing. Yeah. Come on. Because we, we're going to start from the very beginning tomorrow. we got to dis dissect this whole thing. But isn't that smart, though? Then you have to tune in tomorrow. But, I tune, but it, we tune in every day anyway. Oh. That's Come true, on. too. Come on. It's called a teaser in radio. Right. <laughs> Apparently, you're not the one who went to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Did they teach you that at Connecticut School of Broadcasting? Uh, I'm sure they did, but I was probably having a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were busy in Rhode Island, if right. I'm not mistaken, my friends. <laughs> exactly. Did you learn nothing from Cabby? You just blurt out, yeah, I think I did have sex in Rhode Island, right on the air. <laughs> What are you thinking of? Well, it's one of four states. <laughs> Robin, what else is in the news? Uh, now they're trying to blame the little boy in this uh, scandal between the 29-year-old woman and the 8-year-old. Is that the Cameron Diaz-Justin Timberlake story? No. Is it, is, do they have about that age, <laughs> age spread? 29 and 8? Could be. But this little boy is now being blamed by the mother of Tammy Emery. She says mm. it's the little boy's fault. Her yeah. daughter's a good girl and we yeah. should do this. She was that just too kid. friendly. He wore short shorts. Guess what? <laughs> he was asking Getting for Getting a it. chubby sausage. The wayfish Emery told police when she was arrested it was her fantasy. I was the girlfriend and he was the boyfriend and someday we could be in a relationship. The boy had a key to the house. 
He plied me with Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> and the pair would sneak upstairs to have their sex sessions oh. while Emery's daughter was downstairs watching TV. Unbelievable. Nice. What a mom. Well, I don't think going with the defense that the boy... It was his fault. Yeah, boy led me into it. That's going to be a tough one. you got to just go with, you know what, I was crazy. Yeah. I, I, I'm plead on the mercy of the court. I need help. I think it's all of a sudden sinking in. They say when she heard uh, news radio talking about her case, she broke down in tears. Hmm. So well, that's it's finally beginning to <laughs> that this was not a good thing. She was apparently upset at work on Friday. One of her coworkers said Emery told them about a month ago child welfare workers had taken her daughter away from her. Seeing the kid cry wasn't enough. She had to hear it on radio news. <laughs> it brings a sense snap. of reality to it all. Yeah, when you hear other people say it. You know how you hear people say it? If you heard other people saying this, what would you do? Yeah, it, re it really hits home that I've been banging a kid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I feel bad, so I'll play a little more Jackie. Anyway. <laughs> that was right after you told me there was no home shopping network about you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> that, that's true. Uh, well, we okay. all believe that. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk Thank about you for the endorsement of these products. This, they are great. These they are, are cool. Great. And, and, I, and I have the... Jackie getting right down to business. Let's endorse yeah. some products. Take the, the Joke Master Jr. home to my kids, and I, and I, and I have an right. 11-year-old. Lie. 7-year-old. They had a blast with this. They go nuts. Every kid that has gotten this thing oh, has just right flipped for it. Uh, the day that we got the first one, we had all the kids over from the uh, Excalibur Electronics family to take pictures for the box, and they were fighting over it. And that's when we knew we... Come on. Wow. What, the box they were fighting over? No, the kids were fighting over the electronic <laughs> Excalibur joke machine. Oh, do the no. kids who have to uh, manufacture them in Thailand, do they, have, do they get a big kick out of it? They don't even understand the jokes. <laughs> they had a great product. <laughs> right. They're the greatest knock-knock jokes, elephant jokes, and kids' jokes that we all heard when we were kids. That and, could be uh, fun. It, it's fun because there's 140 of them, kid? which is endless. For, for a five- or seven-year-old kid, that's an unbelievable amount of jokes. Plus, if I use it when I lure eight-year-olds into my <laughs> lair. Could somebody hit a button knock, on one knock. of these things and let Who's me hear it? it? It's, it's coming up. Oh. From what I understand, I'm handing a note. Okay. If you hit the I, it repeats. So if a kid hears a joke and he really loves it, he runs up and says, Mommy, Mommy, listen to this one. He hits the I and replays it. Right. So not only are there 140 jokes, but if you play each one five times each, we're up in the thousands. You know? Knock, knock. Who's there? Cook. Cuckoo. Cuckoo, what are you, a clock? <laughs> the kids are going to love this. They love it. Wow. Really you know, do. every kid goes oh through. My what are you, if I was a kid, I'd punch someone. That was the worst <laughs> joke. <laughs> well, it's for a five-year-old. I don't think five-year-olds would like that joke. No, they would. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Cuckoo. Yeah. Cuckoo who? They but he goes cuckoo. You can't. <laughs> what are you, a cuckoo clock? It's what are you, not nuts? clear. <laughs> what are you, <laughs> what are you a fig? <laughs> what are you, a homo? <laughs> what are you, a homo? <laughs> you kid. Knock, knock, who's that cuckoo? Cuckoo. What are you, a homo? <laughs> Go upstairs and screw your mother or something. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, I'm going over to have sex with a neighbor. Get out of here. Entire lives right. like me, you know. Sure. But, uh... From the age of five, seven, nine, they all go through it at a different time. None but of the even ages. Every just kid loves jokes, me. and usually they go through these joke stages, and they wind up coming up and mommy, mommy, uh, knock, knock, who's there? Uh, Santa Claus, why? Because he has ice cream, and you have to laugh because yeah, it's right. not funny. It's a joke. <laughs> what did you hold it? Santa Claus, why? Because why? he has ice cream. Who's Santa there? Claus, <laughs> knock, knock, who's there? Santa know. Claus, why? Because he has ice cream. Not supposed to be Santa Claus, who? Well, maybe not to Wait. a five-year-old. I don't know. I don't get that. Seriously. Say it again. I think I was going through a retrospective of all the jokes <laughs> and all the stages that a child would go from seven to eight to nine. Yes, Louise. Yeah, how how you doing? All right, brother. Oh, uh, how is you going to help me, puppy? What? My wife, you know, she... Uh, I can't tell what you. I think there's a comedy bit going on. That's the uh, the d adult joke box. Yeah, that's available on Joke Machine 3. <laughs> Puppy. But at least these jokes will be funny. Now they actually have jokes, they so right. they can run around and play them. And it, for a kid that's not that popular, it's fantastic, because all of a sudden he's part of the game. You know, he can go into the group and he sure. can... The psychological profile of the joke machine. Wow. It's it's for for kid, if your kid is unpopular, get it for him. Hey, I know yeah. I'm a geek, but <laughs> hey, this will win the, the kids over. Hi, kids. Knock, knock, Santa Claus. If these kids from Columbine had these joke machines, <laughs> <laughs> they would have been in the crowd. Yeah. Did he just say that uh, it's good for unpopular yes. kids? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he did. Hey, loser, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, the philanthropist, trying to help children. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll give you a dollar to listen to my joke machine. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get for Christmas? Joke machine. Also, you're unpopular. All of a sudden, it makes it popular. And the kid who's already popular 
loves to have jokes. You know, we, we, yeah. Because you know how much Jackie gets laid. It's a great gift if your kid's a retard. In 30 years, they can be on the home <laughs> shopping club. Yeah, if your child's retarded, these are easy enough to memorize. It's a retarded stocking stuffer. <laughs> How about if you're really lonely, you can talk to the machine and pretend it's your friend. That's right. Pretend you're friends with Jackie. Hey, mongoloid, here's your gift. I'm going to take my joke machine to the beach. And it'll talk to me. You can do the cuckoo joke at the ocean. <laughs> hey, Mo. I like, you know, I don't mind Jackie out there selling stuff. Listen, that's how you make it's a living. He does. But to t if you're unpopular, if you get the joke machine, it'll make you popular? I don't think so. <laughs> Want to make you more unpopular? That's make asking popular? a little bit too much from the joke machine. You know what? The only thing that's going to help is a, an unpopular kid buy some pot and give it to people. I hope the joke machine is soft plastic because that kid's going to get the tar beat out of him with it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hi, how's this for funny? Whack, whack. Come here, I'm going to beat you with my joke machine. Can that joke machine take a punch? <laughs> Let me see your joke machine, unpopular kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute. You know, there's a selling point that everybody says is very silly. But this is a little Unpopular rectangular kid. box, and everybody goes nuts wrapping stuff for Christmas. Right. And this is the <laughs> ideal thing to wrap. It's a little rectangle, which is so simple. And anybody can wrap it's this not and simple do a for good me. job. I've seen that big Jackie smile See? coming out. Originally, He's I was trying to a not circular to. joke machine, but that was very hard to wrap. <laughs> hey, I just, there's a selling point here, you know? It's a rectangle, and who can't Everybody wrap it? Everybody laughs at me when I say this. <laughs> hey, Vinny, I just made a nerd eat his joke machine. <laughs> <laughs> you know that nerd? Yeah, he, I made him eat his joke machine. <laughs> you punch him in the belly, you can hear a joke. <laughs> <laughs> now you hey, go something. punch Poindexter in the belly. He's got a great one about your face. Uh, <laughs> I gotta get that thing. Hey, c hey, Gary, get me one of those for the for tomorrow show. Yeah, you don't have any of the joke machines. We yeah. had a hundred of them at one time, but uh, I'll bring one from home. Oh, there's we'll a lot laying around. Yeah. But kids with cerebral palsy. <laughs> hey, grab a package. Like, wow, you know, like everything okay. Excalibur does, the the boxes are beautiful. So the opening of it, when you see it, it's just a beautiful it's box. Already, but we what's inside? We can't. We're trying box. to do that. There's <laughs> nothing inside. No, There's just the box. Dan thinks he could sell air. <laughs> You're right. And he has in the past. I have in the past. Uh, but true. you also have uh, the Joke Master too. Now this actually has clean the jokes joke for those Master of you that maybe this has 1,100 jokes in right. 29 different categories. It also has a little backlight, yeah. so if you're in a restaurant right. or a bar, <laughs> you can sneak away, and uh, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and be able to Wait talk. a minute. This is actually it's just ridiculous. I think, that, you know, I, I think that so, sums it up. If I'd have had the Joke Master 2 when I was trying to date Terry Hatcher. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I might have been able to keep The Joke Master 2 has a light on it, so let's say you're in a bar. You or can, a restaurant. Or a restaurant. Oh, you can walk yeah. away and kind of just interact with it. Well, no, you get a joke, and then you come back to the table, and you tell uh -huh. it. He's going to prompt you through the dinner. Joke Master 2 for the really, really, really unpopular kid. <laughs> Be unpopular <laughs> your whole life. <laughs> well, you, yeah. leave, you leave the table, and you come back and interrupt and just go, knock, knock. <laughs> then you come back popular. <laughs> oh, wow. If you were an unpopular kid and you had Joke Master, now there's Joke Master 2, so you can continue being unpopular when you grow up. If you're an unpopular adult... <laughs> <laughs> wow. No Just friends? Sneak away from the table. <laughs> if you haven't had one friend in the 52 years of existence, you. This will help. You're clearly going to be approaching strangers with the Joke Master, too, because <laughs> you don't have any friends. Be cool. You can put this at like a buffet table. Put this around the you know, coffee table. Dad's and workshop. You can put it in the car. Dad's workshop. Now, why has he got it in Dad's workshop? <laughs> you can workshop. put it in the workshop. You can put it in the Oval Office. <laughs> Dad's workshop? Put it in the nuclear reactor. Dad's <laughs> workshop. <laughs> what is he talking about? 1958. You can bring Dad's it to the World workshop. Trade Center where thousands of people died. <laughs> what people died? Oh, now there's where they needed a joke machine. Oh, the survivors man. need a good knock on joke. The guy's digging through the rubble. Next to you. And while your friends Why are there? state workers look out the window in the morning? Because then they'd have nothing to do in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, you know how you know when it's really oh, cold? You see a dog frozen to a fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, and most of us, I know that as parents, you're probably thinking, wait. 
I think that the guy who's the host is reeling right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? How do you know what it's really he cold? He stopped yucking it up. How I bad really is it? don't know who to sell this to. <laughs> How do you guys... know when it's really cold when the dog is stuck in the fire? Yeah. How do you know when you're sick? When you throw up. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's looking around right now going, man, where's the dude with the Ginsu knives? <laughs> How do you know when you're bleeding? When you got a bullet hole, get it? <laughs> 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 Oh, man. I still don't. Are you saying this is to amuse yourself? I'm not saying anything. I don't. I'm trying to understand, you know, because it's in Dad's work uh, shop there. <laughs> so Dad can beat you with it. How do you know when it's hot out? When a dog is stuck to the fire. How do you know it's hot? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, when the dog becomes unglued from the fire. <laughs> the dog's not stuck to the fire. <laughs> when the no, you know what? Man, and and Jack is too. Bad. They've created jokes that are clean for the kids, that the kids are going to love, they're going to have a lot of fun with. That you know you can be you know you can be comfortable with having your kids. Yeah, the Christians will enjoy. You know it's so funny. They knock knock jokes and elephant jokes. It's so funny. Jokes and silly stuff. And so yeah. many people have told me they've given it to their kids, and the kids have sat there at the dinner table or at the breakfast table playing the jokes. And the next thing they know, they're laughing hysterically because they're the old fun stupid jokes. It's the right. ones we laugh at. It's my voice kids, speaking you know? up. So it's a little bit fun. It's yeah. a little bit. <laughs> okay. There's one other thing. There's one other thing. Uh, this says for ages five to ten, but I have found out uh -oh. that. Younger kids, three-year-olds, wow. four-year-olds, they're so voracious. Everyone give me money. <laughs> you have an unpopular three-year-old. I'm, I'm working one up for the fetus. <laughs> you put it on the mother's swollen belly. Yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you have a nerdy fetus. <laughs> unpopular fetus is love this product. Uh, don't wait till birth. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an unpopular fetus. <laughs> Doctors will not oh, abort God. these kids. <laughs> Just to learn, and they oh, yeah. want to learn the words. Right. They want to learn what everything means, and they also like my stupid gig giggle, so that little three-year-olds are playing these and they're asking people to explain the jokes, and they want to know why their six-year-old brother and seven-year-old <laughs> sister are laughing at these things. Right. Sure. So it goes even younger That's, and younger. I got one. Knock knock. Who's there? What does it look Open like? Open your is wallet. It rectangular. <laughs> it's perfectly rectangular, easy for wrapping. Knock knock. Who's there? Danny. Danny who? Anybody home? <laughs> right. Wait, I can't hear you. What? If you push the I, you can hear that joke again. I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, once was enough. I think after that, the three-year-old is still wondering why the six-year-old's laughing. I'm going to wait for a really good one to hit the I. Okay. What do you get from a nervous cow? A milkshake. <laughs> I love not, his, I love his I'm not hitting the I. No. Where does a cow really? artist put his paintings? In a museum. <laughs> hey, you know what? Sometimes I come back to the table when I'm on a hot date. <laughs> I use the go. museum line. Oh my! All right. The you kids know what? Really though, like that laugh. You got to give one of these to uh, to uh, Sal and uh, Richard Christie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let them make calls. Yeah. Only phone calls. Yeah. Where does the general keep his armies? In his sleeve. <laughs> in his what? I didn't hear it. See, that's what I'm saying. It's not clear. A lot of it isn't clear. You can hit the eye. Where does the general hit the eye again? I'm sure the general keep his army. Yeah, but this it is. is... <laughs> this is light years ahead army? of its time, though. In his three B's. Armies in his three B's. In his three Where does the general keep his army? In his three B's. Three B's in his. I don't know. I, I still don't hear it. Armies wow. in his. Oh, I know what it is. I just figured out the joke. Plebes. In his sleeveys. His armies in his uh, sleeves. Oh. I still don't get it. Obviously, your arms in your sleeves. Oh, oh, oh. Don't you get it? There what does the general keep his armies in his sleeves? <laughs> 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 what does the general keep his armies? In his sleeves. <laughs> in his sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody kicked him in the head while he was telling the joke. Where is it? Can you keep his eyes in his sleeves? <laughs> <laughs> What's a ventriloquism? <laughs> I'm sure there's nowhere on the internet get you it? could get these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get in touch with a fish? Well, you drop uh, him a line. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> you missed it, Fred? Yeah. What, I don't even How do you get in touch with a fish? You drop him a line. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Whoa. See, Boy, 
way. The three-year-old laughs because he sees the eight and the nine-year-old laugh. Explain <laughs> <laughs> to me how you get popular from this again, Jackie. Oh, you see what happens is because you play these <laughs> and you annoy everyone. <laughs> and they begin to like you and talk to you because they want you to stop playing this stupid machine. <laughs> How does my child become popular? Well, he brings it around the seven and the eight year old. Sure. There is. There's four separate gifts, John, for everybody. The calculator, the joke master two, the joke it's machine, a and the three legged dog walks into a bar and says, I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. <laughs> yeah. oh. So we didn't say all the jokes are really good jokes. Yeah. All right. And that's for the kids. Right. A three legged dog course. walks no, into a bar. That's the adult. I was thinking that, oh, I see. You, know, you always oh. get those party gifts that they say, right. you know, bring something under 20 bucks. Right. And you got them. You can, yeah. If you, if you open this head. up and you laugh twice, you're already ahead of the game. You're absolutely exactly. right. It's much better than a tie. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I've had some bad ties in the past. Although uh, we're going to be coming out with a tie that tells jokes. That's Oh, that would be that's cool. That's the next one. Now that seems <laughs> that there you go. On that. <laughs> All right. You had enough? That's a joke tie. And then there's going to be a joke tampon. Uh, yeah, boy, a three-year-old needs a tie. A hey, Rick. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey. Uh, not that we need reassuring that Jackie he was uh, a loser, but thank God for Artie because we couldn't take Jackie anymore. That was that was then. Uh, well, there's room for everybody. Uh, well, there's room thank for God everybody. for Artie. Uh, Artie's a hundred times better. There you go. Well, that's only some people's opinion, Artie. You know that's that. right. I, uh, I believe me, I know it. <laughs> you've, you've heard that. I mean, yeah, I've heard. I've heard both sides. <laughs> I, I uh, love you both, you know that. Well, but you. I love you very much. It's good to be in that uh, group. I love working with you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he might actually cry if you left. Yeah, I would be upset. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, oh, boy. Anything else in the news? Yeah, that 57-year-old woman who had the twins yesterday. I was talking about her. She was going in for a cesarean section. She's Curtis Lee with sister. The yeah, guy who uh, runs the really? Guardian Angels? I didn't know that. Yeah. Her oh, name wow. is uh, Alita St. James. And then I'm looking at the grandparents in the paper today, and they're Grandma Sliwa and Grandpa Sliwa. Her, the baby's grandmother is 80 years old. Yeah, the most selfish thing a woman can do or a man is uh, to have children, uh, especially a woman who doesn't have a husband. 57 years old. They have one woman with a toddler. She's 60 years old. Her husband just died of a heart She's attack. She's 67 now, and her husband died. She probably killed him with those kids, running around after those kids. Well, I don't know what did it, but, uh, you know, the thing is that it's selfish because who's going to raise these kids when you're, when you're old and, or gone? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I can help. Oh, the joke man. Yeah, they're going to be unpopular, those kids. That's that'll make that kid popular. When, when mama's falling asleep in a soap. Knock, knock. Who's there? Canoe. Canoe who? Can you come out and play with me? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm just going to have some Jim Beam. You go play with your joke master, too. <laughs> the woman turns 57 this Friday, I think. So do I. And she endured three years and $25,000 worth of in vitro fertilization to make this miracle come true. Jackie turns 57 and those jokes turn 408. <laughs> so what's Lewis will I walk into a bar? She will be giving a press conference today. Mom's got a forger Celebrex prescription. You go play with the joke master. <laughs> Cesario is just jealous. He wishes he had a joke machine. No, first of all, he probably is making a ton of scratch. I'm oh, I'm sure it's killing. Let's hope. Let's it's, hope. A, it's a funny little face on a joke machine. Uh, I believe it's made by Excalibur. That seems to be very important. And if you touch the eye. <laughs> and Jackie's found out on his own that three-year-olds like it, too. Right. They don't know why, but they like it. Originally, we started marketing this thing to five to eight-year-olds, but you know what we discovered? Unpopular three-year-olds like it. <laughs> the nerdy three-year-olds are laughing because the nerdy eight-year-old is laughing. Right. Uh, this bonds nerds. You know what we found out? The black likes this. The young black. The young black. But for some reason, the two-year-old hates it. We, we can't figure that out. We started out marketing this to white kids. <laughs> the, the laboratory. Then we found out the young blacks liked it. <laughs> Particularly the dark-skinned blacks with big the, lips the and nerdy, thick nose. The nerdy blacks. Yes. I nerdy blacks knock, that look knock like... In Spanish. With in the head. <laughs> the nerdy blacks saw the laughing. <laughs> you know, like these blacks who can't rap. They seem to like this. Why didn't the rooster cross the road? It was two chickens. <laughs> pummel, pummel, smash into your locker. <laughs> Head in your food plate. <laughs> hey, wiener dog's got a joke machine. <laughs> smash, creeper, pound. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Yasser Arafat Chick. went from dead to back to life to fading fast yesterday, all in one day. They finally <laughs> met... <laughs> Yeah, it was confusing for Jews. They didn't know whether to celebrate, then they stopped the celebration, and they had, they, and then they had a big celebration. <laughs> uh. They finally let some of the PLO people come in and yeah. see him, and immediately one of them said, he's dead, but he's still... <laughs> Even the PLO wants him out. He's Get him a joke machine. Support. A joke master, too. What did the overweight Arab say? <laughs> yes, sir, I am fat. <laughs> hey, there you go. I got, I got my first joke from my... There you go. Right that down. <laughs> it's machine ready. Is that I right? guess the air fat know what was cool. But I don't know if your jokes would help machine unpopular ready. three-year-olds meet other children. <laughs> My joke was a little political. Yeah. It's a little over. I don't know little. if the kids get into that, are you? Yes, yes sir, sir, I am fat. <laughs> 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 Let me hear you do it. I can get you a deal. <laughs> Right. Yes, Robin? Yes, so anyway, they're still arguing. Uh, the um, Palestinian... <laughs> Palestinians and Muslims do not believe in euthanasia, Howard, so they're going to leave him on the machine. There'll be no unplugging. They don't like the young kids in Asia? Punch, slap, 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 cut uh, your hair wrong. Give me your lunch your money. They right, say he, la he lapsed into a deeper coma because he had bleeding in his brain, and oh. uh, these are probably the final days. A cleric was called to the bedside. Well. Got to take a short break. We'll come back. We'll wrap everything up. Jeff Cesario this Thursday through Sunday at Hilarity, Hilarity's 4th Street Theater in Cleveland, Ohio. For tickets, call 216-241-7425 and check out Jeff at sportalicious.com. You hit the I, it repeats. So if a kid hears a joke and he really loves it, he runs up and says, Mommy, Mommy, listen to this one. He hits the I and replays it. Right. <laughs> See, the, the, the kids are going to love this. They so. love it. A black guy walks into a bank in Mississippi. He goes up to the manager. He says, I'm looking for a job. The manager says, there's a position opening up tomorrow. The black guy says, you're joking. He says, well, yeah, but you started it. <laughs> for a kid that's not that popular, it's fantastic because all of a sudden he's part of the gang. <laughs> for a racist kid. Oh, dear. That's good, right? What is that? Part of the Aryan gang. There you go. <laughs> Jeff Cesario joining us. Well, we got to wrap up the news. So, I know, I know. Scott know. Peterson, they've uh, thrown out one juror, bringing in another one. Now they have to start the deliberations. <laughs> some all of these jurors. Some of these jurors are such nundicks. This one juror, you know, they tell you when you sit on a jury, don't like read any newspapers, don't look outside for, you know, just listen to the evidence yeah. and make your decision. You got to base it on what was presented. <laughs> At trial. So some woman went on the internet to do her own investigation of the trial. Smart. So they threw her off the jury and, you know, they, she listed uh, the internet browsing as her hobby and uh, she had to act on it. She was going to do her own investigation like, like she's a detective. Right. She's got all the info. Wow. So they had to throw her off the jury. So now they've brought in one of the alternates and they have to start from scratch again. Mm -hmm. So that'll be going on. So they got somebody get somebody who doesn't even know computers now. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, that's me. Oh, hey, I'll oh, do it. Don't even have a TV. I'm popular. I didn't even know boats float. President Bush went to visit some of the wounded, uh, some of the casualties from uh, this the war election. in Iraq. Oh, well, no. all of us are. He's not visiting any of us casualties from the election. But he is visiting casualties from the war, something he wouldn't talk about during uh, his campaign. Here he spoke to reporters at uh, Walter Reed Army Hospital, C2. We've got troops in harm's way in the Fallujah area right now, and our prayers are with the soldiers and their loved ones as they're doing the hard work necessary. We lost a herd of elephants. Big <laughs> bull peep. <laughs> Played him a joke machine. Yeah, maybe he should take the joke machine when he goes. That'll cheer up the troops. Anything else, Robin? Uh, the uh, people at the, um, I guess they, somebody did a study, and they discovered that the airline water, you know, the water you get on the oh, airplane yeah. is dirty. Oh, yeah, no kid. <laughs> They've been saying for years, always drink bottled water on the airplane because you don't know where that water comes it from. It comes from your pee. Going. Yeah, so. just because when you take a leak in a plane, it just it just splashes all over the place. 
Hello? Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what, I, that's what happens to me. <laughs> and how does that get in the water supply? Well, because I go in the sink. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I'm a wacky. I get drunk. I like to goof around. <laughs> that's Bernie's idea of a joke. Yeah. Put that in a box. Bill Clinton is out talking about why the de Democrats lost the election. President uh, Bush, he says, used the Massachusetts Supreme Court's ruling on gay marriage to turn public attention away from other more important issues. D4. With one decision of one Supreme Court, we all of a sudden had a Constitution amendment designed, I think, more to whip people up, inflame them, scare them, make them feel threatened, and make them stop thinking about other issues. So I guess Monica he's Lewinsky saying was a dry hole. that the Republicans were playing <laughs> sleight of hand. He also says Democrats must talk to American people about moral conviction, D5. I do not believe that the Democrats can seek to be a truly national party. They may win some more national elections, but we cannot be nationally competitive unless we feel comfortable talking about our convictions. He also said that Monica Lewinsky was a dry hole. I Monica really think Lewinsky it's funny. Was that, a dry oh. hole. He said oh. it with conviction. <laughs> yeah. Monica Lewinsky was a dry hole. That it's funny that he's saying uh, Democrats must address moral issues. Yeah. He's the reason they're in question. <laughs> Although that dude could campaign. And we love Monica he Lewinsky. Lost this he was the best. He, he would have won this. He election. was, but the reason the Democrats are fighting the morality issue is because they kept him around. What did you say, Mr. President? And we love Monica Lewinsky's box. All right. Hmm. Really. <laughs> Wow. Hillary loved Monica Lewinsky. Finger. Oh. <laughs> and uh, that's the President Clinton joke machine. <laughs> right in there. the paper today, they are giving some reviews to Tom Hanks's new movie. Uh oh, what is it? Polar say? Express, and he's uh, getting lauded for his five Excellent. voice performance. Wow. He plays five different characters in the movie. Here's one of his characters. What would you call a chicken who thinks he's Superman? Cluck Kent. <laughs> <laughs> And they're giving it three and a half stars. It's um, an unusual looking movie. It uh, uses that uh, performance capture technique. So Five different voices, huh? Yeah. I could do five different voices in a movie if anyone wants to hire me. Hi, this is one of my voices. Here's another one. Hey, everybody, what's happening? <laughs> Hi, Daddy. There's another one. All right. Then I could use my regular voice. Yeah. I'm going to talk right through. <laughs> Fine, that's it. There Four you go. Yeah. My whole wang hurt. Yeah. And that's what's happening. <laughs> thank you, Robin Quivers. I want to thank my friend Jeff Cesario, funny guy. Go see him this Thursday through Sunday at Hilarities. <laughs> Hilarities. You can find it. Fourth Street Theater in Cleveland, Ohio. A great room. Thanks for to, having me. According to Jeff and Artie. For tickets, call 216-241-7425 and see Jeff at sportalicious.com. Dick Clark, good luck to you. American Music Awards Sunday night at 8 o'clock on ABC. Tonight on E, the amputee beauty pageant, the one you've been waiting for. Tune in to see five sexy amputees. Yes. Some missing legs, some missing arms. Yes. All of them ready to compete for $10,000 and prizes. You know the qualifications. You must be beautiful. You must have a severe amputation, and you must have a great personality. Yes. Who will be <laughs> Miss Amputee tonight on E? Get out of here. New York's new music alternative, 92.3 K-Rock. K-Rock's hooking you up for a five-day trip to the Bay Area over Thanksgiving to catch Queen Day. Minutes, do a bong it. Party, man, you're funny. Come on, brother. All right, I'll do one. It's like Rodney not saying no respect. We want to hear it. All right, I'll do one. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. I figure you guys get sick of it. Yeah. No. I know, I know I don't get sick of it. We never get sick of you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Howard. Try to catch one. All right, let's see. Uh, what do we got today? This is the first one of the day for me. All right. Nice. What time is it, anyway? It's uh, 2 past 7 o'clock in New York. <laughs> The Just first day of the rest of your life. The perfect time for a bong hit. <laughs> oh, just a little one to start off, you know? That was little? I could do little. <laughs> Good stuff. This, dude, hey now. this dude's always got the pipe handy. Yeah, it's always <laughs> pipe, too. <laughs> oh, man. So that girl's really going to be in Playboy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, oh, he's going to be high now. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Eyes are tearing. I mean, that's, a good, that's a good high right there. Oh, so oh my kitten's going to be high, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, bro. Later. Hey, Wayne. Wayne Siegel, everyone. Oh, the great Wayne Siegel. Hello, all. Good morning. Great. I heard you talking about you know, people voicing their opinion about the cost of having to go to satellite. It's not that expensive. When they buy the car. Well, wait, 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 wait a second. Why don't you come on Letterman and explain yeah, this yeah, with me? Yeah. I'll do it with you. Do you mind coming out on Letterman? Nope, not at all. It's very inexpensive. In fact, you could sit at Letterman's desk. You could be Letterman. You be Letterman and I'll be Howard. There you go. I'm there. Because I'll explain it. It's it's pennies. It's really, really inexpensive. Well, hmm. I don't want to get into it here because everyone will have a conniption. So, and rightly so. Tell me. You don't mind coming on Letterman? You're not going to choke? Because you get nervous. Nah. I'll take lithium before I go on. <laughs> lithium. <laughs> that does. That gets you, that gets you emotionless. Lithium. Isn't that for mental patients? Yes. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing with lithium? I was on it for a while. It makes you emotionless, and you, you really like cake. Well, I figured I'd grab some from Artie. Yeah. <laughs> because I'd like to hear your rep. Okay. Hey, wh why don't you write an article for HowardStern.com so people can go there, there and read go. it? Okay, you want me to send it to Vinny? No, not Vinny. Send it to Doug. Send it to Doug Goodstein? No, no, see, you know what? No, this other guy, Doug. Yeah. Send, send it to... Send it to Baba Buhai. Okay. I'll put it together this morning. I'll send it over to him. Because I, I want you to Baba explain Boo, that. Because you've explained it to me and it makes sense. Okay. All right. I'll put it together now. I'll send it over to Gary, so you'll have it for today. Yeah, let me read that, and then maybe I'll bring you out on Letterman to okay. explain stuff. Absolutely. All right, Wayne. All right, pal. I'll talk to you later. Bye. That'd be good. I'll say, Dave, uh, now here's Wayne Siegel to explain yes. some things. I have a guest. I have a guest. You, you wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told I told Letterman, uh, Rob Burnett, uh -huh. I go, I'm coming on there to promote satellite radio, but in a very profound way. I'm, I don't want to sit there and entertain Dave. I'm, right. I'm there to get out information to my audience. And they were like, okay. So I'll, I'll bring out my guest, Wayne Siegel. <laughs> Dave, now I have a guest. Here he is, Wayne Siegel, to explain why it's inexpensive. <laughs> I just know Wayne will choke. I, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a big, you know, deer caught in the headlights, mouth not moving. Yeah, humana, humana, humana. <laughs> Be like Ralph, Ralph Krim. <laughs> Hook right. nose Mike, you're on the air. What is that? Hook nose. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Listen, uh, I, I wanted to know, did you speak to Dave about, you know, is he going to give you carte blanche to let you speak about whatever you want to talk about, or is he going to want to actually take over his own show and interview you? Yeah, isn't that annoying? He wants to actually interview me. The nerve of him. Yeah. No, I, I, I've kind of said to them, I told them what I want to do, and they said, okay, which is basically go and have a chat with my audience, although it's going to be those yahoos in his audience. I wish we could dump that audience out and bring in my audience. Well, I'm sure there'll be some of uh, our people there. Yeah. Well, why don't you get your hands on some tickets and give them out, dude? They, they don't have tickets. You know, they're all they're Letterman. It's so important that show. How do they give out those tickets? Do you have to send for them in advance? Yeah. yeah. You have to write in, and it's, I heard it's like a two-year waiting list. Or something. Wow. Yeah. You never know who's in the. That's ponderous, man. It's so well, ponderous. Are you ain't kidding? I uh, I hope you get everything out that you that you want to talk about because uh, your hands are tied where you're at now. Would you ever sit and make, like, plans to get tickets for the Letterman show? No. I wouldn't. And then how disappointing when he has a bad night, like, you know, like a B-list guest. How disappointing anyway, where they load you in, you have to wait around, and then, you know, you're waiting between commercials. There's nothing going on. At least it's Letterman. At least it's Letterman. Ima imagine if, like, you, you're waiting online for the Tony Danza show or something, <laughs> you know. I love those Two people years. who show up at Regis. You know, I mean, what are they doing? <laughs> Howard, I, I knew the person that used to do tickets for uh, Letterman at NBC, and you have no idea. Like, somebody from Iowa will send in, you know, to get tickets, right? Yeah. Then they'll be notified. Then once they're notified, they will build their whole New York trip around, around coming there. to see Letterman. Wow. And a lot I, of people do it. I suppose mm -hmm. those are the same people who show up at the Today Show and stand around. Well, yeah. that's what they, if you figure while they're in New York yeah. for Letterman, let's go over to the Today Show. And so they can get on TV or whatever. Because a lot of them stop by here, too, while they're in town for that whole thing. They're like, hey, we got tickets for Letterman. We were in New York. We thought we'd come and see Howard. Mm -hmm. It's a strange thing. 
All right. Got to for a day off two years in advance. Listen, I need off November 6, 2007. Yeah. Yeah. Two-year waiting list. <laughs> All right, Mike. Talk to you later. Take it easy. Bye. Hook knows Mike. <laughs> All right, I got to take a break. We haven't taken one in a while. A long while. There's a lot of stuff to talk to, talk about, you know, but I got off to a flying start this morning. <laughs> I'm all worked up. I'm doing better now, though. I'm like, Yeah, you I'm, seem to have calmed yourself. Yeah, I really don't want to talk badly about somebody on the air, but I, I just hate getting screwed, you know? I really didn't want to go there. Mm. And I got plenty to say about it, too, because I've been biting my tongue. All right, I'm going to take a break. We'll come back and regroup. Right after this. Hey, this is The Rock, and you're listening to a man who doesn't like to drink a lot because it interferes with his whining, Howard Stern. You're listening to The Howard Stern Show. Hey, now. Uh, uh, tonight on E! Part two of the amputee beauty pageant. Tune in to see five sexy amputees compete for $10,000 in prizes and check out our winner, Jennifer, who caught the eye of photo editors over at Playboy.com. So... It's part two of the amputee beauty pageant tonight on E. It's really like nothing you've ever seen. I understand the ratings are through the roof for the amputee beauty pageant on E. Also on HowardStern.com, we learned that Artie might possibly have a daughter. <laughs> yes. Somewhere in the email we were contacted, and now there are exclusive pictures of who we think is Artie's daughter up on HowardStern.com. Uh, is there a family resemblance? Oh, Howard Stern. She looks a little bit like him. Yeah, I saw it. It's on the front page. Did you see it? Uh, she looks like you. I did. It's, she's, she's I really believe it's her. I believe Artie has a daughter. <laughs> Great bone structure. Yeah. Artie, it's time for you to be a dad. You didn't see the picture? No, I oh. haven't seen it. Front page, HowardStern.com. It's good stuff. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. hot, though. Looks like a chip off the old block. <laughs> and she's doing that thing where she snorts a cigarette up her nose. Right, like just like Dad. Yeah, she's it's got, like Dad. She's got a nice can. <laughs> yeah, she's got That's a hot little body. That's not the thing you should say about your daughter. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> got a nice belly, yeah. firm. <laughs> like, she gets that from her mom. <laughs> 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 yeah, Matt, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Hey, now. Hey, that, that I'm as fake Howard. Fake cowboy song was hilarious. That's a good one. Yeah, we haven't played that again. We should play that. And right. Artie. Yeah. Bruce Rules. Thank you, buddy. Bruce Rules. I can't clear my throat. What the obsession is with uh, me and this ranch is, is beyond me. My suggestion to him is to shut up. It's just, it's, it's, it's insane. I'm Imus the geezer. I wear a stupid cowboy hat. I'm 100 years old, and I look like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> I have three teeth left, and I dribble when I pee. <laughs> so why did Deodor marry a codger like me? I'm a fake cowboy. In a wheelchair, I ride. I'm a... I'm a... Am I... Dead or alive. I've got one kid named Wyatt, and the other is Gabby Hayes. Half of my scrotum has wasted away. <laughs> I spit in my microphone. I'm wrinkled and old. I need a diaper change. I hope Deodor comes home. I'm a big cowboy. In a wheelchair I ride. I must, I must. Am I dead or alive? I'm a big cowboy. In a wheelchair I ride. I must, I must. Am I dead or alive? I'm, I must. Nice song. <laughs> I miss wanted. Is he dead or alive? And he's a fake cowboy. Yeah. So true. Dare dar. Dare dar. I can't clear my throat. I can't clear my throat. Oh, Charles. Oh, oh, oh. Kelly Clark. I can't clear my. I can't clear my throat. What's in that throat that you can't clear out of there? 
Disturbing headline. Finding those clips. <laughs> I hope they don't live on Richard Christie's hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a great. Uh, this is just a great headline. You know Brad Pitt, right? The actor. Yes, of course. Listen to this headline: Pitt studies AIDS in Ethiopia. I saw that yesterday, and I thought, well, what? That's all. Come on. <laughs> Hollywood hunk Brad Pitt has traveled to Ethiopia to learn more about AIDS. He's studying it. As part of a fundraising campaign to combat the disease in Africa. He doesn't know about AIDS? And the four-day trip, which began on Friday, ended late on Monday night. No, I think he's working on a cure because he's Brad Pitt. <laughs> the Onion should just run that headline as is, not right. change the thing. Right. No need to funny it up. He's Pitt everywhere studies study, AIDS. Pitt studies AIDS. <laughs> because I saw him in a lab yeah. standing over a woman who was, you know, doing something with stem cell research. So he's studying a lot of medical stuff lately. Yeah. He's like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Sounds like a married guy who wants to get out of the house. It's like uh, next Stephen Hawking is going to join the cast of the OC. <laughs> yeah, he's acting. Yeah. Brad is studying. I'm just afraid he's going to neglect his leukemia research. Yeah, how many things can he do at once? Yashur Arafat is dead. He was the leader of the PLO. He yeah, were, finally he, dead for sure. He's the guy who looked like Ringo Starr with a tablecloth on his head. <laughs> can you believe he was only 75? I like, know, he seemed a lot older. Yeah. Yeah. But I still, you know, they're denying now that he was poisoned, but I still would wonder what killed him. Debbie Shushel knows. Hey, Shushel? hey, Howard. Hey, Robin. I think he died of AIDS. You know, he's long been rumored to be gay, and a lot of people don't even think that daughter that he supposedly had with Suha is even his. And if it is, people think he had it with uh, artificial insemination because... Like I said, he's long been rumored to be gay, and um, if you look at what they think he might have died from, liver cancer, um, those kinds of things, liver cancer, Kaposi, sarcoma, things like that, are symptoms of AIDS. Huh. Interesting hmm. theory. I yeah. hadn't heard that. You and, just, are you, you know, just winging that and saying it because you, you hate him, or are you really thinking that, that there could be some fact to that? Well, there's been talk about that for years. For years that he was dying of AIDS and um, because you know he's been sick for a very long time well he had um, wasted away <laughs> yeah. right well people who die of AIDS waste away I mean if you look at the pictures I mean he looks like he could have died of AIDS it was a long rumor that he was gay Howard and um, you know there's a lot of repression out there in that kind of culture and um, his wife was not even an acceptable person from his perspective. She was not a Muslim, um, and she didn't even live there. I mean, think about it. She was his wife. Why didn't she? She never visited him in that uh, compound in Ramallah, not even once. Yeah, they so there were not even been there visiting. in four yeah. years. Hmm. Yeah, and, and the other thing, Howard, that I think everyone needs to be reminded of, you know, we're seeing all these stories that seem to remember him as some kind of hero, this was a guy who didn't just um, order terror and killing of Jews. Um, in the early 70s, we had two um, diplomats in the Sudan. The ambassador, whose name was Cleo Noel, he was white. And George Curtis Moore, who was our charge d'affaires, he was black. He was the highest-ranking member of the U.S. Foreign Service at the time. You know, in those days, there was no Colin Powell um, Sr., and the Yasser Arafat on surveillance tapes that we have, that we intercepted, ordered their torturous death. And they were tortured so badly when they found their bodies, they couldn't figure out which was the black guy and which was the white guy. Well, let me tell you something. Now, terrorism as we know it today could have been nipped in the bud when Yasser Arafat orchestrated the death of Israeli Olympiads 
way back during Ronald Reagan's administration, we let him off the hook. He was the you mean, mastermind. You mean during Nixon's administration? Nixon's yeah, Nixon, administration, yeah. right. And he was the mastermind behind that. He was the one who figured out he'll go kill a bunch of innocents at the Olympics. And what, right should have been, and what should have been done right at that point, if I had been president, of course, no one wanted me as president back then. I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had been president that day, I would have sent the military over, marched into wherever godforsaken hole in the ground he lived, and eliminated him. Well, yeah, he was lucky to have lived to 75. What we ended up doing was giving him a free pass, letting him get away with it. Giving him respectability. Well, and he then was not only giving him, giving him the Nobel Howard. Peace Prize, which is a joke. Yeah. And well, not, Howard, if you look at what, every step of the way, everything he did ended up in a reward. When he right. murdered those hostages at the Olympics, those Olympians, four months later, four months to the date, the PLO was awarded a U.N. mission, a permanent observer status at the U.N. If you have, like, a, dog, if you have a dog that misbehaves, let's say it moves its bowels all over your kitchen floor, you don't reward the dog for that. And uh, when you have a child that is spoiled and rotten and acts out, and if you don't set limits, if you don't reprimand them, they will walk all over you the rest of your life. Well, you know, and I mean, Arafat, like a dog or a spoiled child, got away with everything. And we wonder why we have never got a peace accord out of him. That's right. He... Can, you, can you imagine giving bin Laden permanent al-Qaeda, permanent observer status at the U.N., giving them offices and tons of money. No, not after, um, not after he, he blew up. If he keeps living, he will. Not after he blew up the World Trade Center and not after right. Arafat killed, uh, killed Olympiads. Right. That's I mean, right. that's the equivalent. It, it's really sickening. And by the way, you mentioned Brad Pitt. You know why Brad Pitt is, in this, is uh, studying AIDS in Africa? Because Bono sent him there. Right. Bono has this organization. He gets tons of money from Bill Gates and other rich people to campaign for us to give refunds to countries like the Sudan that harbored bin Laden and sponsored terror, and we U.S. taxpayers gave them loans, and Bono wants us to... All right, all right, all right. Listen, listen to me. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Listen to me. You did good with the Arafat stuff. You hit a home run out of the park. Well, we shh. Everyone calm down. Um, you know, a bite at a time. Another thing, Howard Bono studying age with Brad Pitt and Arafat with HIV pads. Well, Howard, I have a, I have a new uh, website <laughs> name. HIV pads. I have it, Howard. I have a new website name to make it easier for get to, to for people to get to my website. <laughs> and another thing, and, Howard, about my website. Yes, sir, Howard, that was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> she had that cam. <laughs> no, it's she it's had that cam. Brad Pitt studying it. That's your that was gonna be Howard, my new thing, website Howard. name. There's no, Debbie, Debbie, there's, no Debbie, Debbie, there's no way Debbie's ever going to get laid with that whole attitude. Well, before you take off my bra, just let me say the Bono's taking Brad Pitt over to study age and he's lifting with me. You know what's funny? Uh, go ahead, give you a website, Debbie, then I'm going to do a uh, rap about chicks and talk Black too much. Okay. Debbie does politics dot com. Debbie does politics dot cam. Dot cam. <laughs> but before we make out, just let me make thing, one thing straight about the U.N., <laughs> yeah. Debbie, Debbie, we've been going. At, you know what, Debbie? Some guy's gonna, oh, some guy's oh, gonna oh, one oh, day oh, kill oh, himself oh, because he's gonna go. Debbie, we've been going out for six months, and Debbie's gonna learn that. Like, yeah. she's got to quiet down if she's ever gonna get a man. Right. So you go, Debbie. You know, I've. I just want to tell you, the hottest chick I ever met. And, right. And you're the. You Ooh. know, making out with you and making love to you is so beautiful. Uh -huh. And like, like, and the guy will just slip up and mention, like, you know, and uh, and by the way, I'm proud of you. And and uh, hey, is, did you see in the paper Yasser Arafat died? And did I see it? As a matter of fact, before we go any further with the making love, Yasser Arafat with HIV positive. And there's proof Shut Yasser Arafat might have been gay. Shut he up. died of AIDS. He was very frail. And another thing about Shut Bono, up. before you Shut make out, before you start Shut kissing up. my neck, just let me make one thing straight about the UN and the people that give a free. <laughs> well, Howard, may I make a suggestion? Yes. Okay, well, my suggestion is why don't you give me an outlet for that? I'd love to be considered for a show on one of your three serious radio networks. Well, I'll put that in the uh, hopper along with the 10 million other ideas that everybody's given me. Actually, yeah, but mine's a good idea. Actually, no, there is a channel he's programming called Insanely Dull. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be on that one, Artie? Uh, I'm going to be on Insanely Dull. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the insanely dull show. It'll be called the Debbie Ba 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 Show. <laughs> Hello, listeners. Hello, listeners. If you're going to start your busy day, welcome to the Debbie Ba 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 Show. The first subject is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the second subject is blah, 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 blah. And the third subject is a big, whopping blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Debbie, do you ever feel like, like you talk all day and it really doesn't matter? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she had a no, gay bottle of <laughs> <laughs> she had Sheik in Florida runs things Sponsor chair is Sue Dan blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing a thong But before we get to the sex Let me talk about Sue Dan Sponsoring chair is Israelis blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Gaza Strip Alright <laughs> Alright Debbie we love you Debbie, Debbie Love does. You. Debbie does. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Debbie does blah blah blah. Da Kim. Da Kim. Debbie does politics. Da. Debbie does politics. Yes, Debbie da does Kim. politics. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on a date with Debbie, you just hear. You know, it'd be cool though. Yeah. You know, it'd be a cool show for Debbie though. Like, like the callers call in, and the only thing they're allowed to do is go, "Okay, Debbie, connect Star Trek to the Jihad." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the woman who played seven by nine had ties to the guy in Florida who was a sheik who had ties to the Sudan. You know who had ties to Yasser Arafat, who's HIV positive. You know what? Blah, blah, blah. I now a commercial. That. What? I probably could connect that because, you know, the chief, uh -oh. chief officers Two of the Church officers. Enterprise were Jewish. Yeah. Nimoy and, um, and uh, Shatner. Right. So they probably were, you know, they, hey, they want to kill all Jews and all Americans and all Westerners. Six degrees of they terrorism. They want to kill them, too. <laughs> See? <laughs> I told you she could do it. Six degrees of dullness. All right, Debbie, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. The show that'll put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're getting sex, mister? You better think again because I've got a couple of points to make about Britney. <laughs> what about the incredibly dull channel? <laughs> so I bet you Nobody insanely... Nobody thought of that. The insanely dull channel. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Are on there. <laughs> You're listening to the insanely dull channel, <laughs> where all bad radio lives. Uh, Coming up after Debbie Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, but like, why not? Pat Robertson since has every format. Why not have bad radio people? They need a home. God Absolutely. knows they have enough bad radio guys around the country. I think you should have homes already. Insanely yeah. dull channel and definitely the retard channel. <laughs> all the retard <laughs> insanely <people>. dull. <laughs> And, you know, so you tune in for 10 minutes and see what's going on. People like Debbie could have work. And then you tune in and you go, you know what? This is really dull. I'm going to change over to a different channel. <laughs> She's still dull. Yeah. <laughs> I just checked back. <laughs> okay, we got a dull time check. You could put Imus and Debbie Schlussel. Imus will be the morning guy. Schlussel will be the afternoon guy. <laughs> Imus will be the afternoon guy. I'm going to tell you, uh, we're over at uh, Deer Deer and I were over at the ranch. Then, uh, you, know, you know, Deer Deer and I, when, when I was out at the ranch this summer, and then we were... We're at uh, Imus. And then... And then <laughs> Fred came over, and, and, you know, he was doing all kinds of stuff, and he was messing around in the kitchen and stuff like that. <laughs> Get that big one chair. <laughs> You're listening to the Insanely Dull Channel. Why uh, coming is that up next there? is De De Debbie, Debbie, uh, Debbie Schlussel. Thank you, Amish. Now it's time for the Insanely Dull Drive Time. Hello there, Miss Schlussel. Schlussel. Hello. Do, do the jihad, Miss Schlussel. <laughs> Jihad! Miss so, so tell, tell me, was there really any kind of connection between uh, Yasser Arafat and, and uh, Bill Shatner? And Glad you asked that, Imus. Just when you thought it couldn't get more dull, I'll explain the connection between Arafat and Imus. All right, now, let's move ahead. Explain the connection between uh, 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 <laughs> Daniel Carver and Yasser Arafat. We have stumped the buoy with Cindy. She will get naked if she loses. Good. We've got that coming up next. There's a dude who plays for the Indiana Pacers. Uh, his his name is Ron Artest. Formerly of St. John's, I believe. Yes. So uh, he said Wednesday he asked his coach, Rick Carlisle, for time off because he has a busy schedule that included promoting a soon-to-be-released rap album. Oh, he needed time off from basketball? Yeah, he went to the coach and said, I need some time off. So the coach benched him. Good. <laughs> Gave him a two-game benching. And... Uh, he was confused, so he held a press conference, this guy, Ron Artist. Artest. 
Our test. Our test. Uh, our test said he asked Carlisle for as much as a month off to heal his aching body and recover from a particularly busy schedule. Um, he's glad about the benching, he said, because he needs some time off. Yes, Baba? They suspended him for behavior detrimental to the integrity of the team. Yeah, because if everyone decides they need to take a few days yeah, off. their own petty little projects. Yeah. So this is kind of funny. There's a tape. Let me see if I can find it. I already lost it. <laughs> so many. I lost it. Oh, there it is. This is a tape of Ron's press conference. Oh, okay. And uh, I guess the coach had said, you know, this guy doesn't have any integrity. And Ron doesn't know what integrity means, so he has to go ask people. Oh. It's pretty funny. Ron doesn't know what integrity means. <laughs> I still got my album coming out November 23rd, and uh, after the album comes out, I'm gonna, uh, um, you know, make sure all my time is focused, you know, on winning the championship. Coach said that you compromised the integrity of the team. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you, you gotta get a vocabulary on that. I've been mean, I meaning to ask everybody. My father, I ain't get a chance to ask, but I ain't looking in the dictionary yet. But what does integrity mean? <laughs> How do you coach when you can't even communicate? That's officially the greatest clip of all With time. The teammates. You don't have any integrity. Well, thank you, coach. <laughs> You're compromising the integrity of the team. Oh. Mm, I wonder what that means. That's great. After his album comes out, he's going to focus on winning a championship. How did he write an hey, album? Hey, wait a second. The star of the Insanely Dull Channel is here. <laughs> <laughs> you you mean, no, no not you, I miss this one. Oh, Tom, no, no, this guy's got a long By history way, of being I in trouble say, in the NBA. Like Joel Hollander is where He's broken right. cameras, he's been suspended <laughs> numerous, yeah. numerous times. He's wild. Yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, I he's, thinking, maybe. he's also a great player. He's also, I think he was the defensive player of the year last year in the Here's NBA. Here's my sidekick, Tom Chiasada. Really is some like you either. Tom, tell us more about his St. John years. <laughs> Drugs? He left school early, I think. I what think was he so. matriculating in? Uh, <laughs> I think he left school early every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, there was another thing he did that was pretty funny. Oh, he broke camera. He broke a, he got fined like $10,000 for breaking an expensive monitor in the hall. Yeah, here it is. How it did is. he pay the fine? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's I Miss and Tom. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm trying to help out here. The guy, I it's know the latest the in a long Did line he of pay by check, or was it a money order? <laughs> <laughs> it's the latest in a long line of controversial situations for our test. Yeah. Ranging from destroying television monitors at Madison Square Garden two years ago to missing the team flight to Game Six of the Eastern Conference Finals at Detroit last season. Could you imagine yeah. missing that flight? Yeah, game, really? six. game Six. At a conference final. It was a deciding game too. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah, so he. Uh, anyway. Tom, Let's tell go. us more about fly fishing. <laughs> yeah, how, how are those big skies up on Montana? Are they, are they, they really are, big? They are beautiful. <laughs> big skies. They are beautiful. Not as... <laughs> oh, man. And do those big boots really protect you when you're in the water? <laughs> Star Jones never shuts up. It's just, this is her big week because she's marrying that guy who everyone thinks is a homo. Yeah, even in the paper today, there's a picture of them getting their license. Like, everything is documented about them. They picked up their license yesterday. Yeah. It's in the paper. I don't know if the guy's gay or not. I know they haven't denied that he's been with men, but that doesn't mean he has. We'd like to think he's gay, but we certainly don't know. I know Roseanne is on some sort of hell-bent mission to keep goofing on the guy. And so is uh, Rosie. Everybody's goofing. I mean, if the guy's gay and she wants to marry him, I guess that's cool. That's but her right. Her right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so she's gearing up for that big wedding that she doesn't shut up about. And then she came on The View and said that yeah, her week was ruined. By? By the news. By the newspaper. And um, But she just doesn't shut up. Listen to this. I got to hear this. They ruined it. Oh, they they ruined, ruined, ruined what? Remember I said to you that that one they only wanted joy and happiness around me? Yes. Because I'm getting married on getting Saturday. Married. Oh, how does anybody watch this? I can't believe it. I really can't believe people watch it. I got to tell you, man, that maybe the four most annoying women on the planet. Shut up. Not everything you have to say is that interesting. for today with this story right here. Yeah, I can Cradle that. robber. They ruined my whole happiness. Now I gotta come on TV and be mad again. Let me explain something to you. This is a woman who is alleged to have had a sex 
relationship with an eight-year-old child. Yep. And the people in the newspaper refer to it as a, quote, bizarre mm -hmm. affair. That's not an affair. No. Honey, your marriage is a bizarre you affair. Mean, you have sex with an eight-year-old and you are a grown person, then you are a criminal. You right. are a rapist. That's what it is. Yay. Maybe Yay. that's what she, she re je resents the bizarre affair being labeled, you know, being put on that relationship. Her is the bizarre yeah, affair. Exactly. You know what? That's, uh, that's a strange woman, man. Yep. I like that she's stating the obvious and all worked up about it. Like, like she's discovered a great comedy. The bit. newspaper ruined her week by doing that. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that that person's a criminal. Yeah. Thanks we for didn't get it. We didn't, you know. Let me explain something to you, honey. You are a criminal. When you Excuse have me? sex with a child, you's a criminal. Me? Well, oh, gee, I couldn't figure that out on my own. That's why I need the view. They never use that word. They never do. No, they say, you can say alleged rapist. She's charged you, with sexual assault. You are, a, yes. then you are an alleged... Now she's yelling over everyone. They're no. trying desperately to calm her down. No one's got the guts to they say what be, it is. They might be afraid to be there. It's sexual assaulter. You are not having an a fake. In front you of you, are in front of you. Right, we get it. Definite pervert. A definite for sure. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Now the other ones have to get worked up. Oh my God, she yells and talks too much. Shut up. Eat something. And by writing that story, they ruined her week. Yeah. Sorry. What about Forget the, the kid? Yeah, what about the eight-year-old? Forget, <laughs> at, you know, the daughter. <laughs> they ruined Star's Shut week. Up. Actually, the eight-year-old. I'm just glad she points out to us that, you know, that having sex with a minor is illegal. Right, thanks. Thanks, Star. And she's very upset you about it. You are a lawyer, Star. You're an incredible <laughs> social commentator. The woman wasn't arrested. <laughs> The eight-year-old. I'm sorry if a man rape a boy or a girl rape a young child. That's rape. That ain't an affair. That's sick. I'm going to say it. Yeah, okay, Star. Yes. You can't stop me from saying it. I'm going to say something else now, girlfriend. 9-11 was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 9-11. <laughs> Let's keep it real because I'm keeping. How it about real. the hollow pause? Think she had a Wrong. dad who? You think she had a daddy who didn't listen to her the way yeah. she's yelling? Oh Absolutely. my God! The whole family's listening now. Somebody <laughs> listen to me! A, a woman raped a child. That's wrong, man. Ain't no affair. Who's she yelling at? Who is it that disagrees with her? <laughs> All right, we you get know, Who's she yelling at? She's who? yelling at the paper, which is has no ears. <laughs> right. And they call her a cradle robber. Yeah. Now, so visualize for me a minute. If Visualize for me a minute. Yeah, kiss. Wow. <laughs> Good luck watching that. Oof. I, I, they got to have a couple of segments where she sits out a few segments, right? She's Is that how it works? She's got to be out of breath. Yeah, they, they take turns, but uh, sometimes mm. they actually give her the, the mm. whole floor, you like know, now. You have the floor. Oh, man, I'd do anything to be at that wedding. Well, I'm reading in the paper today. I mean, it's such a bizarre wedding. They actually mentioned in the paper that, uh, you know, she said after getting the license that they were now going to go pick up their rings, which are provided for them by Russell Simmons Company. You know, like all mm. these product mentions have to go along with every announcement. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole racket. Because they're providing the rings for the wedding. Well, ABC put, or someone put their foot down and said, listen, you got to stop. It's out of hand. I mean, you, you just can't keep doing this. But, you know, they have money. Why does she have to have her rings uh, provided by Russell Simmons Company for mentions? I don't know, man. I don't get it. Hey, you know who I'm digging? Who? We had that guy on, the billionaire, Richard Branson. Yes. Trump blasted him. Like Trump, you know, every time a billionaire comes out with a show that's sort of an apprentice ripoff, yeah. Trump rips the guy, and it's really funny. What does he say? All right. It's the Battle of the Billionaires. I'm reading this from the New York Post. Donald Trump ripped TV rival Richard Branson yesterday, calling the daredevil host of The Rebel Billionaire a lot of hot air like his balloons. <laughs> that with, is funny. With only about five, it gets better. Without, with only about five million viewers tuning in in the ratings for Monday's debut of Branson's show, combination Apprentice, Amazing Race, Fear Factor, less than a third of Trump's weekly audience. 
in its two-hour premiere on Fox, ranked fifth in its time slot among broadcast networks in total viewership, putting it behind all other major networks programming, including the Gilmore Girls on WB during the first hour. Ooh, came in last. Huh? Yeah, here's what Trump had to say. I don't know the guy, but I think he's got zero personality and zero television persona. <laughs> That's pretty funny. He's, he doesn't have a lot of charisma. That is, but it's funny because I can see Donald saying that. Zero personality. Right. He doesn't have the look, and whether we like it or not, the look is a big part of ratings and success, and he doesn't have it, and his show doesn't have it. Uh, rebel billionaire contestants vie for Branson's job as president of his global virgin corporate empire. They're pitted against each other in a variety of death-defying stunts set in exotic locales around the world. I think his show has nothing to do with business, Trump said yesterday. I mean... I'm not going to hire a guy based on the fact that he's going to climb on top of a hot air balloon. That's true. He's got something there. I mean, I thought that was pretty funny. Like Trump's saying, well, why would I hire a guy to run a business because he goes up in a hot air balloon? Or, yeah, we'll walk a tightrope. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, some guy goes up in a hot air balloon is a jack-off. <laughs> uh, in the debut, two contestants cl clambered to the top of a balloon sailing along a 10,000-foot something to meet Branson for a tea party. And Trump goes, Branson even failed at the balloon business. <laughs> the guy spent his whole life trying to circle the world in a balloon, and then some guy comes out and no comes out of nowhere and beats him yeah, to it. Yeah. <laughs> the guy spent his whole life circling around in a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Trump is funny. He's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. But don't try to get even an inch in on uh, Trump's territory. That's his he, turf. He attacks. Yeah. He uh, doesn't carry food. The guy's unsuccessful. Trump is still attacked. Trump even said he doesn't believe Branson's a billionaire. I'm a major billionaire because it's easy to add up my stuff, but his airline has got to be sucking him dry. The airline business is terrible. I personally don't think he's a billionaire. It's an expression. You're a billionaire until you go into the airline business and then you're a millionaire. <laughs> Branson could not be reached for comment. That's good. This is some funny lines. Guy, yeah. Guy failed at the balloon business. What is Trump? Trump's going to go into stand-up comedy pretty soon. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. And then I'm in the paper. In the radio section. The most coveted, coveted place in the newspaper. The, the very last page. <laughs> the page that everyone flips to. Howard wants out of his job now. Did I say that? No. I, I didn't. I mean, maybe I did at some point. But, you know, I say a lot of crap. No, well, you said, let me out, I'll be glad to go. Yeah. Because yeah, that's just a the, headline they made up. It's not a quote. Yeah, the headlines seem kind of harsh. Howard Stern claiming he's being jerked around and threatened by his bosses, which is true. I don't even know why. I don't know what it is I've done to them, but they're sending me endless legal letters uh, telling me all kinds of nonsense. And we even said, well, Joel, knock it off. What are you doing? Want us to start sending you legal? Well, what are you trying to do? What did, what did I do to you? And then he reneged uh, yesterday on a on something that he told me he was doing for me a couple of months ago. Now he's not doing it. Uh. Uh, just basically said, yeah, I lied to you. A buddy of mine who shall remain nameless says Viacom is trying to get Sirius Satellite Radio to pay off my contract. And then I could leave early because Sirius is anxious to get the show started. Stern told listeners yesterday. Top-rated bad boy who shocked the radio world last month with the announcement that he was quitting broadcast radio to take a big-money offer from a satellite radio company has been sounding uncharacteristically depressed of late. He says he's being peppered by legal letters and threats from Viacom lawyers. That's true. I, I can't believe it. After all these years of me uh, hard working for this company and, and, and being honorable and staying here and honoring my contract, I don't get it. Uh, elsewhere around the country, Stern airs from 46 cities. His show is being heavily censored by Infinity, Viacom's radio on unit. Quote, Jimmy Kimmel wrote me that they're trashing the show in L.A., cutting pieces out and putting in more commercials than ever, Stern said. I'm like, dude, I'm so out of here. Let them do whatever they want. Stern even attacked the head of Infinity, dubbing him Joel dangerously close to losing his position in Hollander, which is true. I mean, God, look at the guy's performance here. Uh, Sumner Redstone isn't exactly doing cartwheels the way Joel's selling the uh, commercial spots. Joel, you know, Joel's full of excuses. Uh. Mel never had an excuse. Never heard it once. No excuses. <laughs> Joel is busy meeting with lawyers to see if I violated my contract in some way. 
Uh, I basically said I had a contract, and I honored it. Eh, what the hell? Who cares? Stern is worth as much as $100 million to Infinity, but the company recently made it clear that it only considers him a small part of the Viacom media empire. Yeah, so then why are you, so why are you hassling me? I'm not a big deal. If it I'm, doesn't make sense. Your actions don't seem to indicate that I'm such a little part of the company. Right, there's no match up there. You seem overly hurt by all of this, that I'm leaving regular radio after being bashed by the FCC and uh, thrashed around, reduced in the amount of markets I'm on. Well, why would that surprise you? You know, not like anybody was telling me they were going to pay me more. <laughs> I mean, what, what is this? Yeah. Anyway, uh, spokesman for Sirius Radio, uh, Infinity and Sirius declined comment, although Sirius CEO Joe Clayton told analysts last month that a contract buyout is indeed a possibility. Mm. So that might end up happening. Anyway, I'm going to go on the David Letterman show and address all of this. I'm, I'm going to start with the Letterman show. I'm going to go on Thursday night, next Thursday night, not this one. And uh, I yeah, will, Thursday night would be tonight. Next right, Thursday. next Thursday night, I'm going to go on and I'm going to sit with Dave and I am going to explain how I came to this decision to go to satellite, and then I'll explain what it is. Uh, I'll be able to talk to my audience. I don't really care about Dave's audience. I want my audience to tune in and um, hear what I have to say and talk about the future of radio and why I think it's a good idea for you to come with me. I'll be doing all of that. In essence, I'll be doing an infomercial on David Letterman's show. It's like and a campaign. A campaign. I'm kicking off the campaign. And let's just hope Letterman keeps his questions to a minimum so I can continue talking. So you know, what you do is you just ignore him. I will. Yeah. Just, <laughs> shut up, Dave. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> Shut here's up, my, dickies. Here's my next guest, Wayne Siegel, <laughs> who will explain why it's a good deal. <laughs> anyway, that's that. So, I don't know. There's all kind of shenanigans afoot, but, you know, everybody's busy. Les is busy running the TV situation. John Sykes is running something. I don't even know what. I don't know what he does. I don't even know. Yeah, I can't figure out exactly what's going on. I, I think he gets not. to run VH1. And, and MTV. Really? So nobody's home there. Nobody's home with Les. Nobody's home anywhere. And you got Joel running around, busy, you know, trying to be Junior Mel, trying to figure out how to threaten me. When there's much bigger issues and, and, and a lot of money to be made, quite frankly. This final year that I'm here. Yeah, why not concentrate on how to maximize... Don't know. ...the situation. Don't know. And I'm perfectly willing to work with everyone. I'm, I'm not bitter. I'm not angry. I needed I needed a different future. I needed a change. You can really shoot yourself in the foot by yeah. looking at what's wrong instead of what what's right and what you can get out of it. Yeah, and I don't think it work for you. Yeah. Hey, by the way, if we're still on the air next week, uh, the FMEs all next week, the FMEs, and it's going to be goodness. it's going to be the best FMEs you've ever heard. There's going to be guest presenters. There's going to be musical performances. This has uh, turned into a, a real wow. award show. It's going to be real. Uh, it's a real award wow. show. I'm real. I think she's up for an FM. Yeah. You've got to be. <laughs> I'm real, okay? <laughs> please, somebody in America, give me a chance, please. And there's going to be musical performances. Thank you. I played you ready. The Whack Pack is going to be here singing. Yeah. Thank you. They're going to do We Are the uh, Whack Pack, the uh, hit song that they put out live. Want a little sneak preview? I'd we... love to hear I it. would yeah. love to see if they can pull it off live. That's a real feat. Oh, yeah. They're working on it. It's going to be jam-packed. My name is Wendy, <laughs> and I stick out in a crowd when I lose my power. Please rate me for crying out loud. Hi, 
This is Daniel Carver. I don't like Mexicans or chinks. Niggers are lazy. Jews are the devil. That's what I think. Wow. We are the Wagbags. Great. My part's coming up. children, morons, misfits, and homos, who cares what people think, they're great for my show, yeah, I am Alison Ford, I sound like I'm Chinese, I definitely gay sex, I want to please a man on my knees, well, 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 I am Nicole Bass, yeah, my muscles are real huge. If you want your balls ripped off, go ahead and call me a dude. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, 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 well. get through that. A lot of energy. <laughs> but that's just one of the musical performances from the FM music. Wait till you hear it Everybody's next week. Everybody's got to be excited about that music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of guest performances. All kinds of things. So please tune in. And don't forget tonight on E! Part 2 of the Amputee Beauty Pageant. You don't uh, want to miss that. Ooh. Yeah, this ODB Dirt McGirt. I was here on the Howard Stern Show, you know, just having a good time. It was all good. You know what I'm saying? Glad to be home and I want to keep it moving. Peace. New music alternative, 92.3 K-Rock. I was watching Smallville last night. It was real good. Oh, it was a great episode. Like that. Great episode. I, uh, I farted during it. Like, I didn't want to get up, you know? And oh, dear. I thought it was just a little one. I was under the covers, and then Beth smelled it, and she goes, it smells like it's so rotten in here that it smells like Thanksgiving dinner like but it's been left out for 10 days oh. and it really did i was so embarrassed you i said I'm, I'm getting up and leaving you really shouldn't be able to <laughs> identify yeah, like a rotten egg. yeah it really did smell like a rotten egg <laughs> like wendy after the power's off and hey, what's that noise oh that's me opening up thanks oh. i'm sorry all right no noisy paper yeah well i blasted off and i was real You're embarrassed getting real oh. <laughs> comfortable doing that in front of me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, because this is now the third or fourth <laughs> accident you've had. Yeah, it's true, because I wasn't thinking, you know, and I felt like a real jack-off, because I'm trying to keep it hot, you know. Well, I don't wanna... before, you were very conscientious about this. Now, all of a sudden, it's getting a little... That's what happens after four and a half years. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to get comfortable throwing up in front of Dana from drinking too much. <laughs> you see? I the am. romance is gone. It's all gone. I used to get out of the car. <laughs> Oh my but, God. Yeah, so I was like all embarrassed, but uh, then I had this dream last night where then she was, we were on a softball field and uh, she wasn't talking to me. She was just talking to all the other guy softball players and ignoring me and I was really pissed. <laughs> really? Yeah. What does that mean? You know what that means. What does it mean? No, tell me. I don't know. <laughs> it means you're gay for softball team. <laughs> softball team. Hey, I, you know, let me, uh, yeah, I didn't know what it was. Whatever it was, baseball, softball, my balls, who cares? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This is, uh, this is funny. I mean, this is just so gay and lame and everything else rolled into one. And I want to thank Scott DePace for pointing this out. All right. Because his hero, Bill O'Reilly, this is what it concerns. So, you know, Bill O'Reilly has his website and he has, um, he's making a special offer for anyone who spends $100 or more on all his junky products like the Bill O'Reilly fleece and the Bill O'Reilly doormat and the oh, Bill O'Reilly hat. The you know, winter O'Reilly Factor black fleece, warm and comfortable microfiber fleece jacket. And it says O'Reilly Factor on it? Yeah, it says O'Reilly Factor. The O'Reilly Factor logo. 
Um, so it says, well, if you spend $100 or more on his website, the O'Reilly Christmas Store, you receive, listen to what you receive for free. Oh. A limited edition autographed copy of the questions that Bill O'Reilly asked President Bush in his interview on oh, September 22nd. Wow. I mean, does he think a lot of himself? Or what? So oh, like, my goodness. Limited uh, edition. Wow. I might send my list. So what he basically does is he asks a bunch of questions to President Bush. They Xerox those questions, and he signs the piece of paper. And, and he sends only it to signs you. so many. Yeah. That's just really great of him. This guy was saying, like, you know, give me a hat. Give me something that I can use. Maybe because he has to pay off that check. Well, and uh, as Scott said, he didn't actually see this on the website. He heard it while listening to O'Reilly yesterday, and he said that he is so proud when he tells you you can get this limited edition stuff. Yeah. Like, he is doing you the biggest favor in the world. Oh, we got to get it. one of those announcements. <laughs> yeah. Because that's crazy. I'll give you my questions. A Xerox copy of something I signed. Yeah. I, my next big stripper or porn star horror interview, I'm going to Xerox the questions and sign them for people. That's right. When I interview Jenna Jameson. Yeah. That's great. He's a real great guy and a real humanitarian. That's There's really the good. guy who uh, is taking care of your interests. Remember, he writes those books telling people how not to get ripped off by other people. Yeah, who's looking out for you? <laughs> Amazing. All right, you ready to play? Let's see some naked chicks here. She got a, girl's got a smoking body. Yeah, she's hot. Yep. Chick used to be work as a uh, bartender. Worked as a stripper once. Didn't like it, so uh, went to the bartender yeah. uh, situation. Says she can. She beats Baba Booey ninety percent of the time when she plays at home. Thinks she's got a good shot. Says she'll get naked if uh, if she loses to Baba Booey. We're gonna play Stump the Booey right now. Stump the Booey. And the $5,000 prize for Stump the Bowie is provided by Seed of Chucky, which we love. Uh, Seed of Chucky oh. has a lot of money. Look at you all proud of your body. Hi. You're strutting in like a, like a princess. Well, thank you very much. How are you? you got a sexy walk. Do you know that? People tell you that? I've been told that, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> are you a dancer of some kind? Uh, I was years ago. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, because you, like, you, you strut your body. You, you thrust your breasts and belly out. You know what I mean? I what? I never really noticed. Well, I'm noticing. <laughs> By the way, Seed of Chucky, $5,000 prize, which could be yours if you stump the buoy. Hmm. Now, is she really sure that she's beating Gary 90% of the time? Because we hear a lot of that. You know what? I, I was down at uh, Scores in Florida. She was at the bar, and she, you know, she tracked me down, and she said, I want to play you. I can beat you. All right. So she All said right. she can win. Here so you go. were a bartender at Scores? Uh, no, actually, I work at another strip club. Oh, you came just to the grand opening. Exactly. I see. And you're not a stripper. No. Uh huh. You no. tried it though. I'm a waitress at another strip bar. All right. Can you make good money doing that? I do pretty good. All right. Why are you not a stripper? You got the body for it, certainly. I'm too clumsy. I am way too clumsy. I would trip. I would bump my head on things. I think you're just uncomfortable showing your body, maybe. Probably. Yeah. I think it's not about tripping. Yeah, she's um, a dancer. We'll start no. getting comfortable now. <laughs> You say you think that uh, Baba Booey is cute? Yes, I do. And you find him more attractive in person? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I do. Wow. She's going to be a good player. I think the whole lips and teeth thing is, like, way over-exaggerated. <laughs> really? I'm serious. All right. I'm serious. I think he's adorable. You had a lesbian experience with a friend when you were 16 years old? Mm -hmm. You used to watch porn films together with another girl. That's hot. We used to skip school and uh, go to uh, her place in That's the bedroom. Hot. Yeah, it was. And watch porn films. And watch porn films. What kind of films would you watch? Uh, girl on Girl. No. Kind of thing. How know. old were she? Was 16. She? Uh, wow. Yeah, I was like 15, 16 wow. years old. How does that start? Like, you, you, you were attracted to your friend? Uh, not re Yeah, well, she was a pretty girl. Right. And this was pre-boob. I didn't have any boobs back then. And I was still a virgin, and she was like, come on, let's skip school. I want to show you something. Right, so she was really the seducer. Mm -hmm. You had never had a lesbian experience. No, before. but she has. She, she was in the coke. She was a stripper even back then. At sixteen. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. this girl was advanced. Great shit. Yes. So she right. said, "Let's uh, skip school and go back and watch porno." Mm -hmm. Were you yeah. kind of suspicious that she was asking you to watch porno? That maybe. I was very naive. You were. You had no idea she wanted you. Uh uh. Yeah. So you go over and 
What would the friend slip into something comfortable? Would you say, let's watch this in bed? Uh, Not at all. First, we started off in the living room, and we started watching the pornos. And she's like, does that do anything for you? What are you guys wearing at that point? Your school uh, uniform? School, uh, no uniforms. It's a public school, but right. jeans, shirt, you know, 80s, so probably a scarf and a head or something. Right. She was there hot? any drinking involved? She was. No, not at all. She was super hot. She was sweet, yeah. What, blonde? She was nice. Brunette. Brunette, just like you. Mm -hmm. She was a brunette. And you couldn't weigh much. How much do you weigh? Uh, 105. And you got the belly piercing, right? Mm-hmm. And when'd you get that? Uh, probably about four years ago. Four years ago, when'd you get the boob implants? Uh, six years ago. Nice. Yeah. How big are you now? C cup? Uh, high B, low C, something mm. like that. You're not wearing panties with those low cut uh, jeans, are uh, you? Uh, they're a little thong. Little thong. All right, so you know how to dress. Dog. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetie, you're not naive. You figured out, like with Gary's teeth, sometimes we exaggerate on the show. So you. <laughs> <laughs> you got the high heels on, the whole thing, right? Yeah. Little yeah. stripper horseshoes, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, Daddy. Absolutely. And you, uh, so so you're sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. and she says, hey, I want to show you a porno. Yes. So she puts it on. Uh-huh. And then what's the move it, when she's watching it? Though, what, what does she say? Oh, I'm getting really turned on? Well, she doesn't actually say that. She starts rubbing her legs, and then she's Was she wearing a dress the first time? She's wearing jeans. Just jeans and rubbing her legs and looking yeah. at Yeah, she's looking at She's like, does that do anything for you? And she keeps rubbing herself, rubbing herself, and she's like, you know, let, let me feel between your legs, you know. I, really? What does that do for you? So and she started touching you. She started touching me outside hey my now. clothes on the couch. Wow. And um, I, I wasn't sure what to do. And I just sat there. I was frozen. I'm watching. Uh-huh. And you're watching yeah. the porno. Yeah. I'm and watching. And she's touching your legs. Mm -hmm. Rubbing her hands all over you, but outside your jeans. Outside my jeans at first. Right, and then did you say to yourself, well, maybe I should get out of here? No, I was like, you know, you only live once. Right, you would make that decision. Had she been with a boy at that point? Or yeah, no? she had. No, you. Me, no, no. No, she was so naive. Oh. Forgetting she was naive. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I was 17. So did you say to her, what are you doing? I mean, what's going on here? No, I Nothing. just went with the flow because... Would she lean in and start kissing you next? A little bit on the neck. On the neck. Uh -huh. And you liked it? I loved it. She kissed you on your neck, mm -hmm. and you two 16-year-old nymphos. Yeah. You're still on the couch in the living room. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, we are. And then what does she do? Remove your shirt? Um, not at first. Not at first. I didn't let her know that I was enjoying what I was seeing and what she was doing because I was too shy. I wasn't sure how to approach it. So what did she do? So she had to do all the sed seducing. She did everything. She did she remove her own clothing for you? We. She talked to me into going into the bedroom, mm -hmm. and we went to the bedroom, and she would lay there. She made me get on top of her. She took Still with your clothes? Still with her clothes. Yeah. But then she started having me take her blouse off, and this is the first time I had ever touched breasts and mm -hmm. my goodness i never I, <laughs> I didn't have breasts on my clothes or she took her own I, I can't get too graphic with this story so let me mm -hmm. let me lead you through this she took her own clothes off she took her own shirt off did she remove your shirt yes and you were embarrassed because you were flat chested yeah i kept my little bra on you left your bra on did mm -hmm. she say to you come on take your bra off she kept it on I all right out of respect she was respecting you uh -huh. i wouldn't have respected you <laughs> yeah really. i would just ripped your bra off and then and then what happened she removed your pants and panties she unzipped them. Unzipped your pants. Yes. And uh, did things to you. Uh huh. And you liked it. You got excited. Yeah, very much so. Did you return the favor? Did you take off her pants? I started to. And I actually I unbuttoned and zipped them, and my hands went south. Wow, you liked that. And you knew what to do. Uh, yeah, because I because you to myself. Right, you did what you do to yourself, what you mm -hmm. like. And did she say? So then she performed everything on you. Mm -hmm. And you performed on her. No. I you did not. We you, were interrupted. You chickened out. We were interrupted. Who interrupted? Uh, Our the, parents? Uh, no, it was my brother's apartment at the time, and he had decided to come home early that day. So I could just imagine. He saw you guys. Hello. Did he see you in the bed with she the girl? jumped up and went to the bathroom, and I just stood up, zipped up, and says, Hey, <laughs> how you doing? So he didn't catch you? No. Mm -hmm. No, he had no idea, but he what? was missing 50 bucks. And she, she never did this <laughs> again? She took 50 bucks from him? Yeah, apparently he oh. had a drawer full of money. So. And were you pissed at her? Very much so. So you never were with her again? Just as friends. Yeah, and did he, was he like, well, what are you guys, eating a tuna sandwich in here? <laughs> was she suspicious of that? <laughs> no, all right. But she never did this again? She only had that one experience? That one experience, and um, but she kept insinuating that she wanted to go for it again. Yeah, well, she stole fifty dollars from your brother. That ain't she right. did. No, it wasn't. But I have a similar story. Uh, I was with Fred watching Schindler's List, 
<laughs> and he started rubbing my legs. Does that do anything for you? I said no, and I left. <laughs> All right, now, what we're going to ask you to do is play Stump the Bowie. You're a very sexy girl. Your name is Cindy, and you're, uh, you've got a killer body. Now, we've had other women bum us out by not holding up to their end of the obligation. So what we're going to ask you to do is go behind that plastic curtain over there. Okay. Remove all your clothing. Okay. Kick them out onto the floor. We will hold them. If you win, you get $5,000 and we return your clothes. And we'll never see you naked. Okay. If you lose, the shower curtain will drop and we will look at you in all your glory. Let's go for it. Are you totally shaven? I got a little bit. <laughs> you have a little bit. Uh-huh. Nothing Good. underneath, but yeah, I got something. Good. To lead to the imagination. All right. There you heard it first. All right. Now step into your curtain. You say you're good at this game. You should have nothing to worry about. How I did hope she gets so good at it? Baba, you've got to win this. All I've right. got to see this girl's body. There's no way this broad knows about you. She's too cute to beat him. Yeah, there's yeah, no way. She ain't winning. Yeah, the, fat, the fat chicks give me a tough time. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. I see your shoes are off. I see that. She's got, she's got cute feet. You got nice feet. Do you know that? Uh-uh. You didn't know you had nice feet? $5,000 prize for Stump the Bully, provided by Seed of Chucky. Last time he took a bride, this time he's passing his seed to the next generation. Seed of Chucky from Rogue Pictures and theaters everywhere tomorrow. I see your stripper-type belt came off. There go the pants. And there go your pants. Kick it all out. That's it. Seed of Chucky has an awful lot of money. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. We're I very see. Grateful to the shirt just came off the tacky the leather shirt. <laughs> you don't like that leather sh little uh, that was holder? Cute. Really? Nice. I like it. Let me see your thong come out. All right, your thong is out. Everything's out. All right. <laughs> and no bra, I can take it. Correct. All right. <laughs> and your switchblade fell out too. Switchblade. <laughs> The heroin balloon Sorry. is on the floor. All right, you're totally naked. You can put your shoes... Oh, you did put your shoes back on. We prefer that. We like when chicks are naked with their shoes on. All right, it's time to play Stomp the Buoy. Stomp the Buoy! It's a simple game. I'm going to uh, play you a little clip of a song. We'll do best out of five here. Listen to the song. And then I'll ask you to tell me what you have written on your card. It's that simple, really. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Are you ready? I am ready, Robin. Baba Bowie thinking and Cindy riding away. Oh, I can't about it. All right, I'm going to stop that. I... Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie riding. It's hard to see what Cindy's doing behind the curtain because she is nude back there and covered. I think I know this one. Well, I know I do too. Anyway, I, see, I think I see Cindy riding still. Are you done? Uh, no. Oh, jeez. Well, I know the whole thing. Why don't you hold up your card so I can see what you have on your card? And what does it say? The band Duran Duran she has written there. Yeah, let her say it. Oh. Tell me what you have written on the card. Duran Duran. And what is the uh, name of the song? It's the name it escaped. It, it escaped me. All right, let's take a look at Baba Boo's song. Baba, what do you have? I wrote Duran Duran, and I'm always nervous because all their songs sound the same. Is that mm -hmm. Notorious? Notorious yes, is absolutely right. right. Yeah. Well, we're very close to seeing somebody naked. Drop the curtain now. <laughs> Are you dancing back there naked? No. I'm That's hot. Beating myself up. And by the way, Artie, you looked really nervous as you were walking out the door, and I was walking in. You were, like, a little scared. Of what? Really? Yeah, I was like, hi, Artie. I was going <laughs> to get the El Fudge cookies. Oh, okay. yeah, he's a man on a I mission. I get in your way of that. I Sorry. wasn't sure if uh, yeah, they were there. He was okay. afraid he was running out of time. I should know better. <laughs> hey, Artie, yeah. did you uh, eat uh, that whole bag of fudge cookies yesterday? Yeah, yeah I had a sleeve. <laughs> a sleeve? <laughs> One sleeve, you know. Yeah. He eats those elf cookies. I love those elf oh, cookies. Awesome. What is a sleeve? A whole side. You, you know, know, there's one side and another oh, side. Okay. The Oreos come in a sleeve. Oh, okay. So sleeve. what did you do? Did you leave them here or did you take them home? I left them here and they were gone today, but Amory brought in new ones with SpongeBob on them. <laughs> Are you done with those yet? No, I had like seven of them. Save me, <laughs> save me two. All right. Song <laughs> one. Baba Booey up one to nothing to Cindy. Cindy, you can still come back. 
Here's your second song. I know this one. Cindy writing. By the way, there are pictures of Artie eating on the website. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. And a picture of Artie's daughter. Louie writing. That's on HowardStern.com. Very sexy. All right, let's go. I'm only asking you to go first because I can't see what's back there, Cindy, to tell if you're, you would be cheating or not. So hold up your card and tell me what you have. 38 Special, Hold On Loosely. That is correct, Baba Booey. Let's see what you have. 38. 38, yeah, go 38 ahead. 38 Special, Hold On Loosely. All right, there we go. Good. Very good. Now we have a game. Right, you're still down one, though, Cindy. Here's your next song. Booey writing right away. Booey. On the drum roll, Booey writing. Cindy riding too, I think. I can see her hand moving under there. She's simply awesome. She's simply awesome. I know this one too. All right, very good. Let's go to the beautiful Cindy. Cindy is naked behind a shower curtain. Car I see. Caribbean go ahead, you see. Caribbean Queen, Billy Ocean. Billy Ocean, Caribbean Queen is right. And Baba? Billy Ocean, Caribbean Queen. Wow. That's right. Caribbean, tomato, tomato. Caribbean, Caribbean, both right. And here's your next song. Cindy writing already. Baba Booey thinking. I can hear a little more. All right. You've got time. Cindy's good. Down one song, though. Yeah, she needs Baba to miss. What an awful song. I know. <laughs> mm -mm. All right. <laughs> it's a great song. What's going on, Bowie? All right, I'll let Bob Bob finish writing. Are you done? I'm done. All right, let's go to the beautiful Cindy, who is standing behind a shower curtain naked. Uh, well, read it to me. Carrie from Europe. Carrie from Europe is correct. Wow. Bowie, what do you got? And Bowie? Bowie has drawn a blank. Uh-oh. Oh, is getting in the robo spanker if he loses this one because I want to see this girl naked. I'm depending on you. Hey, Gary, if you lose, you're staying in radio. <laughs> this kind of radio. Terrestrial radio? Terrestrial radio. You bastard. We got that song off a website called The Worst Songs Ever That Can. Yeah, no, I know I know the final countdown by the band. I barely remember that track. Well, we have a tie game. It's down to our last song. Wow. Let's hope we don't have to go into overtime. Let's see uh, Bowie put this away. Here we go. Your fifth and final song, unless we go into overtime. Cindy writing, I think. And so is Bowie. Bowie right. Done. All right, let's go to uh, Cindy and read out loud what you have. Hall and Oates, out of touch, out of time. Well, Hall and Oates, out of touch is fine. Well, is it out of touch or out of time? See. It's one or the other. Oh. Out of touch. Out of touch, okay. Are you sure? You yeah. got a choice of one of those two. Are you serial? Uh, no, because it's, 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 there's a, one title to this That's song. true. Really? Out of touch. You sure? You're going without a touch? Yeah. Yeah, she's right. Uh, right. Oh, no, it's out of touch. I bet I could browbeat her in the loop. We knew she was right when you asked, are you sure, 14 I swear you look just like... Yes, I know. Yes, you do. Well, we have a tie game. It means we have to go to a tiebreaker. Tiebreaker? I like that. That's death. death. I really do want to see her naked. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, here we go. She's good. Stay away from the hair band. This is very dangerous overtime because whoever gets the first one wrong, that's it. You lose. So here we go. Gee, Bowie, I thought you had this in the bag. You did I, have I, it. I got four out of five. Go. I got four out of five. Come How come on. you don't know Europe? Because it's the worst band ever. She's a hot <laughs> chick. Hot chicks are never this good at this game. Here we go. Robin, you should know the song. I do recognize it. Let's not have any conversation, please. Let's go to Cindy. This is tiebreaker. Right? Tell me what you've written down. I wrote Cool and the Gang, Joanna. Cool and the Gang, Joanna. 
is correct. Baba Booey, Joanna, cool in the game. That is this correct. We started off at NBC every day for a year. Yeah, I knew I, I had heard it before. What's amazing is I don't remember it. WNBC. Good morning, everybody. It's your friend Howard. Yeah, we played a lot of cool in the game. We play a lot of cool in the gang here because we're cool. <laughs> and you're our gang. You're the NBC family. Good morning, everybody. Cool. And the gang. NBC. You don't remember this song? Now I do. I love you. <laughs> when I make love to Wendy the Retard, we play this. <laughs> All right. right. Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Bowie riding. Bowie riding. And so. Hold up your card. Just got it. What's it say? Rock me, Amadeus. Yeah. By who? Now, who did it? Rock me, Amadeus is correct. You don't have the answer. I'm so sorry. Let's see if Bowie does so we can get the tiebreaker going and finally see you nude. Artie, give me a small round of applause. Okay. Rock me, Amadeus by the late uh, Falco. Falco. Yes, right. Falco. Yes, absolutely. He's late. He's what happened? Yeah, Cindy, what happened? I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. You see what happens when you have to play Stump the Bowie? You think you're going to win and you don't. Are you ready to let us see you naked? Sure. Will it be humiliating to you to let us see you naked, to be standing here? Only if you goof on me. Uh, well, let's see what we've got. <laughs> All right, here we go. Drop the curtain for Stump the Bowie. Whoa, no goofing there. No, no, no. You look ten times better naked than you do with clothes on. Wow, you're hot. Look Not on. <laughs> wow. Man. No fat. None. Killer body. <laughs> nice ass. Turn around, please. Wow. That's a body that makes you forget El Fudge cookies. <laughs> Honey, you that. do you eat a lot of food or do you just starve oh, God, yourself? Yeah. You do? You're I just naturally blessed? I guess so. Yeah. Boobs I look good so. too with a boob implant job. Really? You yeah. So? Not bad at all. Hi, Robin. Well, I'm not looking, sweetie. <laughs> Show Robin, Robin your naked body. Uh, no, that's all right. Hey, why don't you two watch I just some like porno? The game. <laughs> Why don't you guys sit on the couch and watch some porno? <laughs> this excites me. Well, you didn't get the five thousand dollars. We're seeing you naked. That's a shame. Yeah. Can I, I haven't I haven't seen enough. Can you turn my way for a second? Sure. I, oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. You work. did beat her. Yeah. Side view is nice. Do you, uh, you have a boyfriend? I have a husband. And he's here. A oh. husband. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just ruined everything. Take care. Oh. Gee, I wish we could have uh, given you some money. I do have um, five hundred dollars cash, courtesy of the WWE Survivor Series on pay per view. That would be sweet. But. Uh, you would have to earn it in the Robo Spanker. Oh. oh my God! The Robo Spanker. <laughs> Can you handle it? Do I have a choice? You got to take. Well, you want five hundred? Oh my God! All right, let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Robo Spanker. We have another Robo Spanker Academy. Oh I know there is a Robo Spanker theme song somewhere. How does that thing work? That thing coming out. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank um, she Seed of Chucky. Naked? Yeah, she's getting into it naked, Robin. That's right. I got to tell you, put this Robo Spanker up. It's like watching the pit crew at the Indianapolis 500. I never saw five guys work so fast. First of all, I want to thank um, Seed of Chucky for that great $5,000 prize from Rogue Pictures. See the Chucky in theaters everywhere tomorrow. Don't miss it. $500 prize playing right now is Cindy in the Robo Spanker. I am Robo Spanker. <laughs> she 
Oh my god. I'm like doing nothing to the imagination here. Strap her into the Robo Spanker now. $500 cash courtesy of the WWE Survivor Series on pay per view, airing this Sunday. 8 p.m. Call your local pay per view provider to order. You are completely helpless in the Robo Spanker, aren't you? Oh my god, yes, I am. You're getting uh, turned on, aren't you? I am like totally right now. Yes, you are. You're very open. Oh my god, I'm so glad I shaved. <laughs> yes, you look great in the Robo Spanker. The Robo Spanker's no, no uh, walk in the park, honey. I'm sure, I've heard. It's pretty tough. I've heard about welts. You are completely <laughs> nude. All you are wearing is very sexy high heeled shoes. Yes. Your body is next to perfect. Oh boy. I don't see a flaw from here. Do you, Artie? No, not from where I'm standing. By the way, look who has the best seat in the house, Robin. Uh, I know. Yeah. Unfortunately, I keep getting this <laughs> shot. Your husband's not going to kick our ass for doing this to you. Not at all. I'm sure he wishes he was here, probably. You couldn't possibly have any children, could you? Uh-uh. No, good. No. Nope. You never should. Well, the Robo Spanker's <laughs> gotten several girls pregnant, so... <laughs> oh, great. Did you wash it? Where is Robo Spanker's control panel? Here it is. Okay, thank you. First, I'm going to turn on the vibrating mechanism... Oh, that geez. will vibrate you, which is pleasurable. Okay. Do you At feel least that? You understand it. I feel that. Ooh, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. You like that? Mm hmm. But the Robo Spanker oh, isn't no. only about oh, pleasure, no. oh, it's no. about oh, pain no. as well. Oh, no. oh, my God. Are you ready for your first Robo Spank? Oh, God, I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> for $500. Be gentle. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. That was your first uh, Robo Spank. How did it feel? Not bad. All right. I should say it hurt like hell, so you wouldn't go any harder. No, there's four more coming. Oh, say spank, spank me, Robo Spanker. Spank me, Robo Spanker. <laughs> Not so good the second time, is it? It's a little stingy. <laughs> Here's your third Robo Spank as you squirm. Sorry. It hurts. The vibrating's helping though. All right. Who is the Robo Master? Oh, you Howard. You Howard. <laughs> oh, this sounds wrong. Oh, Howard. <laughs> I am Robo's oh, banker. That's hot. <laughs> I am a Robo's banker. <laughs> Robin, everything look healthy from that view? I'm not. Am I red? <laughs> is she red, Baba Booey? Yeah. Yeah, she you know, it's a, big, it's a circle about the size of, like, a, a coffee cup saucer. Wow. Pretty red. You are red. What's with the whip cream? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing with that whip cream, Doug, you little so pervert? Put the whip cream on her backside. And what, to watch the whip cream fly yeah, off? Spank the whip cream. All and, right. and, and probably the coolness of it will help the weld. But it, yes. Oh, great. Oh, cool no. down her ass with whipped cream. This is for oh, your no. benefit, honey. Thank you, Artie. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, my God. Ow. Does that feel better? Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Does that feel better, the whipped cream? Oh, my God. My All right, get ready for your robo spanker. Oh, this is no. going to be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and your last one. No. Oh, oh. whipped cream. All right, you're done. $500. <laughs> Spewed on everybody. <laughs> you won five hundred dollars cash. Thank you. Baby. Courtesy of the WWE series on pay per view airing this Sunday at eight p.m. Call your local pay per view provider to order. Lick it off, Howard. You liked it, huh? Lick it off. Yeah, well, your husband will beat me. <laughs> what a funny oh shot that was. Yeah, clean her off a little, Baba. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, no. Oh my God, in my hair. We <laughs> really do have to angle this machine differently. <laughs> oh <my laughs> you got the full view. <laughs> I feel like a wipe of my kid. All right, let her up. Listen, oh. congratulations to you. I guess it's not so bad, is it? No, not at all. Not too bad. You handled not it well. All. Get ready to get your diaper changed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after these words with a lot more show. But... Peace, love, and Howard Stern with Elaine Boozler. Hey, Elaine. He's going to be You don't want to come on my show? Elaine Boozler. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, you don't want to be on the Howard Stern show? What's the matter? It's a horrible show, isn't it, huh? Yeah, you're so funny. What? So is your face. Who are you? Who are you? Uh, Who are you? Take a seat. <laughs> what in the world is... All right, take it easy. Oh. All right, all right, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, easy. What is this? What's with this guy? You all right? I don't know who he is. No, I'm okay. Sit down, sit down. Relax. Okay. He's me, and he has taste. It's not a matter of...
beauty pageant tonight on E. Check it out. You'll have a lot of laughs. Check out the winner, Jennifer, who just uh, caught the eye of a photo editor over at Playboy.com, so she's hot. Here, listen to this. Here's Bill O'Reilly, you know, sort of telling every... Hawking his wares. Here's Bill O'Reilly hawking his wares. And uh, while we're on the subject of BillOReilly.com, we have the Christmas store, as I told you. But what I didn't tell you, or what I think I didn't tell you, is that our best customers for the Christmas store get a historic document. That is my questions that I asked President Bush in the interview, signed by me. Straight face when he says this. Historic document. <laughs> He's going to send, if you spend 100 bucks with him, he'll send you the historic document of a, a, a Xerox of the questions he asked President Bush. How I, I is think, that history? Not folded, suitable. For not folded. Not folded. Pompous. Suitable for framing, I think, yeah. is coming up. So in your house, when people come over, they can see a framed copy of the questions Bill O'Reilly asked President Bush. <laughs> wow. What a, what an incredible turd he is. Pompous, pretentious bull. What is he doing? Is, is this part of the payoff to that broad? I don't know. My best customers. Do you ever feel bad? I mean, do you ever sit down and go, you know, maybe some stuff I shouldn't give to my audience. Like, maybe I should just reward them even if they don't spend $100. I got to think one day you come out of your haze if you buy this stuff. You go, what the hell was I thinking? I got to get one of those and hang it on my wall. <laughs> Framing, and we send it to you for free if you're a good customer of our Christmas store on BillOReilly.com. BillOReilly.com. Our Christmas store. Jack Mayerhofer. Hey, a lot of people buy into him. I'm sure the most sought-after things for Christmas are in the Bill Riley O'Reilly. What do you have Christmas in your mouth? Store. Did you get a tongue piercing? I got a tongue piercing. <laughs> no, did you? <laughs> no. Oh, that'd be great. I have a you're, lozenge. Well, you're having trouble talking with it in your mouth. I am not. <laughs> I thought it'd be gone by now. And now it is. Bill O'Reilly wants you to spend $100 or more on his website. Because he has to spend six million dollars or more to the sexually harassed. <laughs> yeah, you would have to check whether he's been, you know, mentioning it a lot more since the settlement. And uh, while we're on the subject of BillOReilly.com, we have the Christmas store, as I told you. But what I didn't tell you, or what I think I didn't tell you, is that our best customers for the Christmas store get a historic document. That is my questions that I asked President Bush in the interview, signed by me. It's not folded, suitable for framing, and we send it to you for free. If you're a good wow. customer of our Christmas store on BillOReilly.com. Those incredibly lightweight <laughs> questions, you wrote them down. Imagine how good the feeling is when you have that hanging on your wall, though, when you think about it. You can have a piece of Bill O'Reilly's historic interview with and President Bush. Since it's limited edition, this is something you can pass along to your children. How about a, for $200 or more, you get a personal dirty phone call? <laughs> yeah, I would rather the transcript of those tapes. You know, uh, the biggest idiots equal the best customers. So uh, we're, we here at BillOReilly.com came up with a piece of paper we're going to send you with with Bill's autograph on it that you can frame because we don't fold it. An historic document. I mean, how talk about the no spin zone. How much spin is on that? He doesn't fold it. He doesn't fold it. You know, they could have folded this thing, right. which meant smaller envelopes and a bigger savings to Bill. They could have balled it up and thrown it. <laughs> and he could have with it. He could have not signed it. He could have just sent it, you know, without a signature. All right, a couple of pieces of business, Artie. I, I, listen, I know you're upset about this. Artie came to me very upset. Really? A couple of pieces of business. 
Sean, the manager of Beetlejuice, is here. Yep. He feels he's not getting his plugs on E. He's he, still feeling this and way? And he feels that Doug Goodstein from E is holding him back. I am upset about that. Well, you know what? I noticed that Beetlejuice isn't in the Whack Pack song. I was very upset about that. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you do the math, Robin. <laughs> Dude, Figure it out. Yeah. Somebody's getting the squeeze. That's right. All right. If Sean uh, wants to come in here and air his grievance, he can. I'm not sure I see Sean's point. Doug These has ex- calls are going out. Doug has explained it to me many times what's going on, and according to Doug, oh, there's Sean. Oh. Hey, hey, come on in, Sean. Where's the beat? Is, is Sean hey, in beat. the witness protection program or something? Sean is in the witness protection program. <laughs> that is why he's wearing dark glasses and a. Uh, These are your favorite glasses. Oh, yeah, you look good. You look very nice. (laughs) And by the way, there's Beetlejuice wearing a Steppin' Out skull cap. Really? Are you a fan of Steppin' Out, Chauncey Hayden's magazine? Is that why you're wearing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. Okay. I didn't know that. When did that happen? When did you start reading that? Oh, that's a long time ago. Oh, you did. All right. (laughs) Good to see you, Beat. Thank you. Yeah. You feeling good today? Me? I'm feeling pretty good today. Okay, good. Looks like thug life over there. You got the. You look like a rapper today. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Do you I rap? Still, I still rap. You do? Well, not here, though. Where do you rap? Me? I got my own studio. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's not going to rap in your studio. No, hmm. I got my own studio. You built a studio? Yeah, I built one myself. Uh, and what are you doing? You're going to put out a couple? Uh, I got a couple of rappers. Oh, yeah. Thank you got some people in your uh, on yeah. your label? Yeah. <laughs> what is the name of your label? Oh, I can't tell you that. Why is that? It's a secret. You can't tell. All right. <laughs> well, I understand there's a business. I understand there's a business problem, Beetlejuice, and I'm going to talk to your manager, Sean. Is he your manager? Is he, sure. your, he is your legal representative. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. You have a legal and binding agreement. Well, with let him? me just right. ask one more thing, yeah. Beetle. Are you upset? Me? Nah. Oh, okay. Bit. It's just Sean's problem. Just yeah. a little bit. What are you upset about? Me? Yeah. I'm not saying a little about it. But... Okay. But Sean is upset. Yeah, a little bit. Well, well, I, I see good cop, bad cop coming in. <laughs> oh, you... I hate cops. All right. You don't like the cops? Uh, he loves the cops. Oh, he loves I the love cops. I love cops, but they're a real piece of garbage. Oh, <laughs> hey, you can't say that about the cops. He's they work kidding. hard. We love the yeah? cops. He's yeah. Oh, my. All right. A they lot keep of times... us safe, B. That's okay, because right, they ain't doing nothing. They ain't making no money. Well, sometimes the cops do have to tell you you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, they're doing the wrong thing. That's their problem. Well, sometimes they have to be the police and say to you, Beetlejuice, you're breaking the law. Well, they could break the law, so I'll co- I-, I could. Yeah, yeah, but you can't break the law. I could break the law at any time. <laughs> yeah, I think the reason you don't like the police is sometimes you act up. And oh, then it's you no don't, problem. And you don't like when they tell I, you it's no. It's no problem. It's no problem. I mean, you we, cooperate, though, don't I you? I don't have to cooperate. We had a problem. We were, we were driving to a gig. And he threw the beer bottle out of the back of the car. So the cops pulled me over, told me to get out, put my hands on the hood of the car. I did. Called, told him, get out, put your hands on the hood. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry yeah, I heard we that. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> uh, all right. Enough. So, Beat, uh, you are not upset, but today Sean is upset. Right. This is your manager, You got, you, and you are here to state that he is your legal representative. That's right. Okay. He speaks for you. That's right. All right. Well, he don't speak for me, but I speak for my own. All right. He's going to speak for himself. He has notes. Sean has like a ton of notes. I mean, Sean, I've had a long-standing relationship with you and Beetlejuice, right? And and JollyDwarf.com, of course. Yeah, you know, Howard, I don't. I'm not even here for the plugs. I know you always help us out. You you do everything for our family. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be where we are today. All right, that's fair enough. But you're hurt. I got a two-page letter because I know what's going on. Have you seen a change in things, Sean? Well, no. This has been going on for about. Four years, okay? Um, it first started when Doug Goodstein, right now it's with Isaac, but it was back when Doug Goodstein had Hank, God bless his soul. Yeah. And Beetle was, I was told by Bob Kreppitz that Beetle was taking money out of, out of uh, Doug's let me, let me, let me, let me, Bob let, let me, let me handle okay. this for a second. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me understand the problem. Yeah. In your letter, yeah. and it was a long emotional letter, yeah. you seem to feel that E is intentionally cutting out your plugs. Most definitely, Howard. Now, uh, d- let me bring in Isaac and Doug, and let's get to the bottom of this. But they think it's I been since to... Hank was around? I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I mean, I'm so sure about this, Howard. I'll take a lie detector test. I wonder if they'd be willing to do it. Absolutely, 100%. 100%, I know. I'm so sure you're so wrong. Doug, what is so what sure. is the problem here? Explain it to us. So we can... you. Um, you want me to explain the problem in yeah. one word? One word. Or a few words? Yes. No problem. What, what, there is what, no problem. Why does Sean no, say he has a problem? Is, 
I don't know where you've concocted this can I speak insanity. And I'll Go tell ahead. you where the problem is. Lies. Can, can I see your eyes? And it's 100%, 100% a fact. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Get okay. close to the microphone. When he used to, he used to, uh, Get close to the microphone with your mouth. He used mouth. to be a manager for Hank. That's right. Okay, Hank passed on, God bless him. I'm yeah. not, I don't even want to bring Hank's name into it because... Go ahead. Bring just, whatever you have but to bring anyway... Because it. it's all wrong and the, crazy. No, it's not. Yeah, just it let me speak, please. At the time, he was managing Hank. Hank's gigs went from maybe four a weekend to about one or two a weekend because Beatle was on the scene. Uh, okay, that took money out of his pocket. Well, hold on. I don't know who this guy is. Let's not, let's not say okay. this. Okay, right. sorry. Right. Get right. that microphone in front of your mouth. Oh, Pick it up. There, there you are. Okay. All right. So is it true that a lot of times on the E! Show that you cut out Beetlejuice's plug? Um, yes. Intentionally, no. Why do you yeah. cut with, out the with plug? With the motive to uh, screw Sean somehow, no. We actually leave it in more than we cut it out. No. Right. I, why, I have notes, too. Why did you have to cut it out once in a while? There are numerous reasons why we cut it out. Um, a lot of Beetlejuice's plugs are dated. You know, it's like see Beetlejuice at Zany's on Thursday, September twelfth. You know, September fifteenth. Right. So it dates. If the show air, if the show airs a month later, then that doesn't make any sense, and it's going to mislead people. All right. Do, now, now, Sean, will you, you agree to that? that? You understand that? We also have. You don't understand that. No, well, all right. Go ahead. How do we explain it? Can I please speak? Sometimes sure. Beatles in for forty Just minutes. We have twenty-one minutes of content that is sometimes a lot more entertaining than hearing like that, you do don't... a plug. Right. Nothing against the plug or putting people's plugs in. We know what they're here for, and we know that that helps people. But there's no conspiracy. There's no intentional. I'm not talking the grassy knoll. I'm not talking like crazy <laughs> conspiracy. Just because Robin Rosinski doesn't believe there's a conspiracy doesn't mean there's one not going on. It could be between you two guys who got there's the show. There's no conspiracy. Now, 100 percent. Now, Sean, why would these guys well, be conspiring against you? Okay. Let me understand. Can I go back that. to one thing? If first? they let me talk, go I'll, ahead. I'll go tell ahead. You. Go ahead. Can I talk? Sure. Talk. Okay. Back when Hank was working, it was taking money out of Doug's pocket. Okay. Bob Kreppitz, if you went to yahoo.com right. and typed in Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern Show, whose who's website came up? I don't know. Hank's and PegasusConcerts.com. Okay? They, not ours. They had Beetlejuice's picture on their website. They were acting as Beetlejuice's manager. Doug, is that true? I had Dude, my brother call up. Be institutionalized. You are I so had, out of line and so I do crazy. not lie. Well, I'm the most loyal person. Okay. can ask me any no, questions. Okay, I'm sorry, Sean. You know, well, can first of all, let me just say I like Sean and I like Beetlejuice. Yeah, because I'm the most loyal and honest like person you. you will ever meet. I have nothing against you, but I can definitely have an argument with you, and I hope you can. Uh, yeah. we, we're not going to get you this out of control. When you looked up from Pegasus.com, I mean Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show Pegasus came up, and his Don't website came up. Don't say Pegasus. He doesn't deserve that. Wait a second. Wait a second. But I'm not into. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to talk about that. I want to understand something. Is it true that you had a picture of Beetlejuice on the that Hank website? That would be the first time I've ever heard that. No, not on the Hank website, on the Pegasus. I don't want to say well, that. what has he got to do oh, with Pegasus? I have no idea about He's not website. part of that. I know how, I but if you understand the, the, the Internet, you could put keywords, Beetlejuice. So why do you think yes, Doug so has a, 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 I'm gonna tell you. A, a gripe with you? I'm going to tell you. Okay, go ahead. Now I had my brother call because Beetlejuice wasn't getting calls. I was like, what's going on here? I had my brother call Bob Krapasis from Pegasus and ask, is Beetlejuice... Can I book Beetlejuice? And he says, no, we no longer book Beetlejuice. Okay. But he had his picture up there. Now he's pushing. Or he maybe goes, you have an argument with this guy, Bob. I have no, no idea. I think he's angry at the nothing, wrong people. Yeah, I have nothing to do with this. Zero. I've never heard of anything about this. And if you told me about this four years ago when it I'll first came it up, up, I would have made it, I would have fixed it. Howard, I could, I could shed a little light on this because the guys from E, they gave me three examples of what actually happened on the show on, on, okay. in here and then what ended up on E. Right. The first example was... Uh, you gave out an 800 number, which they don't give out That's on TV, fine. That's and fine. then said jollydwarf.com. That's 100%. what ran on it. Okay. That. The second example was Beetlejuice was going to be at a comedy club in Pittsburgh literally the next night, so they cut it out. Because I understand the show that, but when you say, when Howard goes, meet Beetlejuice at the comedy club tomorrow night, for more info, go to jollydwarf.com. Cock that car, Johnny JoJo's comedy club. For more info on Beetle, go to Jolly They just showed me an, they just me an example of that. that. Oh, one or two examples. Come okay. on. I'm just, I only know what they Beetle showed Beetle has been on 50 times. He's maybe got eight or pl eight, eight to ten plugs. Beetle, is that true? And you know what? It Four was. of them were true. when Hank was, was alive true, and Hank was on the show with him and you he had to. Well, so it'd be blatant. You would be able to see it. And the other one is when I went and Let's hear his explanation. I don't lie, Howard. All right. You can ask me anything Isaac, what is the explanation? If you think we're not taking this seriously, we are. And I'll tell you. I know you are doing this on purpose. 
We had our you are 100% basic, jealous of Can I talk now? Can I talk now? Sure. Can I talk now? Isaac is jealous. Hold it. 100% jealous. Hold it. 100% jealous. Isaac is jealous. I am. I am jealous. Isaac is jealous of Beetlejuice. 100%. Hold it. 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 You are? No, I'm not. Every oh, time God. you come in with the camera, what do you say to Beetlejuice? What's up, Beetlejuice? No, 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 no. What's the matter, Beetlejuice? You look very upset today. You put his frame of mind in a bad, you put his mind in a bad frame of mind, and you get him negative um, for the show. No, you I do ask him why he's upset time. because he's crying every time he every comes in here. Every time you do it. Can I talk now? What does Beetlejuice think of all this? I'm telling you, what do you do it every time, Can I get a word in? Let us talk. Okay. We are taking this very seriously. We actually had our entire East staff yesterday research all the Beetlejuice shows that he was on. It took hours. Okay, had go multiple ahead. guys on it. Since Beetle has been coming on the show, there have been about 33 e-shows, okay, approximately. Probably more I, than any guest. I, ever. now, exactly. you're, you're you angry at me, Less okay? plugs than any, Sean, any guest. you're I'm angry like, at me. So you're saying, I've, I've cut three of those shows. I got all okay? the shows three. right here. That's you 9%, go through them? okay? And a majority of those shows have plugs in them. I have the tapes in the e-control room if you want to see them. them do. do you want to see them? What about 85% hey, of them? Talking to the mic. Right. That's not 80? true. I'm telling you, Howard, I'm not making what this stuff What about up, us putting on Beetlejuice 30 30 30 30 30 30 What about us putting I'll on a Beetlejuice detector detector billboard test. show? This now, is not in my mind. Oh, wait, I'm not Sean, Sean, he's been on 33 times, and they say the majority of the times he has a plug on Not true, Howard. I'll show you tapes. How many shows have a Beetlejuice plug? I don't have an exact number, but it's more than make a number. Can I ask you a question? At least half of them. I would say 100% of the show, 100% of the time, when we could have put a plug in, we did. Too much. I can't hear you, Doug. When a plug was able to be put in the show, 100% It can always fit. It, it can always true. fit. I don't care what you say. You know what? A plug, could, a three-second plug. You're not a television fit. producer. Now, can I go to the paperwork right yes, here, Yes, go to the paperwork. I'm going to impress you right now. All right, impress me. Oh, impress him. Okay, I will. Is that a okay, Bill O'Reilly? Okay, I'm like a tough guy, but... No. I'm not a... Jesus Christ. Can I go to the Talk into the microphone. Okay, November... Uh, November 4th, Jillian Grace. Do you all remember her? Yes. yes. She came in on the show. Jillian Grace. Here we go. Couldn't remember her website. Uh, Jillian dot dot. Wait, wait, wait. Jillian dot. Wait, org backslash. Wait, Jillian dot. Took her about two minutes. That fit because that's we funny. needed what time. What happened? We needed time. That fit. Wait, wait. It's that funny. She it's came funny in the calendar three times. Sean. She came Sean. in. Hey, hey, Baldy, listen. Hey, come on, dude. <laughs> listen to me. Listen. I thought we were friends, man. Listen to me. Oh, I'm getting annoyed but because Sean, I know you're a little out of line. Too, no, no, Howard, I'm getting really they, upset. They felt it was funny that the girl didn't know her own okay, website. Okay, June that, Howard, that November funny? 9th, the girl came in. Same girl that we were on the show with when we plugged our our uh, our uh, our video that was to make stores. That never aired. Was that not important? Was that not important that our, our video we was going to be hidden the in stores? Show? And she came on twice. She got on twice before Security. our easing there. I'm, I'm not following you. I'm yeah. not following you. Security. I think you're angry, but I don't really know. Well, I think you don't know, know why you're angry. You're lying. Two people. Anybody did could that gang show, up. Did that show about the video have tons of clips and montages of the... No. Con How many times have we showed Beetlejuice Uncensored? How many times have we showed Beetlejuice Uncensored? Isaac. Isaac. Many times. Isaac. Isaac. We showed a billboard. Isaac. I mean... Isaac. Isaac. We Sean? came in in July with the video, the purple video that was to hit stores. It's November. It's still not on. The girl that it's was on us. It's not our obligation to put it on, Sean. That's not important? It, it's you, not our you obligation. You yourself said, when Howard read the letter, you yourself said, we never come in to promote stuff. So then when we do, why won't it hit the air? I didn't say that. I said a lot that of the times. That shows you we're not greedy. And when I, I said we do the most for the show, you know what? We do. I didn't and say I'll that. And I'll show you reasons we do. People come to me all the time and try to make me go back to Howard. And you know what? I tell them to go F themselves. Good. I never backdoor. That's, a, I smart, got, that's cool. a smart move. Okay? And I'll show you proof here, Howard, of people emailing me. I'll give you $10,000 if you go on and have Beatles say this. And, and I say, no, well, I'm not going to do that. If you were that. that kind of guy, And I do that all the time. I wouldn't I'm know you're that. that. People coming off the streets and tell Baba Bowie, they're going to get naked. Let's take some calls and find okay, out. Okay, and they don't get naked. Sean, and you still leave the I'm plug on. I'm on your on. side. And you still and leave their plug we, on. When we they have a lot of Beetlejuice plugs on the show. And said he was going to get naked. And they didn't get naked, but their plug made the air on the E-Channel. And you're telling me There's, I'm making this stuff up. Plug, then, I'm not making this stuff up, Doug. You're laughing. I'm not making Sean, it up. Sean, when I'm the biggest laughing, stars are on our show, there's no guarantee that they get a plug. I'm nuts. Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't always get a plug. Wayne's brothers don't get plugs. Robin weigh in on this if she wants. You want to hear from Robin? She has no right to say that behind my back, okay? Because she goes out of her way to come into the green room and give me a kiss and a hug and ask me how things are going every time. Then she's a phony. That's what she is. Come on. Oh, dear. And this if I get kicked ugly. off the show, Howard, I don't really care. I love you. You did everything for me. Take a deep breath. I got we a don't problem with you two people show. right there because you're phony 
and I, I'll be guaranteeing you fell lie detector and test them. Hey, minute. let's take it. This what was the question? Second. What was the if lie? If they're oh trying God. to intentionally. Do you intentionally hold back our plugs on each channel because you are 100% Jealous. You're that paranoid. Would be my you're, you're paranoid. And I, yeah, I'm not a paranoid schizophrenic. You're paranoid. You're, something's up Isaac, with you. Isaac, you're a moron. Dude, you must think on. I'm a moron. And I, I like you, and I, I kind of feel sh- sorry for you. Don't like me. Don't, that doesn't change Fine, my I don't way like you. Why do you feel sorry? For because he's what? delusional. What else they do? I could sue the company. He, he's which I would he's making up some sort of conspiracy. I could sure. sue the company because sure, of what they did to me. You can sue the company. I would never sue you. What did they do? When you pointed to the company, I'm going to show you. When well, I they called don't, they up, don't sign an agreement when that I they call, owe you a I didn't sign an agreement. Charlie. Listen, no, no. no but this when is I called up, yeah. I got proof on that now. I'm going to scare you right now. Oh, I'm scared already. Who? Did I call up and leave a message? Or did you videotape me on the answer machine and put it on speaker? You videotaped me. I didn't give you permission to videotape the camera when you press speaker you when I was yelling the other day, Howard. I swear on my son's life. Right. I'm not sure what, what we're talking, talking about. about. You Something you played on the air. I do the most for the show and this and right. that. They put me on speaker. When? Took Where? The camcorder and taped me talking. I didn't call up and leave that message. Okay? What message? I'm not that dumb. The message we played on the air? Okay, you know? Howard. Right. So they picked. I didn't, I didn't know I was being right. videotaped. Or Taped. Right, right. That right there is illegal. No, it's not. not. No, it's me not in New York as long for as not letting me know I'm being taped. taped. No, 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 no. He doesn't have to do that as long as they know. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm the wrong. Right, but but that's sneaky. They Sue pretended us. like I called no, up. Yeah, up. right. But uh, that's but, uh, a sneaky. That's not. That's not. But a they man. asked you permission afterward, right? Didn't they say to you, "Hey, we want to play it"? No, they never told me. Did you guys ever ask? You never asked me. If I want, which, if I want which, you to play I'm that. Excuse which message? The one with the one that where Sean says you guys aren't playing his commercial. You never asked me. No. I didn't okay, but what's this well, argument over? Is this over plugs or is this it's just picking at us? It's over everything, okay? The way you're trying to backdoor me and play games with me. I got so it's many things sure. Sure, I'm no, like the biggest Beetlejuice true. fan. I don't know where your, your uh, insecurities come from. You have to work 50 from. hours a week. And you know what? If I was in your position, I seen Beetlejuice and making the money he was, you know, I get a little annoyed, a little envious, a little jealous. And then maybe that's what you are, true, okay? True, true. Because 100% you are cutting my, his, I actually, his uh, stuff how? out. How? We're, my we're, video just hit stores. Why hasn't June? it been on? The know. calendars. That's a big one. The yes. calendars, Isaac, look me in the face. I'm you looking right at you, baby. Two hours prior Throw in the microphone. microphone. You didn't remember if you left it in or not. How can you remember? You know why? Because you were sneaky. Oh. And you don't, yeah. So this is more about games. Isaac Sean, being jealous of Beetlejuice. Sean, and that's you don't it. know what goes on. Of course goes into jealous cutting when a show. somebody's making ten times the amount of money you are and you're working flying behind a camera. Okay? okay. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Sean. And this is the truth, Howard. Well, Sean, let me give you a shot. So so you don't even want to be on the show, show if, if that's the way we're going to be treated no, by this. I don't treat think... You, like what? I'm treating you, you with nothing but respect. You haven't said one solid truth yet, honestly, to be honest with you. Nothing you said is... Doug, you are so you, stupid. You know that? You're, I'm stupid. Look at me look like at that and tell me the truth. You're crazy. Okay. I'm crazy? right now, you're absolutely out of your mind crazy because you are totally... Out of line right now. I'm 100% totally saying nothing in line, is and you're trying to make the me look like the first thing. Cra- no, you know, Sean, I like you. I told you I like you. You should. Because How many I'm the most loyal person. What? Anybody in here will come. You don't know us. anything that goes on behind the show when, we, oh, when no? we're off the air. And wait, let me finish my point, dude. Yeah. How, you know how many times I personally pitch Beetlejuice for segments Good. or say, let's bring Beetlejuice in? Why? Because I hate him. Because I'm jealous of him. I want to bring him in. And do you know how many times the e, sh- the e crew and the K Rock crew is personally taking care of Beetlejuice when he's been at events? And I'll yeah. tell you one. I'll, I'll give you this one piece of information, though. And this is really true, Sean. I've heard this for I can years. Have my people call we treat him like a son. Hold on, hold on. Have him call and nothing's going to hold up. And I, I don't. I don't. I have nothing against you, Howard. I no, no, no. You. I understand. We have nothing I, against I would you. I'm an old lady for you. I, I don't think. I'd do that, anything for you. Listen, I've had E come to me. You got a sore throat back there. I've had E come to me and say, Beetlejuice is the lowest rated thing on E. Oh, and so I why said, we're not hold it, hold it, hold it. Make it easy. I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something. I don't. I say to them, I, I don't, don't care. That anyway, I, it doesn't matter. I get emails all the time. Where's Beetlejuice? He right. hasn't been on. Where so is let he? me tell you something. All these years, they've told me that, and I say to them, I don't care. I like Beetlejuice. He's funny. And they, Everybody and, does. Uh, well, wait a second. And they say to us, we do too. We're going to take a shot with Beetlejuice. Always. That's the truth. Thirty-three shows. Thirty-three okay. shows. I think it was more than that. To that be sounds low. Because actually. my belief I, I is, like 50. my belief is, that Beetlejuice. Just needs the right kind of exposure on E, and people will come to watch him more and more when they see him on there. So I am very much behind the Beetlejuice phenomenon, making sure that he gets airtime, and we keep building up his shows. So you have to know that E has come to me and said, we're behind Beetlejuice. So I do know that for true. 
Okay, when I no, said... To, that's I, all I know about any okay, of Okay, no problem. When I said yeah. to Isaac, We've Isaac, also why, gone to his house and done a Cribs. We've exactly. I do the party. most for sure. I let you into my home. and gave you a free commercial. I let you into my home. I billboard. give you videotapes of the crazy things we do. Okay? Yeah, and we air it. I let you we, in our limo. We drive you in our limo. And we I'm just it. saying, when I, I don't do these things to say I did them. I do them because we love to. We're appreciative of that. <laughs> but when you back me into a Bless corner and leave Bless a message. Back, to back on the, the only thing Mike. I Get on the mic. Get on the microphone. You know what? It's kind of true. Get All on right. Sean, Mike. Sean. All right. No, Howard, I mean, there's so much more I have to say, but they're going to continuously it. talk say over it. me. We're not talking over a, you. It's just a waste. Well, I mean, it comes down to one question. Are they doing that? Yes. You know, no, no, 100%. I, I wouldn't think they they would do You that. wouldn't think they I think you do have a lot of people here. You're not on the I think you do have a lot of people who are fans of Beetlejuice. And I actually we're the biggest fans. I do think Doug and Isaac are fans. We're the biggest fans. You know what I think? Oh, that's not true. Is. What is happening? Well, I, who I, took I care of Beetlejuice in Vegas you know, when he was see, crying? When he couldn't, somebody, when he didn't know where to go? When he had no handlers with him? 100 Who took I care of him? Who took care of him? I could see through your eyes. Do you know what liar, happened Isaac. the day after the last show in Vegas when he was you crying in the Hard Rock? Who took I care of him? I see the lie in your eyes. When people were just laughing at him? You're phony. Who took care of him? Sean, you're serious. You're a phony person. Who took care of him? You're phony. 100. You're serious. I'm 100. You know, I thought I liked you. I don't like you. You're gonna accuse me of that. Yeah, I'm going to oh, beat you yeah. up. You what, are we going to fight? Yeah, go to jail again, Sean. Go Come on, cut again. the crap. Yeah. Cut the crap. What are you going to do? You liar. You want to, like... Everybody want... said you're a user of Hank. I'm, I, this guy I'm lives a user of Hank. I didn't know. Okay? Well, no, no need to say that. The beat has I dignity. Do. You wouldn't do that for Hank. <laughs> do what? Do you what? You used Hank for his friggin' money. Okay? Yeah, I use him you for his money. You keep swallowing because you know it's true. You are such... No, I'm, I'm not. I wish I, I was... Like, like, you know what I feel like and I'm smacking Go ahead. Come you. hit me. Come on. No, yeah. no, Get yourself on, on, thrown up the show Because I know what I'm saying is true, and everybody's trying to play um, it against me. No. Isaac, you're such a phony. You could see right through you. Sean, Why don't you... you Richie, can you see right through you? Richie. Talk to Richie. Sean, you're out of your mind. Yeah, Richie's your man. Yeah, Richie's your man. You're out of your mind. Richie knows everything I say behind the scenes. Ask Richie any question you want. Are you trying to make enemies? All right, let me hear what Richie has to say. Ask Richie any question you want want about me and what I do you're off the air behind the camera. see it through in your phone. eyes. You're a phony. Richie, what are you doing? I'm a phony. You're a mental patient. You and him are both phony. You should be back in jail. All right, let's see what Richie has to say. Sean, 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 sit. Sean, come on. Sit down. Sean, sit. Sean, Sean, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. thrown off forever? Sean, sit down. Sean, leave, 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 leave for now. I'm going to leave. Isaac, leave. Everyone leave. You, Isaac, you're just as phony. Everyone leave. Shut up. Get out. Everyone out. Now it's Richie. my turn to talk. Sean, for me. Meet me outside, pal. Sean, for me. Sean. Sean, look at me. Calm down. Sean, look at me. I'm crazy. I know what the hell I'm saying. And he's Richie, not going to stand ahead. there and call me a nut. Sean, look at me. I'm your friend, okay? Do me a favor, please. Yeah, and you know what? And you want to be honest? You want to be honest too, Rich? Sean, I'm your friend. You tell me the truth? What, what do you really want to know? Ask on? me a question. Have I ever said I that wanna, there's a conspiracy? I don't want to put you out there. I'm Have I bust, ever Rich. said there's a conspiracy? Have I ever said that they've done that to you, Sean? Have I ever said that but to you? But have you told me... A, have I ever said that to you? You never strictly said it, but you went around exactly. it, Rich. I, I never you said, said it, I hear what you're what saying, Rich Sean. Say? I know what you're what saying. What did Richie say? Tell me what I... Sean. I love you, Rich. That's why sure, I'm not you know I love you, Sean. I'm not going to go out there like that. Sean, I've, I've always told you, whenever I cut the shows that I'm sense. directly involved with, will make I always put your plug in there whenever... Exactly. If it fits but why perfectly, can't they make it but fit? If it, but it, com, no matter what, fits no matter when you do it. Howard always says when you leave it, that's beautiful. If it's dated, we can't do it. Com. But you can take out jo go to Johnny JoJo's restaurant and say. All right, here's what I Johnny think. Do I've heard it all. There's so much stuff. I've heard it all. Now I'm ready to. Yet. I'm ready to decide. You're gonna make a ruling. I'm gonna make a ruling. All right, can I just go? You don't have to. I'm yourself? done. Because you haven't heard nothing. Listen to me. I'm gonna make a ruling. I'm gonna make a ruling. This will this will solve it. You want to fight or you want to solve things? I don't You're have a manager. Like I said, I have nothing. You're Beetlejuice's manager. We got to resolve this, right, B? B, uh, you're a man, right, B? Now. What do you, you think? See through liars, Howard. You're the most loyal person to them, everybody. Both of them are liars because they, in the way, they are liars. You they didn't want to tell the truth. B, you how feel you they were lying? They lied. They didn't want to tell the truth. You can see that they're standing there lying to you, and then I'm telling you the truth. I'm trying to just hear what B said. Just because I get upset means I'm not. They They lying to you. They don't want to tell the truth. They lying. They lying to you. You they can see it. Go truth. back to you jail. You can see it, right, B? I can see it right through them. They lying. All right. But sure, listen to what Howard has to say. I am. He's I'm lying. He's talking, Howard. You know what I mean? Dad, I just wanted lying. to hear Beatles point yeah. of view in this. You know, he's lying. <laughs> he's lying. Yeah. He's, you feel he's lying. lying? Both of them. They're lying. All of them. Both of them. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what I think we should do. Beetlejuice and Sean are friends of the show. Yes. 
I like we Chicken Juice and I like yeah. Sean. They're good guys. Enjoy them every time they're here. Best, best guest ever, ever, arguably. Best guest ever. I feel the best guest. Yeah. I'm too Peter loyal. Ah. Boy, are loyal. You're loyal. Everyone's not loyal. Really well, all, not right, to, all right, quiet, quiet, What you got to remember as a businessman. We appreciate everything you've done. Wait, listen to but me. But I don't do it for, to say I did it, Robin. I do it because I no. it pisses me off. And I know how it has nothing to do with it because he doesn't know what air. Well, let me hear what the audience thinks. What is it, Captain Jenks, before I make my ruling? Hey, good yeah. morning, Howard. Yes. One thing I want to bring up is I've been on the show for over 15 years now, and I never expected to be on the show. And Beetlejuice gets a hell of a lot of attention on the show. And it's just like you should just be happy. Well, with, you're not with, funny. Goodbye. Hey, hey, kiss my ass, you ass. Yeah, okay, come down here. Yeah, kiss my ass. Come down here, James. You're, you're, you're just crying. You're not I mean, even it's like funny. You're an Beetlejuice idiot. You're gets a lot of attention. Out. Listen, Beetlejuice gets a lot of attention on the show. And he I mean, deserves it. And I mean, it's like everybody gets their equal amount of attention. You shouldn't complain so much. I mean, Complaining? Beetlejuice is, is very high profile on the show. He makes a lot of money at his appearances. Why are you sitting around bitching about it? No, this is the first complaint I've ever had, Janks. You know, there's two types of audiences. There's a radio audience and an E audience. We need the E audience, okay? But what I'm saying is you're getting attention anyway. I, I don't get anyway, I don't get on the anyway, E show all the time. Whatever. I don't get on the E show all the time. You don't see me crying. Funny. I no, mean, let me, let me like, you're, you're right, let me, let me right. that's, not, that's just muddying up the waters of, again. Really, well, what listen, does he do? Here's the thing you got to understand, Sean. I know when Beetlejuice is on the radio show, we have... Lots of time to do lots of plugs, so there's no problem there. Yeah, I no always problem. try to help people choose out. I don't care about well, it. Well, I think that's what you're talking but about. You're talking yeah, about no, I'm saying I don't care about the plugs you give me on the radio because you give me so many of them. Right. I'm talking about the E Channel. All right, let me tell you about the E Channel. We deserve them when there's another audience. All right, let me tell you about the E Channel. So the E Channel takes these shows, and I don't sit there. I'm not there editing the shows. I don't really. Don't know. I don't. I don't have anything to do with exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. And Beetlejuice is a guy I like putting on E. And right. he likes putting them on, and Beetlejuice is a good guy. Now, if you have a beef that, and as Bill O'Reilly says, what's the beef, sir? Yeah. And he said it many times. If you have a beef, here's, here's some things I should, I should have you think about. When you're on E, regardless of whether the plug is up there, it's like going on Letterman. Sometimes Dave doesn't even let you plug. I mean, one of my complaints about the show is you can't plug. He can't plug anything. At the end, he sometimes throws a mention and he does it over the applause. You can't even get a plug in. Seeing Beetlejuice on TV, giving him exposure nationally, when somebody walks into a video store and they see Beetlejuice, they know immediately what that is and who he is. And there's a tremendous amount of promotional value. So you got to relax. It's building a brand. So the first thing you got to understand is when you don't hear JollyDwarf.com or Beetlejuice has a new DVD out, it doesn't mean you're not getting promotion. So that's something that should calm you down. No. You should remember that Beetlejuice is being part of the show. It's like Artie's putting out a DVD. You don't need any plugs. People are going to walk into the DVD store. They're going to go, whoa, there's Artie from the Howard Stern Show. But we what I was going to say, Howard, because this is now, what, what Sean isn't getting. When they sit to look at the universe of material, we do things very long form on the radio show. Right. When they go back into the E-room, they have to take the best 22 minutes. That's true. That now, they can find. I hear what you're saying so also. So take the best so now, 2157. All right. <laughs> well, wait a second. I also hear what you're saying. You want to get your plugs out on E. Not even the plug, Howard. The, the, the Jolly video, Dwarf. No, the video that we just had put in stores. Why wouldn't that make it? When that same girl that held in her pee, that's when we were plugging that thing. I'll She's tell been you on why. Twice since I can then. guess why. I'm not, I'm not I mean, in on the not conversation. Fair, I'll Howard. tell you why. She plugged the calendar three times. I'll tell you why, probably. I would guess. She won $10,000. I mean, we don't ask for gifts. We don't ask for nothing. I would guess that if it's a case where it's... People are sick of seeing the same old girls all the time. That's, I mean... Well, okay. But you might say that, but older. they get the highest ratings. Unfortunately, like that's the way it works. Pretty girls get high ratings. Unbelievably so. And they lie to you, Howard. They come up and say they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and they don't. And you know what pisses me off? It's still their website still makes the e-channel they just jerked uh, you around so what i'm saying is but listen to me i don't feel rewarded. jerked i don't feel jerked you shouldn't around. be rewarded for lying to you lying on tv is interesting to watch see how you get worked up by it no. everyone a girl does. who's going to come up and get naked pisses you off when she doesn't so that's that's and she interesting now still gets a plug to her website that's right is that fair yeah it's fine because i'm getting something out of it and they're getting something out of it i mean you don't I have got, to worry got, about I that. I got emails here of people trying to tell me to go around your back and jerk you. You do what on. you want. And Let me ask one thing. You always do what you want. Sure. Oh, I don't Sean, tell. Excuse, excuse me. Is Sean saying that the uh, show that Beetlejuice did where he talked about his DVD Hitting has not stores. aired? 
That didn't air, and that was back in July. All but right. that girl who won the ten thousand yeah, dollars for peeing was on not, twice already. It's not oranges and apples. There was a reason, probably, that they haven't aired that show. And by the way, I don't want to what? say it on the air. Do, do, I'll, t I'll tell you something. He was on the last five percent, and the only one that aired was with his family. I know, and you know why? Sometimes they're not highly rated. I, I'm not gonna listen. You don't. We don't need to bring out all the dirty laundry. I'm trying to do right by you guys too. I don't need to say that. All right. Well, am I right, Robin? Or am I wrong? You're absolutely right. We, you know, we have a commitment to Beetlejuice. We love Beetlejuice. His yeah. his episodes are not the highest rated. And just for the record, you haven't mentioned his website once, and I'd like to do that right now. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's don't give it to me. No, no, no. Hey, 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 I'm hey, not hey, here hey, for hey, no. Hey, no, no, no. Hey, I'm not here for that. Uh, that's why I'm showing you what type of person I am. I'm not here to plug because I'm not plug hungry like every son of a bitch that comes on here and plugs the hell out of Howard, wears hats, wears shirts. We don't do that, Robin. So that's why I'm saying why when we do want something on the air, why doesn't it make it? One hand watches the other. Do you understand? I don't care if our ratings are low. You should still put it out knowing that we do the most for the job. My priority is the TV show, not, no, not your no, website, no, 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 jollydwarf.com. You came out and said, do I think there's a conspiracy? And yes, I do. Well, you and know, yes, I do, and you call me nuts. Well, let me say something. Okay, let me let me wrap this up, Sean. Nuts. Sean, let me wrap this up. Mad. Sean, look at me. Let me. Let, Sean, look at me. Let me wrap this up. Here's what I think, because I hear you. This is bull. Well, you're being angry. You're and not no, Howard, I ain't angry. Are you listening, no. Sean? I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset that you don't understand where I'm coming from. You didn't hear what I have to say yet. No. All right, then I'll stop. No, I'm just Sean, saying. Sean, Sean. Sean doesn't have his headphones on. There's Sometimes you got to know when to stop. There's a school of thought. A lot of people in the hallway are saying this. People, not necessarily people that work for you, but everybody that's here. And the thought is, where would you be without the show? If you I didn't just, have the show, okay, no, probably. That's the wrong attitude. Well, I said if it wasn't no, for Howard, we'd be nowhere. That's the wrong so attitude, the Gary. Show. Gary, that's the wrong right. attitude. Because a lot of people are saying. I'm going to say but something. I'm not saying that. That's not necessary. I don't need to hear that. I like Beetlejuice on my show, and I but believe Beetlejuice should have a big Without career. Howard, be nowhere. Sean, look at me. So tell your I think that Beetlejuice should have a big career, and anyone who does my show, I would like to help. But I and as Sean much as I unless... feel, as much as I feel. Where would uh, Beetlejuice be without First of all, me? I made about where would I be without? Cars. Where would I be without Beetlejuice? I, I made over three thousand. You're not listening cars. to me. You're not listening. This I'm about to give you something. To I'm just telling him. Where would I be without Howard? I'd be He's making three thousand dollars. Let me cars. let me finish talking. Right. Everyone's got to stop now and let but me wait talk. A minute. Let but, me say something to you because you need to say this to Sean. No, if you don't Sean mind, I'd like to say something. Yeah, Sean I've been saying that. And he he's only going to be happy if he hears somebody agree with his conspiracy theory. Let's yeah. forget that and talk about what we're going to do in the future. Sean, look at me. Look at me. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So here it is. Here's the thing. I hear what you're saying. And you want... Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But do you understand what I'm saying? You're insulting There's me a difference now. Between I'm not retarded. No, I know, but you're saying <laughs> you don't right. understand. You keep giving me... I said... I never said I didn't understand. I hear what you're saying. Do you hear me saying I hear what you're saying? Yeah. You've been heard. Okay. Okay. As far as your theories about a conspiracy against you, I don't believe that's true. That's my first thing. Okay. Secondly, what I'm hearing is a guy who's very hurt. You feel you're loyal to the show, which I happen very to loyal. agree. Just listen to me. Yeah. You don't even have to say anything. It's going to be the easiest segment you ever did. Okay. <laughs> Look at Howard. Get off right. your notes. Right. Get off the notes. I don't right. care about him. I heard everything you got to say. Oh, that's a lot. All right. Ten pages. You've done a lot for the show. And Beetlejuice is my man. And the fact of the matter is... We're going to continue doing a lot for you, and you're going to do a lot for us, and everyone's appreciative here on the show. I'm going to ask the E-Crew to be more sensitive when they cut the shows that Beetle gets his plug in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask them to leave in a plug for a dated appearance, but what I'm going to tell them to do is when Beetle comes in to plug something, that somewhere in the show that ends up in there. While mm -hmm. maybe the 15 plugs I do on the radio can't end up in there, Maybe one or two can. Exactly. So we're gonna but pay also, we're gonna pay close attention to that because that's what you're here for too. It's yeah. nothing wrong with wanting a plug. And your loyalty to this show should be rewarded. You've been heard and more attention to detail will be paid. I've been Let hurt me too. say something else. All right. And how it, like you said, you give me fifteen plugs during the radio. One of them has to fit in the E channel. You say them different ways. One of them doesn't have to fit. <laughs> we're gonna see if we can make it fit. How's that? One other thing. Sometimes the shows that Beetlejuice does here on the radio are not going to become e-shows. Well, when you're promoting a product, to, it should. 
Because we're, but, promo, we're promo, when when Jackass comes on, there's always makes it. No, if you're videos. if you're Why feeling that every be, hurt, wait a hurtful. second, it's not hurtful. If every really Beetlejuice is. appearance you think should be on TV, no, it's not going to happen. No, I don't think everyone should All be. Right. Some of them we can't put on TV because for various reasons. We don't have to go into it here. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, some of them can, and the ones that end up on TV, I can assure you. I will ask my e-crew to pay particular attention to the fact that you feel you're being slighted, definitely, and that your plug should make it in there. And Howard, when I when I when you say they shouldn't make the show, you're right. If not all his appearances make it, but when the ones that do make it, that's when we right. Were plug in a product, right? That product should at least make it. That's right. I agree. In, you're a agree. In a product, everybody's in agreement. Show, I am in agreement with you. Show. Look at me. So that's not fair. So Howard. so wait, what isn't fair about what I just said? No, I'm saying what I'm saying. All right. So you were heard. And I'm telling you, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to hold them accountable. So why fight? You won. We're fixing that. Because I want you to know that I'm not crazy. I didn't, what I'm did saying. I ever say you were crazy? No. But I said I didn't is. agree with you about one thing. I don't believe there's a conspiracy here against I you. Really do. But I hear what you're saying, and I'm going to look into it, and you guys should get a plug. There also always should be That's a plug. That's it. You win. You're yeah, a winner. I shouldn't have had to go through this craziness and well, let people sometimes see how you crazy do. I am to get a point you, across. You're saying you're crazy. I'm not. Oh, they are. Well, well maybe they feel have... that way, but that's their problem. Well, I feel they're in a conspiracy. All right. That's okay. That's something you got to let go of, though. Because it doesn't do you any good. You're a friend of the show, right, Beat? Does you... that resolve it for now you, Now look Sean? at Beat's upset. Now Beat is upset. See he... how easy it is to make him upset? Yeah, Beat. That's what Isaac does every time he comes in. Beat, are you upset? Beats yes, upset now. He was Beat in here, upset. he was happy, and now look at what's going you on. You know the whack pack talk. thing they did? Everybody was begging me to do it I, in California. Sean, I didn't do Sean, it. Sean, you can do whatever you want. Well, I'm just telling you. That's the type of person I am, Howard. I know. Listen to me. I don't know what part of this you're not hearing. But I am telling you, you've been heard. Do you feel that a res a, this has been resolved? Not really. Oh. Really? No, by you, yeah, but by what's going to happen? What do you no. care? What do you care about what they because want? Because I don't, I still don't think they're going to go out of their way to. What to, did I just say to you? Yeah, but Howard's now. Wait, 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 wait. Did you hear anything I said? Of course I did. What I say? You said that you're going to make sure that everything that you want happens, or at least try to make it happen. I if said fits, the next Beetlejuice fit. appearance, and you come in plugging something, I will say to the E crew, can you make sure that Beetle's plug gets into the TV show? And what more would you want? I've acknowledged your contribution. I feel now that they you've realize been, it's Howard's priority. I feel that you've been slighted in some way. You would like a plug. You deserve one, I think. I think you're loyal to the show. If they're overlooking that and not giving you special consideration, I'm going to make sure they do. What part is it? What part do you feel oh, disadvantaged? I understand. Can I just ask you a question? The part yes. when, when Beetle was on from the Calendars, and that show actually made the air, but the calendars didn't, and we okay. strictly came in to promote the calendars. Right. What's what is just that? Just uh, I don't happens. know, but we're going to go move forward, aren't we? <laughs> are we going to move forward, or are yeah. we going to look backward? Uh, I just want to ask you that show that when I was promoting my videos, that sales didn't do that good in the store, okay? Because it never sh aired on the TV like everybody else's flies across the screen, calendars and books and everything. Right. And ours didn't even make the air. That was in July. I'll can ask you about see if it. they can show that because I know Doug. I mean, Richie called me and told me he already cut the show, so it's already done. It's just All sitting right. on the shelves for when? Well, if they haven't aired it. There's a reason they haven't well, aired. Once, it. I mean, we, we don't air. Some shows don't air for a year. But if our video is going to be in stores, you always do it for other people. But I, mean, I do it I, on the radio. Hold it, I, Gary. No, okay. I did. I, I'm listen to me. I I'm plugged your video. Me. Listen to me. I plugged your video on the radio. I can't guarantee you a time slot on E, and I can't guarantee you it's going to be done in a timely way. I can't. E has a schedule. I understand that, and that, and that's yeah. why when I went, and I can't give you that. That's why it's been happening. That's I can't give you that. I can't give you that promise that as soon as Beetle just comes in here, within a certain amount of time, he'll end up on E. I can't. I'm not going to do that. That's E's business. They tape the shows and decide when they'll air. And they do have a commitment to you. Yeah. You know and Robin that. called me nuts. Therefore, she has a presumption about me, which is why maybe our stuff isn't airing. Because the I think in the heat and the heat of anger, you said some things and they said some things. The last five appearances. Put it behind you. Only one made it. Listen to me. But Chauncey. Put it behind you. Move forward. Beetlejuice's appearance now. Make sure he gets his plug. Make sure it's on TV. If this uh, show that hasn't aired yet on the DVD means that they have other shows they wanted to air beforehand. That's their decision. you got lots of plugs on the radio. You're going to get more plugs on the TV show moving forward. I'm going to look into it and make sure that you get your plugs. 
What part of that sounds bad to you? Peter, where are you going? Where are you going, Beat? Beat, where are you going? Where are you going, Beat? I don't think it sounded good to Beat. Beatle doesn't like it. He doesn't want to hear it. He walked out. He's had enough of it. Beatle just, just left the room. <laughs> he didn't like what you were saying. I don't know. Am I saying something wrong, Sean? No, but you know how easy... No, you didn't do nothing wrong. But that shows you how easy it is to get Beatle in a bad mood, which Isaac tries... Well, Beatle sees you're upset. ...to do every time. You could go to every every episode, and he goes, Beatle, what's the matter? You look sad. Are you depressed? And he gets Beatle in a bad mood. He does it every time. A lot of maybe times... Maybe unconsciously, but well, he is... the show bad for... Jealous. Maybe he shouldn't come on then anymore. You can huff and puff, but it's the truth. Who's huffing and puffing over Sean, there? Sean, no one's huffing and puffing. Nobody's... Who's huffing and puffing? <laughs> No, oh, that's Fred, Fred makes noise makes through the whole show. Through the entire show. Fred is mentally ill. Sean, sure, focus on what we're I talking about. I may be about. mentally ill, yeah, but Sean, Howard. I was not doing anything of the sort. Now, I think this is a good resolution. Can I, can I what, just, what, what, what has been bad about this? They're going to be conscious about getting the plugs on. I sense you're still hurt, but I'm I don't know. I'm very hurt. Because well, I know that I'm not 100% taken seriously. And by who? I know people think... It, Do, I, am I taking you seriously? I don't know. You know what, what, what I think? What part of this don't you see me taking you seriously? Like that you really think that there isn't nothing going on. And it really, I don't even really care is. if there is. I'll look into it. And so is, it. Howard. I wish you knew how much it is. Let's say it is. And Let's there's somebody that works here, right. I will not throw the name under the bus. Two people that worked here. Well, They're telling you something's going on? 100%, Howard. All right. So let's assume you're right. Now you got me looking into it. And I mean, Robin... Rosinski uh, called me a nut. Therefore, she has You've something You've said some me. things, and she said some things. People say things her. in anger. She asked me if I thought it was a conspiracy. I said, yeah. All right. Is, but is I'm that, telling you, I'm telling you, whether it's a conspiracy or not, moving forward, when Beetlejuice makes an appearance, I can't guarantee you he'll get on right away. I can't. I know. It doesn't the work that way. shows didn't get on. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. they're not going to get on, especially when you don't like somebody. No. Uh, everybody likes not you. Yeah. If we have a hot show, yeah, we, don't care if, will be on we don't care if Hitler came in here. If he's good on the air, he gets on. Beetle's great on the air. Beetle is great on the air, and he's been on 33 times. Remember when we were selling our car? Remember? Yes, I mean, they, it's we, terrific. Oh, another, I'm just bringing up another thing. The yeah. calendars, now the car, and the video. The car we came in to promote it on eBay... You made it to the it made it to the radio. It didn't make it to the E channel. All right. So but what did I say? Did. How are we going to move forward? Did. How are we going to move forward? Why didn't that make it? If that's why I came up here. How are we going to move? How are we going to move forward, Sean? Too many straights. Sean, look at me. How are we going to move forward? It's out of my mind. Sean, you're not out of your mind. Here, I'm talking not out to of you. My mind, you said you're out of your mind. No, I said I'm not out of my mind. Oh, okay. Um, look at me. I've tried to solve your problem. Look at me. Sorry. I've tried to solve your problem. Told you I'm taking you seriously. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure that when you come on the show, you get your plug. Will every and show be on? on no. E, no. I don't you'll expect get it your to plug. be on. Okay. When you're on the radio show, we can it plug a lot. We can always And get I don't even it. want that many plugs, Howard. Understood. I'm happy to give them. And do you ever see me with hats and shirts saying Jolly Dwarf? No. no. I don't do that like other people. I know. Jackie used to do it. We don't lie and say we're going to do something and not do it and still get a plug. So, Sean, what part of this makes you still feel disadvantaged? The two nut numbskulls. That think I think he uh, shouldn't work with them anymore. No. They, think right. I'm, they think I'm stupid. They think I, I don't know what's going because on. Because this is how somebody's this... All right. Well, Howard. now you right got them. But now, now you voiced it to me directly. Howard, this is how this got this Howard. bad. And you hated it. I heard you this morning. Uh, people, you so loyal to everybody in this Saudi treatment. That's right. Well, that's the same But thing now I, I have said to you that I will look into this. And but he's now, not communicating well with the people he's working with at E. They, they they're obviously oh, Richie is, is fine. Richie's fine. Then work with Richie all the time. Yeah, I work with Richie. All right, there you go. That's all. You've been you heard. You can't do this. Your letter was not ignored. I know. And I think I've come up with a very very good solution. I do. I am very pleased, and I wish you would be too. But if you're not, I I'm understand. Pleased, I'm pleased with everything you do. All right, that's it. Then we're done. That's it. Yes, uh, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Howard, I gotta tell you, man. This guy, yeah, how, uh, Beetlejuice is probably one of the best guests to have on the show. I Absolutely. nothing but laugh I every love time. I love the and beat. He, and look what's going on. You got his jackass manager Who's talking for the past team? half hour, ruining a perfectly good opportunity here. No, he's not ruining anything. He he's came fighting. to resolve an issue. He, is, he has a feeling that he's being disadvantaged. I've heard him, and I am going to respond in the way I think is appropriate. Well, I well, I think you should put him in the robo spanker. <laughs> First, well, I think one should. more outburst and you're in the robo spanker. <laughs> yes, Eddie, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Howard? But listen, how come you always have to act like a dad to everyone that has problems? You have to be the one that solves everything. 
I am a problem solver, that's true. <laughs> One of the reasons I've lasted in radio, Robin, Sean, Artie, Fred, not Benji. <laughs> One of the reasons I've lasted in radio is because I'm able to hear people. I'm a listener. Howard. And when I hear somebody's upset, I'll listen to it. If it makes some sense to me, I will look into it. Howard, one more thing. I'll try to move the lemon because there's an Italian sausage fair right outside, and I don't think you're going to get that giant limousine to go outside. <laughs> uh, get Artie to go downstairs and pick out on, on some sausages. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll do that. All right. You all right? Pete, you okay over there, Pete? Come on, Pete. Come on, Pete. Let's have some fun. What happened? Let's have a drink. Talk to me what happened out there. Did you talk to anyone or were you silent? Beat. What happened out there? I don't there? want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. Hey, Howard, can, I just, can I just put some closure on this for no. E? No. For E? No. Oh, for e. No. Okay. I'm done. We closed it. We're good. We're closed. That's it. Because there's been a lot of bad communication going on, and that's what this is all about. Yes, Frosty. Yeah, Howard, this guy Sean is as crazy as Ronnie the limo driver. Oh, okay. No need for name calling. <laughs> hey, I got a quick question for you, too, Howard. I met Hardy. He looks real skinny. I want to know if he's doing blow again. No, it's just yes. called dedication yeah. to the gym, sir. <laughs> Look into it. I believe blow is going on. Yeah, I do. I do. I do believe you're on blow. Thanks, man. Are you serious? Yeah, I do. I think he does a little shit here. A guy can't have a fun weekend every once in a while? <laughs> My guess is yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes, sir, go ahead. That's a yes. <laughs> Joey, go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, Howard? What's up? I, I don't like the way Sean came up there and uh, flexed his muscles. So I we invited Sean. Huh? We invited Sean, and I wanted to hear yeah. what his beef was. Yeah, but I don't like the way he was flexing his muscles towards Isaac. Isaac, you got a problem. I'll come and come on I'll down. I'll Sean downstairs. I'll, oh, I'll give you a plug, John. I'll, I'll meet you downstairs. You I'll meet you downstairs right now. Yeah, well, yeah. Come downstairs. Come on right down, now. tough guy. I'll give you a plug right in your mouth. Okay, come down. I'll give you a plug. What do you look like, huh? Um, I'm about 5'6", like? 125 pounds. On, you're picking on Isaac. <laughs> you're picking on Isaac. Why don't you pick on me, huh? Okay, tough guy. What are you trying yeah, out for yeah, a roll yeah. there? Yeah. What are you trying to get yeah, in the good fellas? Come downstairs. The good you. fellas, come huh? Come downstairs. Yeah, you, what are you wearing? You sound like Tell a moron, huh? Tell me well, what you're uh, wearing, I guess, uh... Well, he's a big man. Sean is a big... How tall are you, Sean? Don't six, worry seven. about it, Howie. Sean is six foot seven. Uh, Don't worry about Howie. Muscular. I'll take, I, I'll take care of that. You couldn't, you couldn't beat time, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, yo, Beetlejuice, get rid of Sean. He's making your career worse. Yeah, yeah okay. your career is Yours are a little worse than yours. Sean, worse than anybody Beetlejuice, else. Shut by up. the end of the day, you'll have another man. Oh, Speak English. Speak English. Yeah, Speak English. Speak English. You're talking yeah, like this. It's not right. impressive. Yeah. Go back yeah. to where you came from, you yeah. white guy. Yeah, what, what are you? Muscles. What are you, huh? Isaac, Isaac, don't worry about I'll it. I'll smack you, Isaac, can't at the same time. About it. He can't do anything, right, Beetle? Isaac ain't doing nothing. You're right. boring. Get off the air. <laughs> You're boring. Yeah, I don't think you want to fight. So sure, that'll make the air. I'll make that. That'll fit. <laughs> well, okay. There's been a lot of make emotion. That fit the show. There's a lot of emotion in the room. Everybody calm down. What do you want to say, Rob? You have the last word, and then I have to take a break, and then we have to get the news. Hey, Sean, you should, you know, pipe down. Take your little coconut home and just oh, pipe down. Shut up. All right? Shut you're, you're, you're just a, like a whining little baby. If it wasn't, oh, if it wasn't, for, Beetle, if it wasn't for Beetlejuice, you'd be on the street. Oh, and if it wasn't up. for basketball, Michael Jordan would be pumping gas. You are a bomb, What are you trying Sean? to say? What I'm going to call jollydwarf.com, and I'm going to toss you and oh, Beetlejuice. You toss you're Beetle bomb. salad. That's about the only thing you're going to be tossing, pal. All right, good comeback. I like the Michael Jordan line, and I like to toss the salad line. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> Serious. I mean, if it wasn't for radio, lines. what would you be doing? I mean, Exactly. You could say that about anything in the world. I if would be president limos, of the United States. If it wasn't I gave for up limos, <laughs> Ronnie wouldn't be driving. Oh, Ronnie believe me. Good driver. Ronnie is a good driver. So, I mean, right. what the hell? If it wasn't for puppets, there would be no puppet makers. What is this guy trying to say? I think what he's trying to say, if it wasn't for we toaster makers, right. we'd have no toasters. First of all, I made more money with, with before Beetle than I am now. Bottom line. I think we've addressed it. And it w if it wasn't for Chubby Chasers, I'd never get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else going to it instead of you and me. <laughs> Peter, you get Thanks, laid. Pete. <laughs> hey, all I know is you're getting laid, right, Pete? Oh, anybody can get laid that time. If my uh, aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle, right, Pete? Hey, did he come to be well? <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Hey, uh, Howard, I hope I'm not sounding like a complainer, because that's not what the type of person I am. No, I invited you here. Years. 
I invited to you actually, here to do it. I invited you here. You did what you said you do, and I hope you think I heard what you had to say. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, you're here because it was taken seriously, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I just don't That's want right. people saying I sound like a complainer. No. I do think I sound like a complainer, but it took me three years to complain about it. You know, and I can't just continue to let it happen when I know it's happening. But it was That's taken. It was taken. No, for I know real. how it took it. Seriously. It was taken for a reason. All right. I hope everybody's resolved now. And we can all leave happy. Right. I hope you're happy. I think I've heard what you had to say, and I think I'm listening, and I'm responding in a positive way. I hope Beetle, you know you're appreciated here. Beetle, you continue to be my favorite guest. You're welcome here any time. Yeah, and Sean, you ready. Best and guest. Sean, you are a friend of the show, yeah. and you're welcome here any time. And, and we appreciate that. Same here. All right. All right. We appreciate you, too. Let's get Thank loaded. You. Let's let's everyone calm yeah, down. Let's good. all be it's friends. Party, Ronnie. Let's party. Hey, hey, Beetle. Bring some girls out, Ronnie. Come on, Ronnie. <laughs> now it's time to party, right, Beat? Yeah. Come on, Beat. Now all the bad feelings are gone. Party is cool. We have to. Huh? <laughs> right, Beat? See, now you should have some girls in here. Beat, let's so get some girls. Oh. Beetle could be happy. Hey, Ronnie, want to come up with it? Hey. Ronnie's the man. Scores man nine two three. Hey, Ronnie, just bring me all in. Ronnie, I'm in. <laughs> right. I'm gonna call you. All just right. Call me a bit. Five minutes. We go. We're off the air. No. No, you. Were, I'll pretend we're off the air. Oh. Yeah, we're off the air. What do you really want to say? <laughs> no, no, I just. I was all say. right. <laughs> all right. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back with the news and uh, everything else right after these words. You're listening to a man who can thread a sewing needle with his penis. Howard Stern. I kind of screwed up. Drew Carey was waiting on the phone through that whole fight You're that kidding. Beetlejuice and Sean had. But he said, leave me on the phone. I, I got to hear this whole thing. <laughs> he loved it. Hey, Drew. Hey, man. Hey, man. Drew, Drew's got that new TV show. What, we, we need to help you out with it, right? No, I got canceled. No. I'm here to plug my... Yeah, I can't believe I had to wait to get a plug for a guy complaining about a plug. <laughs> right. Hey, by the way, Sean left here and said... Can you give me a plug when you come back? I went, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't want to get my ass kicked. Uh, see, he wants me to plug strangeland.com. What's that? I don't care. <laughs> Go there. You know, and I, don't, I don't understand because I, I never heard of this Beetlejuice guy, and I watch E all, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, but you see, you know Beetlejuice through the E show, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. it's good for him. Yeah. You've never been to one of his appearances, though? No. Yeah, you never bought his DVD. No. <laughs> you don't have his calendar. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand the conspiracy. Yeah, well, because... That was really fun to listen to, i got to tell you. Was it good? Okay, that's that's all that matters. Hilarious. Uh, so I, so they canceled the green screen show? Yeah, I think it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. But I'm yeah. playing Carnegie Hall Friday. That's what I'm plugging. Drew had a sweetheart deal with the WB on that show. He owned 90% of the show. Oh. Just about. I mean, if, if everyone had watched it, you would have made him a billionaire instead of the multimillionaire that he yeah. is. Yeah, why couldn't you people just... Richard Branson would have been cleaning my apartment. Right. <laughs> so will you take this as a big defeat and get out of show business, or will you... No, it was on? a... No, I thought it was a, you know, a weird show, so... Why don't you do... A, why it was you, an experiment that didn't fly. Why don't you do a movie? Yeah, why don't I? <laughs> Let me call the movie people right now and... Uh, <laughs> no one in Hollywood looking at you? <laughs> Arrange that. Uh, I, well, I don't know. Yeah, I got a couple of... I get scripts every once in a while, but... Well, it sounds to me like a lot of drinking and gambling is going to go on there. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of free time. Yeah, now he can just gamble. Yeah, he can gamble all the time. Yeah, now next time I come to New York, I'll just come out to party, and I'll call you, and we'll yeah. go do some fun. Yeah, instead yeah. of, you know, you're always looking for plugs. Why can't you just come on here without a plug? Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Carey. Oh, haven't I been good to you? Hey. Yeah, hey, come on. <laughs> is it true that Isaac is jealous of Drew Carey? <laughs> Isaac is jealous of Drew and Carey. And doesn't he upset you every time you're in the green room? No, that's not <laughs> I could have seen you as Jesus in that Mel Gibson movie. Yeah, maybe I'll do, uh, maybe I'll take over as Moses from uh, Val Kilmer. Drew Carey and Friends live at Carnegie Hall this Friday night at 8. What do you mean, like stand-up, or are you going to do some of your improv stuff? Uh, it's all improv. Oh, okay. Drew yeah, Carey and okay. Friends live at Carnegie Hall this Friday night at 8 o'clock. For tickets, call 212-247-7800 or visit carnegiehall.org. Uh, so, you know, anybody wants to see Drew and those guys do their thing live and, you know, have a good time. Go hey, and party. you know what? I was, I, was on, I was on hold while you are plugging all that stuff. You know that airborne stuff that you take? Yeah. I take it, too. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah, I just want to say for free. I'm not, they're not even paying me. I thought it was great stuff. Would you like to say something about JollyDwarf.com <laughs> or <laughs> Strangeland? Never heard of it. 
I don't know why the, I don't know why I never heard of these people. I, I listen to your show constantly. Are you in New, Are you in New York right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's not so bad. I didn't have to get up at six. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> then he would have been angry. All right, Drew. Thanks, good, bro. Good luck with the show. It's Friday night, tomorrow night at Carnegie Hall. Thanks, brother. All right, take care. Bye. Drew Carey, everybody. Uh, gee, I didn't know they canceled that show. That had to be a heartbreaker. Yeah, I didn't know it either. Green screen. I was just about to start watching. Me too. <laughs> Drew needs some counseling on failure. I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> How to take things like this? Yeah. You can help him. I'm good at it. Yeah, you've failed a few times. Oh, several times. Over and over. No. And you take it in your stride. Thank, thank you, Robin. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. wreck your complete you've life. You've gotten good at it. Yeah, what do you think, I, what, I think I've turned to the bottle? <laughs> well, I'll this size. That's right. I think I've taken Tylenol PM. You feel better? Robin, we do have news now, and it's... Oh, and here's some big news. What? Two things. One is on HowardStern.com on the bulletin board, the girl who just got robo-spanked completely naked is up on the bulletin oh. board. And uh, the comments on That's the hot. pictures are amazing. Really? Yeah, the chick's totally naked, and, and this is her getting robo spanked. Look at that hot picture. Oh, oh man, oh. she looks great there. That might be the best picture I've ever She's seen. She's got a killer body. We uploaded that instantly. And if you're what? a registered member of the bulletin board, which is free, unlike Bill O'Reilly, it's a free service. You can go on there and see this picture, Robin. <laughs> Did Benji just fart? Oh, no. Benji, did you just fart? Benji, I think he's giving birth. I yawn. I yawn. Yeah. That was a fart, that dude. I didn't fart. I didn't fart. <laughs> if that wasn't Do you a smell fart. anything uh, other than what you normally smell? <laughs> no. It's getting masked by the BL. <laughs> a lot of different things. Uh, I like this Robo Spanker thing, some of the comments. Effing nice comments on the picture. Awesome. That's hot. Holy S, now that's hot. Yeah. That's nice. hot. Holy Moses of Israel. Oh, God. Oh, God, yes, that's hot. Keep them Somebody coming. Somebody found religion. Looks like she lost on purpose so she can get robo-spanked. Awesome. Zoinks. Sweet. Nice. Need nice. more pictures. Like a lollipop. What a body. Damn. So she's up there on HowardStern.com. She was a little bit of a nice. sleeper when she walked in here. I didn't know she was going to be that hot. Yeah, she's fun. She yeah. told me she'd do me in a minute. Really? And then she walked out. Hey, Howard. Yes. Well, he wanted you to know if you want to see it, they have the slow motion version for you of the girl getting uh, I'm about hit with the whipped cream. Yeah, yeah, please roll that. That'll be on E, God knows when, but hopefully soon. For a video for you, oh, ah. Boom. Ah. wow. That was quite a spray. Wow. All angles. Oh, this Robin's view. That's like a yeah, that's what I get to see whenever the girls get on the robo spanker. That girl's ass was A+. plus. Yeah. A+. plus. A plus plus. Outstanding. <laughs> That's hot. We um, have some news for you now. Oh, the second announcement I want to make is that I will be doing the David Letterman show next Thursday. There are things I don't feel comfortable discussing here. I will have that discussion with you in my fireside chat on Letterman. Thursday the 18th. Thursday the 18th. I will appear there. I will tell you what's going on, and I will talk about the future of radio. How long has it been since you've been on Letterman? This is a triumphant return. Well, I went on... Uh, like last year, right? Last year, Oh, I yeah, guess. that was that one where uh, Vinny came in and said, wasn't that like you and Dave saying your goodbyes? I'm saying hello again. <laughs> Once again, Vinny's finger on the pulse of entertainment. <laughs> yeah. One week, from, balls and one week from today, Thursday, Letterman. The 18th. Yeah. Mark it on your calendar. And I advise you to watch it because uh, I need to talk to my audience in a proper manner. Some important information will be dispensed. Yeah, I, w I want to talk about what's going on and how I feel that, uh, well, uh, we'll... Things you can't talk about here. We'll get to that. We'll get to it on Thursday night on Letterman. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it. Have a nice cheesesteak. You got a whole party going yeah, on? Yeah, a party. Yeah. What, hey, hey, Moen, what's uh, your story? Moen. Hey, Howard, how's Moen. it going? Hey. Hey, listen, um, I, I, I think that you're probably going to go down in history as one of the greatest Americans ever. Very influential. <clears throat> but you know that, uh, when you were talking earlier about Joel, that guy's an idiot. You know, nobody yeah. likes a hypocrite. Well, it's my point of view, and I'm sure he has his point of view. And if he wants to come on here, and we'll let Sean uh, 
arbitrate the uh, discussion <laughs> between me and Joel Hollander. Then you two will be fighting, sure. Yeah. I want to see him on the uh, road with Banker. <laughs> yeah, well, I just think I'm uh, being treated awfully poorly. And uh, well, I think after years of service, to go back on your word is pretty scary. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very hurt. Uh, I, I also think that it's a dumb move business-wise because, uh, you know, once again, someone came in here during the commercial break, asked me to do something for the uh, company, and I just said no. Maybe you should air it here. We'll I would be happy to. like we did this earlier. I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. I'll call him out. Was Sean arbitrating? Have you got 12 pages of notes? He doesn't have, I don't need notes. <laughs> he doesn't have the balls to come on here. Trust me. What about this? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Exactly right. Thank you. Hey, Howard. Yes. Um, I, I have an idea for you. You, you, well, you know how you say you plan on going on David Letterman. Why don't you go to like a bunch of other uh, shows? And I happen to. I, I am going on Letterman, and then I will be telling you my schedule after that. I will do one magazine interview, hmm. and I will do three television shows. The first of which will be Letterman. And this way I will communicate to my audience about the future of radio and why and everything that's going on behind the scenes. Everything. Be interesting to hear. Hey, Howard, uh, um, there's this great Christmas present you can give Scott to taste. It's called the Bill O'Reilly Sexual Harassment Vibrator. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm getting, um, I'm actually getting Scott to pace. There's a special offer if you shop at BillOReilly.com. Anyone who spends over $100 gets a piece of paper I, I unfolded. Unfolded. Don't forget, don't forget to wipe your butt on it first. No, no, no. It's unfolded. Did you hear what I said? It's yeah. actually flat. No fold. And it has Bill O'Reilly's Xerox questions he asked President Bush with his signature. Amazing. And you can hang it. It's, the reason it's unfolded is so you can hang it in your house. Take it to your framer. Yeah, you can take it right over to your framer. <laughs> it Hopefully come with the... the billboard that says douchebag lives here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while we're on the subject of BillOReilly.com, we have the Christmas store, as I told you. But what I didn't tell you, or what I think I didn't tell you, is that our best customers for the Christmas store get a historic document. That is my questions that I asked President Bush in the interview, signed by me. It's not folded, suitable for framing, and we send it to you for free. If wow. you're a good customer of our Christmas store on Bill O'Reilly. Free. That's got to cost like a penny. They, those guys that probably. That costs absolutely nothing. Those guys aren't retarded. I imagine them sitting around the room going, you know what? You know what, Bill? They're blowing smoke up Bill's ass. They go, you know what, Bill? We could send people a piece of paper and they're going to think they're getting something great. That's right. As long as you sign then it, Bill. Then they'll spend $100 to get this piece of paper. And Bill will go, uh, but when I go on there, should I keep a straight face? I mean, yeah, Bill, keep a straight face. If you, as long as you tell them it's something. These morons will they'll be freaking out over it. I mean, there's got to be some guy somewhere who said, oh, my God, i got to go spend $100 so I can get this piece of paper. Right. Well, obviously this must be happening. You know what, though? I don't think it is. I don't think a goddamn person cares about getting that piece of paper. I don't think there's one person on the planet who wants that piece of Jack paper. Jack Mayhoffer. I mean, really, how much is that website making in general? Because who wants the other crap that's on it? I want a full investigation. <laughs> There's a Bill O'Reilly fleece. And because while he's mat. fleecing you, you wear it. <laughs> a doormat, which is what he's doing, treating you like one. What's the beef, sir? He's got to be kidding. Suitable for framing. That means don't even open it yourself. Take it to the frame shop because you don't want it creased at all before it gets into that frame. Here's something kind of wild. Why not give us the piece of paper for free, just because we listen to your crap. How about, yeah, just, how, how about not? Because there's really nothing on it. There's nothing historic about it. Hmm. It's ridiculous. hundred bucks. We've, we've taken you from a news anchor to whatever it is you are now. You an know icon. Yeah, give me, the, give me the goddamn piece of paper for free. Sign the goddamn thing. He must think he's an icon. I touched this piece of paper, yeah. and now it's historic. Yeah. <laughs> he's an icon artist. <laughs> <laughs> Went from hosting hard copy to becoming a know-it-all. Yeah, I forgot and about the audience hard is, copy. Yeah, and the audience is letting him do this. Uh, yeah. give, give us a free piece of paper. Give, right. give, give, me, give me a free piece of paper. We've given you everything. You know, come on. Sign the piece of paper. You let me have it. I don't want to even spend $100. How's that? And this is a man who says he won't win awards because people uh, don't like him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> Who's looking out for you?
<laughs> me, actually. In here in the nose. Jack Mayhoffer. I'm pretty sure I'm looking out for you more than he is. And I'm barely looking out for you. No spin. What's in the news, Rob? Got a free She's got big cans, big cans. She's robbing quibbles. Yeah. She's got big cans, big cans. She's robbing quibbles. Good for you, Rob. <laughs> You think this guy uh, watches the show? He's from Red Bank, Tennessee, and two women have complained to police that uh, he spanked them for mistakes on the job. He was their boss. That's so hot. One of the women told police that on her first day at Tasty Flavor Snow That's Biz... Hot. You don't want to lose that job. <laughs> Tasty flavor what? Snow biz. It's like a, you know, one of those. A Dairy Queen? makes those snow cones. You know, like. A, uh, it's shaved ice and they put good. flavors in it. Yeah. Cherry's good. Boy, that chick must be hard up for a job. <laughs> she, she's going to get spanked. She's getting a beating <laughs> at the snow cone place. Send the robo spanker over there. Uh, before any spanking, the owner, Paul Eugene Levengood, made her sign a statement that said, I give Gene permission to bust my behind any way he sees fit. Hmm. Apparently, what would happen is that, um, you know, if they made a mistake at work, he would make them accept the spanking instead of leaving. So, uh, there you go. Now they've uh, charged him, and he's been arrested. He faces criminal charges. One of the women uh, told uh, the police that she was shocked at the incident but could not leave because she had no transportation. So she took her beating. <laughs> the other woman said she continued to work for Levin Good more than a year after she was spanked and reported to police that he told her either she could be spanked or be fired. So there you go. Did he spank her like uh, naked? Um, like how? Like with her uniform on? Was it a little skirt? He took her into the back room. Wow. Oh, I like that. Because Snow cone. she forgot to put a banana in the smoothie drink. Right. <laughs> Bent her over his knee. Yeah. What's she wearing? Spanked her 20 times. I don't have a description of what she was wearing. Gary, get that story from Robin and get me this guy on the phone tomorrow. And get me a banana smoothie. He snapped a photograph her of her. <laughs> put it on HowardStern.com. He did snap a photograph of her behind one day when she uh, reached for a flavor bottle on the shelf. You know what? When you're working in a snow cone place, this actually sounds much better than actually working in the snow cone place. <laughs> That's hot. Hey, yeah. You know they what I mean? were clothed in the photos that were taken. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Yeah, he was spanking the women when they made mistakes at work. I wonder if they were hot. What happens, though, because he did get a signed agreement. Well, then, then I guess you can either beat them or electrocute them. <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, a little strange. Burt Reynolds' ex-girlfriend has filed a palimony suit against the movie veteran just a day after he sued for an alleged extortion attempt. Former barmaid Pamela Seals claims in her lawsuit filed yesterday that the actor requested that she quit her job and move from Florida to California to live with him, act as his companion and homemaker. And the legal papers... Yeah, and who told her to do it? Obtained by American court show Celebrity Justice, Seals also claims Reynolds promised her he would support and take care of her and her mother in a manner in which they had become accustomed... Yeah, that's called marriage. Get it in writing. ...for the rest of their lives. I don't see a signed agreement. She also claims Reynolds repeatedly abused her by yelling at her, beating and strangling her. Fire! The suit Half of all assets accumulated during the relationship, 50% of his home in Florida, and punitive damages. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just give her everything. Because <laughs> she moved in and got great living uh, arrangements. And she quit that waitress job. What a joke. F you. You turn it apart so Guys call women bitches. I swear.
Lonnie Anderson and Sally Field. Now he can't dump a barmaid. Yeah, it's kind of sad how that ends up, you know? Yeah. Hey, Brett, you're on the air. Hey, good morning, Howard. How you doing? Hey, bro. Hey, uh, the French pretty messed up company or uh, country. The, the French prime minister was quoted this morning saying that Yasser Arafat was a man of courage and conviction. Oh, boy. Well, he was that. Well, he was absolutely a man of courage. He he was brave enough to take all the money we sent over to the poor Palestinian people and put it in his own pocket. You got to be pretty brave to he do would that. Rob you while but, you were watching. He he robbed terrorists. <laughs> Doesn't uh, that show us that the French really don't know what's going on in this world? Well, I have been screaming about, you know, now it's popular to bash the French. I've been bashing the French way before uh, everyone got into it. And, I, and I'll tell you about the French. The comments that come out of that country are absolutely sickening. And the prime minister, for him to say anything positive about Yasser Arafat is completely out of control. Yeah. This is a guy who masterminded the killing of Olympic athletes who should have been wiped out that day. And more. I mean, for years he's been killing people. There's nothing courageous about a man like that. Uh, it just shows that they don't know what's going on. A real man stands by his word, like me, not Joe Hollander, and believes in his convictions. Thank you. You bet. Hey, uh, I want to say Next, the French Prime America Minister is going to say Joe Hollander is a man of courage. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. I'm being nice today, actually. Pee Wee Herman about to make a return. Paul Rubens is working on a new script for a third Pee Wee big uh, screen adventure. <laughs> Pee Wee pleasures himself behind a man in a movie theater. That's the name of it. At the age of 80. <sighs> the first five seasons of Pee Wee's Playhouse hit DVD in two box sets on November 16th. So, Pee Wee having a big year. Pee Pee. <laughs> And, of course, Nikki Hilton is officially unmarried, never been married. Her marriage has been annulled. I call that a good marriage. <laughs> it was like three days. She's officially uh, annulled now? Annulled. Reminder, hit on Nikki Hilton. There you go. Get in some of that scratch. So that marriage never took place. It's worth like $300 million. That's a nice catch. Well, they can't both be worth three hundred million. Why not? How how are they going to split it up? No, well, like they're splitting up six hundred million. Oh, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a good figure to Hilton Hotel. <laughs> they're not the sole heirs, are they? They're the sole heirs. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if in five years they're broke. Oh, they will be. You think so? Some guy will clean him out. Oh, that would be great. Marry him and kill him or something. Oh, and that guy better be No, don't better kill him. Be made. Clean him out, because I'd like to see him have to work. And, yeah. You know, do no, I'm just saying some guy will probably, like one of those playboy, you know, guys. Yeah, types. Throw him off a boat. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got to watch that. If I was in my travel with a bodyguard, if they ever get married. <laughs> in the bedroom. In the bedroom. <laughs> Liza Minnelli's bodyguard had uh, the papers he has filed against her made public yesterday. It's a $100 million lawsuit filed by Mahmoud Soumaye, who is 58 years old, and says that Liza was a violent, sex-starved maniac who harassed him with her bedroom demands until he, resent he relented out of fear of losing his $238,000 a year job. How embarrassing for her, you know? Yeah, well, she asked that these papers be kept uh, private, but they decided that it's a public case, and so it was okay to release this information. It says that she um, hit and assaulted him repeatedly, and then, of course, she would hit on him and hit on him and hit on him until he finally gave in to her sexual demands. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing when a chick has to beg for sex. That ain't right. Mahmoud, please. <laughs> Get out. Get away from me, Lysha. You're too fat. Oh. Please give me to me, my. <laughs> give me your uh, your sausage. Give me your muscular pancakes. You're not getting my sausage. Please. <laughs> the suit please. even claims that once she got word that he was <clears throat> thinking of suing her, she called him to her apartment and tried to seduce him again. I'm Liza, goddammit. You should want me. Oh, Christ, does it stink in here. She Muhammad, him, just close your eyes and do me. She told him he was the love of her life, and she started to kiss sausage. him and ask him why he was suing her. Sausage. 
sausage. I will take a chubby pickle. So, you know, just more <laughs> stuff going wrong for Liza. All right, we need to take a break. Pancakes. Come back, finish the news. Right back after these words. This is Thank you. the Howard Stern Show. Robin, let's wrap up the news. All right. Well, we got to get to uh, Yasser Arafat. He is really dead this time. Okay. They said he died at about 3.30 a.m. Paris time. He started bleeding in his brain. Now everybody has to decide how to feel about him now that he's gone. So here's what people are saying. His former pal, uh, uh, one of his cabinet members, Hanan Ashwari, says <laughs> that it's understandable that Arafat failed as a leader. D1. It would be unfair and unrealistic to expect one man to do that job. It's not a job for one person. It's a job for a system. Well, it, he did more to make sure that there was no peace over there than, than any man alive. I mean. That's right. But, hey, he got away with it. He sure did. Well, I know the Palestinian people should start hunting down. Uh, the way they hunt Jews, they should hunt down where he hid all the money. That well, they, they'll that never own. find it because it's not over there. Yeah. A lot of people uh, don't know this, but he was probably gay. D3 is the Palestinian people <laughs> grieving for him in the streets. D3. Oh, oh, Guns going off. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Nabil Sayef. Blah, blah, blah. Com. Palestinian foreign, excuse me, foreign minister, and he describes what will take place on Friday morning for the funeral, D4. Tomorrow morning, uh, there will be the uh, the lying in, the laying of his body in state, and the uh, international uh, and Arab leaders uh uh, who will be coming to uh, bid him uh, uh, goodbye? Uh, there'll be cold cuts, uh, maybe some of those nice elf spread. cookies. <laughs> throw him, uh, yes. Throw him a big party. You know those crackers. Debbie Schlussel uh, had a quote uh, earlier, and here's what she said: uh, A lot of people don't know this, but Yasser Arafat was probably gay. <laughs> For more, go to my website, www.shawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshawshaw
which I will watch. And they head to Barbados, all of the friends. Right, I heard that it was a trip, something about a trip. Is it a longer episode? <clears throat> yeah. It's an hour. Okay. Uh, whenever they have an hour one, it sucks. Yeah. It seems like a half hour is all you can take of those four people. And then when it's an hour, it's for some reason, just the, either some shows work as a half hour and don't work as an hour. And Friends would be one of them. Uh, married with Children reunion. I don't care about that. I watched the Beverly Hills 90210 reunion, and that sucked. Really? What was wrong with it? Well, they got all the kids together who aren't kids anymore. Yes. <laughs> Luke Perry is still handsome. Yes. The guy who just had the car accident is a friggin' mess. Jason Priestley. Yeah, lost all his looks. Yeah. And I'm not just saying it. Chicks were saying it. Shannon Doherty, who was the hottest chick, looks awful. Really? Awful. Like, fix your teeth, honey. She's, what happened to her teeth? I don't know how old she is, but it's time for the facelift. She's just not hot. Wow. And here's the, the the strangest thing of the Beverly Hills 90210 reunion. Okay. And I'm saying this to the guy who produced it. I know he sent me a note. Saying? Saying, hey, watch it, and, you know, this and that. And the other thing, I'm going to give you my critique. The, the conversation they had was ridiculous. Tori Spelling, whose father produced 90210, didn't show up to the 90210 reunion. Ah. Now, they don't even acknowledge it. They don't say anything about her? The reason she didn't come is because Shannon Doherty was there. Evidently, the two hated each other so much that Tori Spelling wouldn't even go. Wow. And and how can you not bring that up? I think that would be great. It's her dad who owns the show. And she's got to be pissed at her dad for having Shannon Doherty there. Right, because Shannon you know. didn't do as many seasons of the show as Tori did. Unbelievable. Then the other guy who didn't show up was Brian Austin Green. They didn't even make reference to it. Why wouldn't he show up? I don't know. He was busy. Yeah, he's busy. Doing what? Listening yeah. to this show. Haven't seen him. <clears throat> so that, it was awful. So it's not a reunion. Everybody wasn't there. That's right. That's right. And the chick, Jenny, whatever her name is, the Jenny blonde. Garth. She didn't say a word to the whole the goddamn reunion. How did she look? Uh, she looked okay. Yeah. I was never a big fan of hers. And wait a minute, wasn't Tiffany Amber Thiessen in that? No, she was. She she wasn't there. She was in Melrose Place. No, she that? was in she was in nine zero two one zero. You're right. She was but in. She on. wasn't there either. No, no, I only lasted twenty five minutes. It was awful. Oh, I'm very disappointed. But it wasn't a show. It was just them sitting around yammering about working on the show. Yeah, and they're telling their little safe anecdotes. Oh, I see. They needed a host to sit there and go, "Hey, okay, come on, let's hear the real story." Mm -hmm. Well, there's obviously Tori Spelling's not sitting here. Let's 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 get real. Let's right. get let's get busy. Here's a bizarre thing. Conan O'Brien went to the trouble of taking one of his entire shows and animating it into clay claymation. Right. right. Yes, I heard about <clears> it. <throat> which will be funny for about five minutes. You don't want to watch a whole hour of that. Of anim of claymation? Of Conan, no. Of the actual talk show except clay figures? Yeah. Unless the clay figures are doing something funny, no. <laughs> I have a feeling they're just going to be sitting there doing exactly whatever. Yeah, because they took a show and they know. modeled the clay after the show. Yeah, it's horrible. Five minutes of that would be maybe interesting. Now, they went to, that's very expensive to do. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Because you know how hard it is to take those little clay pieces and move them around. Yeah. I mean, I barely watch his regular show. Now I'm going to watch Clay shows. <laughs> All right, we got to get to uh, Winfred's money, but first, Chauncey, go ahead. What is it? Hey, uh, Howard, I think you're off base with uh, Tori Spelling. The, the reason why she uh, didn't do the show, she said because Fox promised her a sitcom after uh, Beverly Hills went off the air, and she never got it. Hey, whether your story's right or mine's right, how do you not acknowledge the fact that she's not there? I, I agree with that. I think that's insane. That's the flaw. Why not deal with that? Why doesn't one person say, okay, there's two rumors going around. Let's deal with it. I'll tell you, the other thing is, I think you're wrong about Sharon Doherty. I saw her in person about uh, two weeks ago. I thought she was hot. Well, look, I'm talking about TV shows and hot chicks. Seeing a chick in person is a whole different story. Do you understand? Except I will say this. One eye, if you ever noticed... One eye on Shannon is about a quarter inch higher than the other. All right. I have to go. Oh, yeah, one, one more thing. And by the way, Chauncey makes $275,000 a year, I found out. That's amazing. Hey, thanks for uh, letting that out. Working for a free newspaper. That's a good deal. Yep. 
to do uh, cribs in my house. Uh, All right. Thank you, John. No, wait, one more thing, Howie. You know who's flipping out that you won't have him on the show? Uh, Michael Madsen. Who's that? You know the guy from Reservoir Dogs? I don't know him. I, was, I think it's Mr. Mr. White. You ever saw Reservoir Dogs? I, cu- I hated it. I got, got through 10 minutes, I turned it really? off. So he's writing about you in his, he wrote about you in his book. I don't even know who you're talking about. He was in uh, Free Willy. He played the father. He, oh, oh, oh. He should have said that. He killed Bill with Quentin Tarantino. He's, no. he's, All he's, movies I never saw. He's like he's a lot like uh, Tom Sizemore. Same he's, type of guy. He's been trying to get on the show for a while. Good. And we've been passing on him. And well, think, of course. I, I never think, heard of him. I think he's bummed because um, he wrote a book of poetry, which we read on the air, and he mentioned you, and he's like a fan. But Listen, I can't have all my fans on the show. I mean, it's, I'm very grateful that he's a fan, but... Tell him to try to call that number. Right. Most By the way, Tom Sizemore is completely self-destructed. Well, I, I gotta go. I, 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 Chauncey, please, I'm gonna go play Winfred's mind. Okay, I'll see all right, you guys. Thank you. Okay. Please. All right, here's a guy. His name is Vinny. Vinny contacted us. He says whenever he listens to Winfred's money on the radio, he uh, ties Fred 50% of the time and beats him 25% of the time. Mm. What do we do in the event of a tie? There, there is no tie on Winfred's money. Can't have... Well, but suppose he and Fred answer the same number of questions in the same amount of time. We have something where we do something. <laughs> I don't know. What do we do with that in the event of a tie? Forget. Yeah, they wrestle they nude. Wrestle. <laughs> no, I think we have a tiebreaker or something. I think we, we can go to tiebreaker questions and just ask them one at a time. I think that's what we finally decided. You know what? Just give him the money if he ties, Fred. How's that? Okay. I'll, I'll do that. The rule book says that oh, Vinny, uh, Vinny has to manipulate a naked Benji with his foot. Oh! Right. Oh, yeah. So Vinny says he wins a lot of the time. He auditioned for Jeopardy two years ago. He made the cut but was never called to be booked on the show. Is that right? Yes. Vinny says he has a tremendous knowledge of trivia. And yes. most of your knowledge comes from reading. You read a lot. That's where Fred gets his knowledge. Yeah, I read a- all the time. You said, Fred said you had like 14 degrees or something? <laughs> he has a bachelor's degree in communications from Fordham, which is meaningless. Thank you. He has a master's degree in political science from Fordham, which is meaningless. Okay. He has a master's degree in theater and film from Hunter College, which is absolutely meaningless. Yes. And a master's degree in educational administration from Baruch College, which is more meaningless than the previous three degrees. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's be honest. I'm completely meaningless. Right. What so, uh, I'm well prepared. What did that all cost you, all those degrees? Uh, nothing, really, because I went mostly on scholarships and grants that I had earned. And uh, I think the only thing that cost me anything was the... Um, the last masters. I had to pay out loans. I That's see. It. Now, the two broads with you, one of them is your wife. Yes. Which one is this? The one who just Me. waved to you, Bonnie. Hi, sweetheart. How are Hi. you? You're an, you're an aerobics instructor? Yes. And what about your, your friend here you brought with you? What does she do? Real estate agent. Wow. So we're going to see your wife and her real estate agent friend naked if you lose. Yeah. No, yeah, you're no. going to see them topless. Topless? Topless. Right, and believe me, it's a good site. You got to see the bombs on that real estate agent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what, what are you packing there? F, G, what do you got? They're guns. They're I guns. Know the alphabet. Have you seen these girls naked? I mean, obviously your wife, but what about the other one there? Yes, I did. Where did you see her naked? Well, just a few minutes ago in the in the green room, but... Um, I was practicing. And she was practicing, making sure she could show them properly. What, did you get boob implants and you're all excited about them? No, nice. I had a lift, not implants. I thought, they were a, I thought they were implants, and they're actually, actually a lift, which is kind of scary because they must have been bigger before. Well, good for you. We're happy to see him. I'm, I'm rooting for Fred so I can see you girls. Uh, now, do you have your shirts off under there? Not yet. Not Take yet. them off. Come on. Let's go. Get them off. We have her in a special area where if your husband should lose... Nice. The <laughs> breasts will be seen immediately. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Howard, I want to tell you that my wife for a long time has had a crush on Artie. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Wow. You have very good taste, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's the Italian thing because we're both Italian. Oh, that's nice. All right. It says here you're an assistant principal. Yes, that's I That's a pretty important job. Yes, it is. All right. Most of the time. Assistant principal. Yes. I think with all those degrees, they make you a principal. Yeah, there's a lot more to do with than degrees. It's more political and uh, inexperience-wise. All right, is this like a junior high school? Are you the assistant high principal school. of boys? No, no. <laughs> no. You're in a high school. I'm in a high school. All right. What does an assistant principal do? I know the principal does nothing, well, so what does the assistant principal there's do? There's two. Uh, one handles a lot of the administrative and budgetary jobs, budgeting jobs, and I handle supervision and instruction, which means I oversee the teachers, 
I observe them, make sure they're teaching adequately, make sure the curriculum is on point, and uh, I help with the students. All right. And I teach as well. I teach two classes. Do you ever get to paddle any of the female students? <laughs> yeah. No, I keep the door open when they come into my office <laughs> because right. right now it's really difficult. Uh, right. you got to make sure that no in improprieties and occur. And Howard, I, I will not tell you, your eyes will pop out of your head if you walk into the school. I have, I have lovely kids. They're wonderful kids, but they dress like they're going to the beach half the time. And Do you think that's bad for education? Like it's I so distracting? It's distra I think it's a distraction, but I also think you, and I, uh, a lot of these kids come from homes where it's like, yeah, what's the big deal? You know, right. the girl walks out with a belly shirt. What's the big deal? Would you be for banning all belly shirts from schools? Uh, yes. I you would. You want I, I believe there should be some type of dress code, not necessarily uniform, but there definitely should be a dress code. Because, uh, okay, because it's just not, it's a distraction. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Well, thank you. What fascist are you? <laughs> well, my father was one. Your father so. was a fascist? Yes. So was mine. Wow. Yes. Wow. He actually fought. He was in uh, Ethiopia. Oh, you mean a real fascist? He was a real fascist. Yeah, your oh. father the day was he a died, fascist Mussolini was right. And yeah, my father just wouldn't let me do anything. <laughs> So, okay, so the point you're making is that the belly shirts are a distraction. You know what? I, I have to agree with you. I cannot imagine. I was distracted by chicks in my school, and uh, they would just wear a little bit of tight pants. And or maybe a mini skirt. A mini skirt. The legs would drive me crazy. I, I'm from putting these chicks in burkas in, this, in these high schools. I love it. Well, it's, it it distracts me. But I do agree. I've seen kids on their way to school, and the, sh the shorts are this big. The tops, you know, they can't show enough skin. And even the boys, the boys are wearing, you know, the guinea t-shirts. And That's why Casey got a 710 on it. Casey got a 710 on his SAT because all the boys <laughs> hardly wear anything. Seven, I mean, 720. Sorry, oh. buddy. Uh, I didn't mean to take away your uh, hey. Robert, I prefer Italian-American t-shirts. <laughs> Thank you. Have, have Thank you, ever, you already. Have you ever sent anybody home because of the way they were dressed? Yes, I have. Wow. It, it is ironic that you're anti-belly shirt, but your wife will be topless for us. <laughs> yes, I knew that's where we were going, but I 